Hello everybody and welcome to round four of the Jib Chess Battle of the Sexes 2022 Scheveningen Tournament, uh, one of its kind. If you've joined us for the first time, you're very welcome. Two teams, uh, boys against girls, men against women, uh, 10 fantastic players on each team, fighting it out for pride, glory, and of course, a hundred thousand pounds in prize money. Uh, we've seen three absolutely fantastic rounds so far in Arena. Um, <laughs> we're hoping for more today. Uh, yesterday we saw, after two really tough rounds for the boys, they bounced back in style. Uh, fantastic day for them. Will they continue the momentum into today? Well, you know, actually my confidence in the women's team was really, really high before yesterday. And today, looking at the pairings, I feel a little bit worried, actually. Mm. Yeah, we'll have a look at the pairings in a moment. Let's have a look at what happened. Well, we can see that. Perhaps we can look at the results from yesterday first. And then we will look at the pairings. Here we go. Uh, we saw uh, Irene against Hussein was a draw. Jansaya lost a very complicated game to Bilal in uh, in a complicated French, and Gunay Mamadzada lost a well, basically a, a model game by Leandro. Right, Carissa. Leandro played so well, having uh, some uh, novelty in the opening. That knight g6 was fantastic, and then Gunay struggled to find uh, the best plan for White. Yeah, fantastic game by Leandro. Yeah, great game by Leandro. Uh, you can see there are a bunch of draws in, in the middle. And then Eric Rosen getting off to a, uh, a start of some points on the board. Win, uh, beating Nino Batsiashvili in a, again, in a, in a weird game where it looked as though Nino was doing well out the opening, but she lost her way somewhere in the early middle game. And Eric uh, managed to take over and uh, converted a better position. And Yovanka Huska, again, you know, it looked as though she had a solid-ish position. And at some point, she just lost her way. Yeah, uh, it felt to me like she got maybe a little bit over-ambitious because mm -hmm. of Sabino's time trouble. But Sabino handled very well his nerves yesterday and was very precise when Yovanka blundered. Yeah, so that meant that the boys clawed back four points yesterday, meaning that the current total is that the, the girls are winning by two. Um, and uh, we can see the women, 16 points, men, 14. Uh, so the battle is very much on again. And the men all have white today. So is this going to be a day where they take a lead in the match? Well, judging by the pairings, there's a very good chance. Let's have a look at who we've got today. We've got Chonka against Muzichuk. Uh, well... Balash has been playing perfectly good chess. He's got a chance with White, of course, today against Maria. All right, but I think uh, this is one of those games uh, which might actually end with a draw. Okay. I believe uh, they're both quite solid and won't be willing to take too many risks okay. today. Now, one of my favorite games of today of the round is Krissa against Abdul Malik. Uh, two great players. Shansaya suffering a tough loss yesterday. Krissa... Uh, obviously with a beautiful win yesterday. What do we expect here? Well, uh, you know, uh, Jean Saia is one of those players who is um, very high on her fighting spirit. And I believe that uh, the loss, quite bad loss from yesterday, will motivate her to do her best in order to bounce back. And uh, I believe this won't be a balanced game, but mm -hmm. uh, judging from uh, how uh, Leandro played yesterday, I think we'll see a good fight here. Okay, good fight in that game coming up for sure. Sabino Brunello, white against Nino Batsiashvili. I have to say I've, I'm a bit worried for Nino in this game. Uh, she had a tough loss yesterday. She's black today. Sabino is well underrated. And when he starts to play decent chess, he's, he's a very tough opponent. So... I think Nino's going to have a tough game today. Indeed. Actually, I just uh, walked uh, with Nino today ah, to the okay. playing hall, and she was telling me that uh, Sabino is a really good player. You of know? course, she, yeah. I, I think she was a bit worried about herself as well today. Mm. But let's see uh, if she can uh, be more solid, and perhaps a draw would be a good result uh, for her so. here. I think a draw would be a good result, yep. Joe Gallo against Pierre Kremling, the two oldest participants in the tournament. Uh, two 
very experienced grandmasters. Joe showing us yesterday, you know, he can still do some decent-ish preparation <laughs> before a game, five minutes before finding an idea. He's got the white pieces though, against Pierre. I think Joe's going to be very up for this game. I think he's going to be excited about playing white. Yes, Pierre is very solid, but Joe will be thinking, okay, she's not too, she doesn't play too fast. She doesn't play too crazy. So I'm going to have a chance at getting some kind of initiative against her. Hmm. I thought that actually it is uh, the game where uh, the women's team uh, might uh, hope for a win. Really? Because interesting. Yeah, Bia has this very interesting style, especially when, with uh, the black pieces, that she lets the opponent, you know, uh, think that he's a bit better and then wait. Wait, mm. wait for a mistake. Okay. It's very tricky always to play against her. Right. You think you are in control, but then suddenly, I think Joe will have to avoid some real dangers in this game. Okay. Bilil Balassine against Irene Sukanda. Now, I thought this was the game, one of the games at least, where uh, there's another one coming, but uh, that I think Irene has got a chance here. Bilal, he's uh, he's obviously very strong. He's obviously very tactical, but he's a bit wild sometimes. And Irene might be able to take advantage of that today. Indeed, uh, judging from the first three rounds here, Bilal uh, seemed to be quite uh, quite unpredictable. So uh, we will see how he's going to do today. Yep. Iran very solid so far, uh, with a very good performance, two and a half yeah. out of three. Fantastic. Yeah. Eric Rosen against Olga Giria. Uh, interesting matchup. Two totally different styles. Uh, Eric with the white pieces today. It's going to be a, an interesting game. I have absolutely no idea what to expect, but maybe Olga is actually going to be quite ambitious today. That's my yeah, thought. Yeah, that might be the case. And I believe that uh, the most important in this game will be who's going to be better prepared. Because if Eric will, uh, will be fine uh, today with his preparation, then uh, all will be okay. But Giria is a really well-prepared, theoretically, yeah. player. Bobby Cheng against Marie Sabag. Uh, both of these players have been super solid so far. Uh, Bobby with the white pieces, though, he'll try a little bit, but he doesn't, you know, he's not a huge risk taker. Uh, so I think Marie has got good chances, but also maybe Bobby's thinking, okay, today is really an opportunity for me to put some pressure on. Yeah, might be the case, especially since Marie has uh, the least spent hours right. on the arena, right? So maybe she was not feeling great on the first three days and maybe Bobby will try to seize an opportunity here. We're going to see that. Indeed. Let's look at the next game. Ravi Hari against Gunai Mamadzada. Another very interesting matchup. Uh, Ravi uh, drew yesterday against Pierre Kramling. He's playing absolutely fine. Nothing wrong so far with Ravi's chess here. And Gunai has shown moments of brilliance, but we've also seen that Gunai can also be outplayed if she's not in the sort of position that she likes. She needs to get her kinds of positions. And I have to say, I think Ravi is a very bad opponent for Gunai. Um, Ravi is uh, uh, extremely solid. He doesn't give many chances. And uh, if Gunai is too optimistic today, and uh, I think uh, she could uh, get punished. Look at, look at her feet. She's a bit nervous. She's she, she's doing the the tap dance, is she? she yes, yeah, she be. was. <laughs> <laughs> she's very. She's dressed very, uh, very professionally. I mean, she's very. Uh, how can I say? She's very closed. So maybe that's a reflection of her mood that she's going to play a bit more, kind of let's say conservative, if that's the right Might word. Might be, but she's a very professional player, you know, especially sh since she's so young. It is not something common you see in, uh, in the very young generation. So I'm very curious how this game will go. Yeah. And to finish off the pairings, we've got Gillian Boilia against Jovanka Huska. Uh, Jovanka really struggling. Uh, she's uh, just hasn't found any rhythm. Gillian is a really tricky player. I think this is another, I, I like, if I had to put a, a guess on it being a decisive result, I would say this game. I would say that this has got a good chance of ending as a decisive result. And he has uh, a favorite hat he's been wearing. Yes. Uh, so maybe he has a trick today for, uh, for Jovanka under it. Let's see if he will uh, be able to pull it off. 
indeed. And the last game, uh, Hussein Aziz against Marcel uh, well, Efroimsky. Yeah. What do you think about this one? That's going to be an interesting game. I am... Uh I'm somehow feeling that Marcel is very well prepared in the openings. At least so far, we've seen that she has managed to surprise her opponents. Yes. Uh, the first one. And uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be an interesting game. Hussein was very solid up to this point, playing the Berlin mm -hmm. with the black pieces. He had a very balanced game yesterday against Irene. So let's see who, who will prove better. Yep, and there you have an overview, a bird's eye view of the playing hall, playing obviously in the Garrison Library. Uh, we've spoken about the venue a, a number of times already. One of the most important heritage sites in Gibraltar was uh, constructed in the 18th century. Um, ties obviously to the British Empire, but also to the Mediterranean with lots of important literature here. Uh, very, very nice to be playing here. And you can see Jennifer Ballantyne in the very, very far background uh, by the door. She is the director of this lovely venue. And in the middle, we have Stephen Linares, who's currently talking. Stephen has been a fixture for the Gibraltar Chess Congress for years and years. I remember seeing him. I actually think he's been here pretty much every edition. He is uh, hes an MP at the Gibraltar Parliament and is the... Minister for Sport, Culture, Heritage, Youth, and perhaps some other uh, things as well. So a very important role in Gibraltar. And uh, his support and the support of the government is, of course, extremely welcome. And uh, we thank him and uh, his colleagues for... Uh, they're, Making this great event. Yeah, I mean, no? the, the, the support from the local government has just been phenomenal for years and years and years. And they're very proud to, to host this tournament. And um, we appreciate their, their right. backing. Yeah. And a little speech there. Of course, we didn't hear that, but I'm sure it would have been very nice. And now he's going to do the honorary first move. And it's actually on uh, Eric's uh, board, uh, Eric versus Olga. Let's see yes. what, what's going to be Let's the first move. Let's see what move. he chooses. Curious. <laughs> Jennifer Ballantyne, when she did her first move, she deliberately chose the English, so she did some research. <laughs> and now Stephen is... Is it the e pawn? Oh, e4. That looks like a sensible move. Let's do some bets now. Will yeah. it be a Karokan or a Rui Lopez? Because I know these are the two favorite openings in Olga's repertoire. Oh, okay. I'm going to say Karakan for Olga today. That's what I think. A Karakan. Actually, let's talk. Let's do a. Let's do a. Let's play a game here because <laughs> we haven't actually done any predictions overall. So today, what do you think the final score will be? Oh, I really hope that the ladies uh, will bounce uh, back and uh, I'm going for a plus one for the ladies team. Plus one? A modest, but, uh, but an important win. You know, momentum is everything in life, <laughs> Irina. I'm going for plus three for the guys. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm going for a solid plus three, putting them on plus one overall um, before... The well, it's sorry, it's not the rest day, is it? We've got one more round and then the rest exactly. day. So uh, tomorrow will be round five. But I'm saying the the boys will win by three games today. The games are going to kick off any minute, and uh, of course we want to hear from you guys. We have got the YouTube chat open. We've also got Twitch chat, so maybe we'll flick between. Both we've got a yeah we've got a few more in, we've got a bit more engagement on the Twitch chat at the moment so we will uh, look out for your your messages please keep them appropriate please do not uh, be silly and please 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 <laughs> avoid spam no politics no religion this is not a politics show this is a chess broadcast we want to hear about chess. Right. And your opinions on the games and the players. That's it. And we actually see a Karakan, but in a different game. Oh. In the game between uh, Balash against uh, Musichuk Maria. We do. And in the game that you said... Oh, she did go E5. You were right. <laughs> okay, she went with E5 in, 
in the Eric Rosen game. I hope so. that my predictions will go as well as my guess in this uh, particular game. Let's hope so. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess what we'll do is let's go and have a bird's eye view, a full view of this game here with Eric Rosen. Let's get the full screen. I want to see how quickly Eric is playing. Oh, he did. He played in Italian. Oh, he played the Juco, Juco piano, no? It's very fashionable these days, actually. Exactly. And we can see, yeah, it's played pretty much all the time at top level against Eve. Well, not all the time, but it's kind of, I would say it's dominated top level chess for uh, the past few years now. And I think it's clear that it's overtaken the Rai Lopez or the Spanish opening as the main weapon for elite players. So it's no surprise. And of course, these players as well, uh, naturally uh, very much inclined to playing this. And we'll see what Eric does. But in the meantime, um, I am delighted to introduce uh, Stephen Linares. Uh, thank you, Stephen. You're the Minister for Housing, Employment, Youth, Sport, and perhaps some other things I might have... No, 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 no. But Not I now. Used to be. You used to be. <laughs> I used That's to be a lot of things. Culture as well, Min and, uh, and heritage. So we used a lot to of things. Out, yes, a lot. <laughs> okay. Well, I rec I know we've never actually properly spoken, but I recognise you. But you've been. Have you been at the tournament every year since the inception? Uh, not quite. I okay. Mean, but I have been since we came into government. Okay. Because we had it. In fact, chess was one of the things that we even wrote into our manifesto right. that we would support the chess tournament that Brian Callahan started many years ago. Right. And that it was one of the things that as if we got into government that we would fully support. And we have That's done that since we've come in. So what's going on at the moment in, with chess? In, is there still a big chess in schools project happening in Gibraltar? Is there still a big chess, um, let's call it effort here in Gibraltar? Yes, there, there has been, and spe especially the last five years. Okay. We've had, uh, we had Stuart Conquest, who was uh, the, sure. the chess person here in Gibraltar. But chess is one of those, uh, as a sc school teacher, I can ah. tell you, is one of those that uh, are very popular within, with children because you get all the children that might like sports in general or arts and all that, but chess comes across Although I know it is a sport and it's yeah. recognised as a sport, <laughs> it, uh, but but it's one of those that children tend to quite like mm. playing, you know, yeah. and, and it's very popular. No, it it is very popular, and uh, this event is very popular. What do you think about the format this year? Last year, when you came, it's or, or rather, uh, when you when since you've uh, you, you've been in government, you've been watching the tournament. It's been an, uh, an an invitational, let's say, an open tournament where people playing it. But this year, it's men against women. Um, it's, uh, there's a fun element to it. It's not meant to be uh, some kind of, uh, there's no political uh, sort of element to this. It's just a, a bit of fun. What, how do you see it? Do you like the idea of it? I, I love the idea because, uh, like I said, I used to be a school teacher before right. and a PE teacher, and I've studied quite a lot about sports and, and you know, the difference between men and women in sports. And... Uh, you get sports now, even I was commenting before, that even the darts now have women. And that is, has been a very sort of like macho sport, right. darts, right. where you get to go to the pub and yeah, yeah. men play it and not women. And, but now it's leveling up. And I think in chess even more. Because yeah. we've had, we've had, and Brian again has been the instigator of pushing the women into our open tournament. Right. And the he had the idea many years ago of putting the battle of the sexes. Yeah. Which was a very much of a fun. That thing. was a fun evening, wasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. You a put a boxing ring in the middle of the uh, of the hall. Yeah. And you and it was fast, yep. quick. There were women in one side, yep. the men in the other, and it was a very much of a fun thing. But this year, I think it's more. It is still a fun thing, but I think it could develop into a study of, you know, who yeah. a neurological study of who has a brains for what. Well, I mean, judging by the performances so far, it's clear that the the women are, you know, they were dominating. Yesterday they had a bit of a, a hiccup. They still have the lead. Who do you think is going to win it? Yeah, 
I don't. I, <laughs> you don't want to. I, I don't want to get into any. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, and I'll tell you why. Because I haven't been in the tournament. I don't understand chess that much okay. to say who would win it. No, I mean, again, I was asking about whether the women and the men are the same ranking or yeah, at they, a le- sem- similar level. They are, yeah. And if they are, you know, yeah. I mean, who knows? I mean, it's it's one of these things that is is refreshing to see. Yes. Let's put it that way. Yeah. It's very refreshing to see a tournament in which the men and the women ha- are exactly at the same level and they can compete, uh, you know, outrightly uh, equality in, in the whole of the tournament. And uh, it's great to see. Yeah, it is. And uh, it's it's really also thanks to you and uh, government for, you know, helping to make this happen under such difficult circumstances globally to get, we've got 20 nations here represented. That's, that's unbelievable. All continents of the world, Asia, America, yes, uh, Africa. I mean, it's amazing. I take my hat off to the organizers who have been working very hard yeah. for a very long time to get this going. Franco, Brian, and his team, their team, it's, it's, it's incredible. And uh, it's also good to see that there are all many countries represented here and that I think we are now seeing the tail end of this COVID thing. Let's hope so. Goodness me. It has been, it's been a tough few years for everybody. I think everybody is ready to go back to uh, living, living like we were. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, what can I say? Thank you so much for for just uh, you know your continual support and Gibraltar support. It's it's absolutely wonderful, and may this and the tournaments continue long into the future. Thank you very much. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. Let's have a look at the playing hall again, and then we'll uh, get to the games. All righty. So we can see there Eric Rosen playing Olga Giri, and we've got a slightly. Uh, unusual uh, position. I'm going to try and get see what happened there. And Eric's played a line which, well, I say it's unusual. It's not that unusual. It's a line that I've experimented with before, and we'll get that on the screen now. So it's actually, I've also been on both sides uh, mm. here um, in this position, and mm-hmm. I know it can be quite tricky, even though it is widely played these days. Yeah, I think players like Gawain Jones have played this. Um, this is the standard Italian position here, and most of the time, if you look at the top-level games, they play the quiet Italian with d3, get castled, and try to play like that. But of course, in the old days, when we learned the Italian, it was to try and go d4 in one go, because if you can achieve this center um, without any issues, you're going to have a nice position. And after e takes d4, the main line for years and years and years was just capturing back, but it was shown that the move bishop b4 check and this, you know, we've got romantic variations where things can go crazy, but in all lines here, black is doing okay. So Eric Rosen played the more fashionable way of this system, which is to play the move pawn to e5, so an, a, a division took an in-between move, basically, before capturing back. And, oops, sorry, knight v4 is a move, I beg your <laughs> pardon, but uh, Olga plays the, the, the classic reply, the classic reply, d5, hitting the bishop. The classic reply in the most unclassic position yeah, of exactly. the Italian. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and here it would be a mistake to take on f6, because after this, um, it looks as though, oh, I can take all these pawns, but actually what ends up happening is the two bishops here for black, the open board, means that white's king is in big danger. And if black can ever play the move pawn to d3, establishing a protected pass pawn, white is in trouble. So all top white players know that you can't really take on f6. You have to now pin the knight. The knight moves into e4, and now you take back on the d4 square. So you've won your pawn back. And this is where Olga now plays the move bishop to b6. Now, that is not the only move in the position. The move bishop b4 check is also fairly well known, which leads to different variations. You can block with the bishop or with the knight. But bishop to b6, also been played a lot, um, can, can still be considered a main line. The bishop and the knight, of course, pressurize this point. And black basically wants to play a very quick bishop g4, putting maximum pressure on d4. And sometimes black just wants to castle and play f6 very quickly, trying to break and undermine this center. 
And if you don't know what you're doing here with white, things can go get out of hand very, very quickly. So... But the same goes for black, actually. Also for black, yeah. It's a quite risky uh, position from the strategical point of view. Mm -hmm. Because many times when black plays f6, if we have time to capture on c6 and force black to take back with the pawn, then we have a forever strong spot on right. e5. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very interesting position and there were so many games of top players here. I'm curious which line is uh, Eri going to choose because I remember um, there is bishop e3 here, somehow uh, one of the most fashionable moves uh, lately. And then after bishop g4, some h4. Sorry. Uh, oh, you, oh so we in, are in, not. <laughs> in, in which position? So after bishop b6, uh, knight, it was knight c3 three played castles. short castle. Yes. Uh, yeah, and here I was telling about bishop e3, bishop then e3. bishop g4, h3, bishop h5, queen c2. Uh, right. There's uh, a lot of theory involved mm -hmm. here, and there have been some developments. Uh, um, I believe we're going to see a very well prepared Eric, but I'm not sure. Why is he taking so much time here? Because he should be still uh, still in his preparation. It's the main line for black after yeah, all. Yeah, no? it, it is the main line. And bishop e3, as you said, bishop g4 has been played oops, countless times at top level. And there are lots of games. I don't know if there's any sideline here that we can consider. But let's check in with back with that in a, bit while, in a while. Because I see some absolute craziness on the board just out of my... Now, I told you before the round, uh, Irina, that... I felt like uh, the game between Bilal and Irene could get out of hand, and that's exactly what's going on because I see oh, pawns what all over the is place. That? <laughs> exactly. Let's have a look. So the game started out uh, d4, knight f6, e4, e6, knight c6. Started out very classically with the Nimzo Indian. And g4. g4. This is like uh, Mamed Yarov style, right? Exactly. It's because he just played this g4 move in a slightly different position against Esipenko. And uh, yeah, I he believe played it I've here, never actually. seen it before after the Nimzo. What no, is that? I've never seen it either. Mamed Yarov just played this in Vikanze, the Tata Steel Tournament, which is going on at the moment, the Super Tournament in Holland. Um, he got a very interesting position against Yasipenko. And now... Bilal has taken it one step further, playing the move <laughs> G4 here. Now, you might all be asking, well, what's the idea? Why is this even move possible? Why can't I just take? Well, the idea for white is that you can go E4, hitting the knight, and now the knight's got a bit of a difficult decision. It normally comes back, and even in this position, things can get uh, just brainstorming here, completely out of control. For example, white can push further, black can come in, and I wonder if you can play the move queen I g4 think here. that's the idea, because after knight c3, you've got the intermediate a3 move. You've got right? a3. I was even thinking... Bishop d2. No. Oh, yeah, I was. bishop d2. I, I, I mean, you can play bishop d2. That's one of the ideas, for sure. I was even thinking, can we be so crazy and take here, <laughs> allow this, take on g7, rook f8, but, but after got bishop, queen you've seven. got queen e7, but oh sorry, you can go you can go um bishop g5 here. Wow. And that actually just wins. F6? Uh, F6 and now I can just do anything. Taking is just winning. <laughs> Unbelievable. It is so funny looking after rook takes f6, e takes f6, yeah. and the pawn is just promoting. There is no way to stop it. Or it's made in one. <laughs> you know, exactly. It's, it's just over. So I think that's what Bilal might have prepared. Again, that's, that's not necessarily false because after, let's say, takes king d1, black can now take a timeout to protect this pawn. But again, it's not easy. For example, if you castle, I fly out with bishop h6, threatening mate. And if you go g6 here, probably now I can kick the bishop with tempo, rook c1, the bishop goes back. And now I'm not even interested in winning material. I'm just going to play h4, h5 put the bishop on d3, and try and checkmate black. And it's it's all very dangerous stuff. And uh, It is very unpleasant to yeah. face this kind of uh, novelties uh, during the game, because then you feel like you should punish your opponent for uh, being so bold, you know? Yeah. But that is when you might uh, go wrong, actually, because... 
Normally you should just forget about this move, uh, not get over emotional and try to try to just follow the chess principles. And I believe that's exactly what uh, Irene is trying to do here. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so after g4, she plays very principally, uh, as you said. Normally, an attack on the flank should be met by an attack in the center. So this is the most principled move, apart from taking the pawn d5. And now Bilal just said, OK, I'll attack the bishop. Takes, takes. I'm still not unhappy if you take here, because I'm still going to do my e4 stuff. So Irene just decided to take on c4 instead. And now queen a4 check by Bilal hitting the king, hitting the pawn, and he's just not interested in this pawn now at all. For example, after bishop d7, queen takes e4, now black could just take a pawn here. And Bilal is basically saying, I just don't care. Uh, I'm going to use this g file. Maybe he just wants to play the move knight f3 followed by rook g1 here. But wait, what if I play first bishop uh, c6 instead of knight g4? Isn't white in big trouble here? No, knight f3. And still with the same idea. Yeah, no? just just you take, I'm going to go rook g1, and I'm going to claim that I'm perfectly active, and I'm going to win back on g7, and uh, no problems whatsoever, basically. That's a very unbalanced position, and it looks like uh, Bilal really wants to use that momentum they've got yesterday, right? I believe so, yeah, and I think he's really... Uh, very motivated for today's game, as you can see. So I expect fireworks there. Let's move on to another game. And where should we go next? Well, I can see... Ooh, well, Jillian's game has got very exciting against Yovanka Huska. Jillian with the white pieces, Yovanka with black. Yovanka playing the her Karakhan, <laughs> which is her opening. She wrote a book on it, a very good book. Um, and she plays uh, Jillian, knight who plays C3. the move knight c3. Yeah, knight c3, e6, and g4. Now, this opening here, which I can't remember the name of this line, uh, was the first ever line I learned against really? the Karakhan. Yeah. In fact, if you look at the mega database on Chessbase, I think my first ever game is in this position <laughs> on the database against James Bourne, probably... 96 or 97 or something like that. It was but a fantastic game, uh, actually. Isn't it a bit strategically risking? Because placing the knight uh, in front of the pawn sure. uh, seems uh, like it's not the most natural thing to do. It, it is risky, but it's also just a, a very uh, basically concrete line. Either it works or it doesn't. And after bishop g g6, the idea is to play knight g2. This was the, the line that I learned for years. Um, and it may be called the bayonet attack, uh, judging <laughs> by uh, some comments there in YouTube. The knight comes v2 to come to f4, and the idea is for white is to play h4 and knight f4 and give this bishop a headache because h5 is a threat. c5 and h4 anyway is the main line. And now black has got two ideas. You either play h6 or you play h5, giving the bishop room. Ivanka plays h5, and now knight f4 anyway. And one of the key interesting ideas. It already looks like things are getting out of hand for black here, because what do you do about this bishop on, on g6? Well, interestingly, after the move um, bishop here, black can play the move bishop h7. Now, this looks impossible because white can take a pawn here on h5, and you say, well, white has won a pawn. But his center is very fragile. He's very overextended. Exactly. And Yvanka plays knight c6 quickly. She's still in book. And if you don't know this very well with white, things can get out of control very, very quickly because black is actually extremely solid. Yes, you've you've sacrificed a pawn, but imagine you're able to get castled on the queen side. And if this knight ever removes itself, there's always going to be action against this pawn here on h4. And the center is close to collapsing as well. So I hope Jillian is very booked up here because if not, it doesn't look so by no. uh, by the time on the clock. It, it it looks as though he might he might not be, and if if that is the case, then uh, he, he's going to have to be very very sharp today because things can get completely out of completely out of control very quickly here. I've been on some on the end of some very bad losses in this particular variation, so Yovanka seems to know her stuff, so that's going to be very, very interesting to see. And so far, none of the games are boring. What, uh, what a fighting day it seems. 
No? Yeah, no, no, no boring games. The calmest game so far I can see out the corner of my eye is between, I believe, Efroimsky and Hussein Aziz. We'll go through this very quickly. And it's a semi tarash, right? It is a semi tarash. So this move here, mm -hmm. semi tarash, and knight takes d5. So I've seen that uh, Duda really likes this opening for black, uh, and he's played it a few times in mm -hmm. the Tata Steel, and it seems like black is absolutely fine here. Yeah, it's a very concrete opening. You allow white to build this big center, but black has got a very solid structure. He's also able to exchange some pieces off the board. And we get this position here, which is kind of the starting position of the modern uh, semi-Tarash. Black has got this queenside majority. White has got the center. Uh, but black is just so incredibly solid that it's very difficult to get something here. So. Uh, white plays bishop c4. This is normal knight to d7 castles and b6. Black, again, logically puts the bishop on the long diagonal, rook d1, and rook e1, putting the pieces in the middle. This has been played hundreds of times at top level recently. The bishop comes back to b3, and now rook to e8, h3, and knight f6. Very, very, very standard stuff. This is, stuff. I believe, uh, just uh, the same position uh, from the game. Uh, was it... I'm not sure who was it with white, but I'm certain that Duda had it with black pieces and at some point the rook came to e7. And uh, ah, it was that piece sacrifice. Do mm. you remember it? Mm. Against Vidit. I can't remember that game, actually. Yeah, it was a very interesting game. Okay. And uh, Duda was very well prepared. He gave uh, the two pieces yeah. for a rook and a pawn. But then white's coordination was not great. And Vidit actually struggled a little bit to, to okay. force a draw. So I'm curious, is really uh, Marcel so well prepared here? Because it seems like she's got one hour 36 on her clock. Well, this is like a standard position. I mean, knight f6 is also very common, and, and basically here, white tends to bring the queen out to it f4. It was exactly what happened in that game, and that was the point of the move h3, that you can at times retreat the queen to h2. Correct. After knight h5, the queen can come back, and in fact, a repetition like this is not out of the question. I mean, it's out of the question here, because I just don't think these players will play like that, but at top level, you've, you've often seen... Um, something like this. Maybe here white can go queen e5 to save some time. But there are all kinds of things. There are lots of ding games. There are lots of Carlson games. So we'll see. But that's a relatively, I would say, uh, cla uh, well, modern and classical position. Uh, I like the chances for the ladies' team in this game, actually. Okay. Well... <laughs> mm, I'm not sure. I mean, white is still very, very solid. Uh, white really has to go very, very crazy here if he's going to, uh, if he's going to lose these positions. Do you think Hussein wants to to be solid today? Yeah, I think he's just in general quite a solid player. I just don't think he's looking to beat everybody at at, at any cost uh, at any moment. I think he's just naturally he plays a Berlin with black. He's playing this with white. It's clear his style is is not an all-in style. So we'll see if he gets something or we'll see how that one develops. Let's go to another game. And I see out the corner of my Sabina Brunello against Nina Batsiashvili. Uh, this one is weird. Let's have a look. So it went d4, d5. I have D5. a story about this line. The move a6. What's your story? All right. So after white played c5 in this position, we actually uh, lost... Uh, Oh, uh, painful memories. Okay. We lost uh, the most important match in the Bundesliga uh, when in this exact position, uh, our player Lela Yavakishvili chose this line with C5 mm -hmm. against a very young and unexperienced player. So I guess she just wanted to surprise her. And the game continued with B6. C takes B6. And now Lela was probably expecting C takes B6 with, you know, a very long game where she could try to press her and so on. But C5 followed. Mm. And suddenly uh, White uh, has some troubles in the center. Mm -hmm. And this can go wrong very easily mm. because Lela's a very strong player, a grandmaster. And, oh, 
it was a tough game to watch, actually. I'm sure, yeah, because now the structure has changed. Black's got a bit more energy. I mean, it's not the end of the world for White at all, of course. The move c5 itself is a, is a very uncommon move in these Queen's Gambit declines. I mean, just to put things into perspective, if knight f6, this move here would be laughed at by a Wait, top level. and now I realize, you know, that Nino is actually our teammate in... Uh, ah. And she's the teammate of Lela, so I'm sure that she knows she the game. She knows about it. Yeah. Indeed. But in general, I, I mean, the, the concept of going c5 is can only be justified if black has played a6. You can't play c5 in a normal uh, queen's gambit declined because black can immediately go b6. And if you take, then he, black takes here, has got the a file and is ready to play c5 and is doing well. So it, this move can only be justified after a6. But even after a6, I mean, for me, it's stylistically not what I would do here. I understand the idea of a6 is to be able to, for example, if white goes here, there's an argument that black can now take. And after e4, you might just be able to protect all your pieces with b5 and be a pawn up. But for example, the move c takes d5 feels like, to me, probably still the, the best move. But black's claim is that after e takes d5, you don't have a, a very decent way to develop this bishop because you can't pin a knight, because there's no knight to pin. And I guess if the bishop goes to f4, uh, you can go knight f6, bishop d6, or you can maybe play c6, bishop d6, and be very solid. And I know Carlsen has tried this a few times with black as well. Um, so c5 is very interesting, and, and Nino reacted with a classic response as well, pawn to e5, immediately taking advantage of the fact that uh, bishop takes c5 is in the air, um, if d takes e5, I guess you don't take on c5 immediately. You know what it looks like, this position? It uh, uh, somehow reminds me of uh, the of the French. Mm -hmm. It's like a reversed French. Yeah, it is it? actually, yeah. <laughs> it is, especially after e5, e3. We could actually have a French, but with this well, move included... C c5 or c4. Yeah, well, yeah. it's actually a move which... Uh, which has its own idea, trying to somehow not allow the bishop to d6. But then on the other hand, now that the center is closed, uh, well, I guess that black will try to close up th the center even more with uh, means like e4. And then she could even play f5, could she? It's possible. I mean, the game went knight f... Uh, sorry, knight c6, knight f3 by Brunello. And now... She could go absolutely go e4 here, and after and she did. Yeah, and she did, and after knight d2 to play f5, and we we have a very weird reversed French, and I kind of like it for black. I have to say, with the the fact that there's no tension now on this pawn, for me means everything, and uh, black can develop quite an initiative here on the queen side. Uh, knight f6, bishop. Uh, the bishop can come to e7, castles, and then you you can always look for f4 moves here but you know i'm so excited to see so many interesting games mm -hmm. today it looks like all the players are up for a big fight yes and we're gonna have a lot of fun today i agree all right let's uh let's go to another game then where should we go next should we go to joe gallagher and against pierre kremlin because joe yeah he's, he, wow he's he's got the sort of position he likes he uh plays an open sicilian so we have a a Paulson, as you said, or yeah, a Taimanov? Yeah, is an expert on that. She has played it all her life. I'm very curious what has Joe prepared here. I might use it at some point myself. Huh? Yeah, well, <laughs> let's see. Joe plays very classically with the bishops on e2 and e3. Knight f6, queen d2, bishop e7, and f4. Again, very classical castles. And now Joe has got actually a bit of a decision but to make. wait a bit. F4 is already a little bit, you know, a committal move. Because yes. if you want to aim for an English attack, then you want the pawn on F3. Well, there was no reason to put it here, but you could go G4 immediately, you know. With the pawn on F4, the pawn on E4 might be mm, having a bit of a trouble at some point. Uh, it's... Uh, not what I'm used to in these positions, actually. It's very aggressive. It's very aggressive. Um, I guess Joe had also looked at this before the game because 
After castles white is not obliged to castle on the queen side, Joe clearly states his intentions by doing that, because white could just castle king side. There is a very important difference here. Oh. The queen is on d2. Yes. And that is not exactly, I believe, the greatest move in all these right. uh, types of positions with the short castle, because many times the queen actually wants to go to e1 and then to g3. And the queen on d2 is not doing much. Uh, I believe that would be a good version of the Scheveningen for uh, for black. I, I tend to agree with you. I think I think it would be, uh, which is why Joe said, "Well, this is my idea, which is the castle on the long side." Um, and now Pierre took on d4, which is a very standard move again. Um, the problem black has is that after a move like bishop d7, sometimes white can just remove this knight either to b3 or to f3, probably to b3. And now uh, g4, g5 comes, and this knight is going to... The black pieces are just a bit kind of... Exactly, yeah. yeah. The bishop doesn't want to be on d7 in these right. lines because, as I said, the pawn on e4 should be challenged, and that uh, black can achieve by bringing the bishop to the other diagonal, to b7. Right, exactly. Which is why then uh, white castled... Uh, and now Pia took on d4, Joe took back with the queen, and Pia played the very natural Sicilian move knight to d7, putting the knight on a, on a better square, allowing it to come out here, sometimes preparing the move e5 as well. But Joe, after a seven minutes think here, decided let's go for it with h4. Now, I have to say, I would take white all day in these positions. I, I think we're just quite a lot faster here with white with our with our attack the idea of h4 is sometimes to run this pawn sometimes it's to run both pawns and then play g6 where you force the opening of lines there is a problem with this position you know what i don't like here for white uh yeah go on because okay let's assume i play bishop f6 now taking on d6 probably isn't an option right because i can just take on c3 or is it well, there are I think positions it, where white uh, could allow that. Is I think this is those? very much an option, taking on d6. Because Bishop if you, takes c3. Yeah, it takes, takes. Queen a5 is... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now if I go queen b4. Queen to c7, I guess. Or, ah, you, <laughs> you want yeah. to trap my well, queen. Well, <laughs> I, I, I will trap your queen if you let me. Bishop c4 actually traps the queen. It's not... a5 actually... Uh, yeah, the queen isn't trapped suddenly. But... At the very least, I can get a very pleasant position with white after, let's say, queen b3. If you give the check, I just move and the queen is trapped. So you have to take... And then c takes. And then even. c takes, and your position is really bad here with black. Uh, I'm going bishop b5 next, mm -hmm. and, and the position is bad. But let's check queen c7, because this is a very strange structure. I mean, white is definitely having some problems uh, on the queen side, but can really back uh, uh, black uh, use that? I think this is very bad for black. Really? Yeah. Hmm. My instinct tells me that the lack of the dark squared bishop, the fact that you're not mobilized on the but back... But I want to be very fast with b5 and then, say, bishop b7, knight b6. How do you attack me on the king side? Well, okay, let's say I go h5. Mm-hmm. So you already want to play h6, I believe. Yeah. Mm. Maybe e5 here. Yeah, it's just too slow, Irina. I mean, I go h6. Mm. I don't think it's that bad. Oof. I would say if we, we, we don't use an engine, ladies and gentlemen, uh, <laughs> pretty much ever. If I click that engine button, I will say that the engine will say this is winning for white. Really? Yeah, like plus two and a half, three. Should we might try? Might be, might be. Okay, let's give it a let's try. Let's give it a go. <laughs> yeah. Plus two, you were right. I'm very surprised because... I'm playing these positions with white, and it is something I'm always afraid of, that maybe if I spoil my pawn structure on the king side, I might get in trouble. No, I think I think this posi these positions, you're just too slow here with black. I've already got a pawn on h6. You don't have the dark squared bishop. It's already a very, very, very unpleasant spot here 
for uh for black and yeah the computer just thinks it's winning for white i don't think you can play i don't think you can play bishop f6 here i just mm. think it's a little bit too slow i think the one of the key ideas in this well f of course you can go b5 uh immediately here but uh, then you could uh, just carry on with h5 now yeah exactly so i i wonder whether black is thinking about the move e5 E5. Yeah, that's... What about the D5 square? Your yeah, concerned? sure, but but the claim is I also get the E5 square for my knight. So, for example, after F takes E5, knight takes E5. Um, knight D5. Knight D5. I guess, again, the question is... I, I, I'm just not in time here with black. I would love yeah. to go bishop E6 and take, but I, I'm too slow. So E5 also just doesn't work here. I'm actually very concerned for Pia. So let's say she plays b5, which is the more uh, natural move, and let's say I but just. But the go problem here is that the queen from d4 protects very well the b4 square, Correct. and mm -hmm. we don't even need to use that tempi on playing a3. Right. Um, yeah, it's it's a very interesting idea by White. Yeah, I think this is a, a very very dangerous position for Black, and I think Joe feels very comfortable as well, and Pia doesn't look that comfortable to me, so. Yeah. H4. What about, I have another idea. Okay. Knight c5 here. I still want to make that bishop f6 happen, but in a better mm. version. Okay, h5. Bishop f6 now. E5. Ah, you have e5. That's not working. No. No. So oh, and we have we have a result already, and uh, we didn't even look at the game. Let's quickly look at what happened. This is... Uh, Chonka against Musichuk. I thought, I actually, st I think I said this one was going to be quite a solid one today. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had a feeling. This but was such, a, such a quick draw. Yeah, to, to draw so quickly is kind of unusual, but let's see. We had a two knights Karakhan, one of the the old main line. Okay, White has got the two bishops, but the bishops aren't really working so well. Uh, knight a4, bishop d6, and d4. Okay, so White trying to open the position for his bishops, but Black... Very solid. White still s probably has a small edge here. And now Chonka plays what looks like a very strange move to my mind. Yeah, indeed. Rook, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. He played Rook to D1. Why does he not play the move Pawn to C4 here? The very idea. good question. Yeah, the idea being that the Knight can now come back to C3 with the Pawn on C4, which is what you want. And after Knight F6, you can play, for example, Queen E2. Perhaps Knight F5. Knight F5, or... Rook D1. And just castle. Yeah, but white must be slightly better here with the two bishops and space advantage. Uh, yeah. Can play pretty much any any move here. I mean, it's. But it you have some problems with the d4 pawn, no? Yes, but I don't know. I don't know. B3. Uh, I kind of want to go a3, b4, bishop b2. Yeah, that would be that would be a possibility. But then I could also play a5. These positions are not so easy. If black would have a bishop on on uh, c8 and white would have a knight on f3, mm -hmm. I would definitely agree that white uh, white is better. But here we have traded a pair of light pieces. I think black has uh, you just think enough black's here. Okay. Yeah. yeah, could be the case. As I say, I'm uh, I'm not uh, I'm not saying it's. Yeah, it doesn't feel bad for Black. But, but they it, could have uh, Yeah, I mean, tried, you, you yeah. can play on here. That's the point. And he played Rook D1 immediately, and this allowed Black to play a very nice move, Queen A5. Now the Knight kind of has to come back to C3, and now you hit the Queen, and now you can exchange Queens. I think this has been a really a nice uh, sequence. And now after Queen takes A5, Balash offered the draw, and Maria took it, which is um, not surprising because... Yeah, after knight takes a five, black really isn't hoping for much. White is just so solid here. Balash. Exactly, and uh, quite a good result with the black pieces yeah. to secure a draw against uh, an opponent which was doing fine in this tournament. He had not lost a game, right? Yeah, absolutely. Balash hasn't. He's been one of the more solid guys for the guys. So, uh, And indeed, here the draw offers are not forbidden. So uh, there are no uh, 30 <coughs> or 40 move rules. Indeed. All right, so one result. Let's continue going through the games. Now, where haven't we been yet? Uh, it feels like we haven't been to Chris against Abdul Malik, actually, and we certainly haven't. Chris with white plays the... Oh, and uh, this is actually Jean-Saya's favorite opening, yes. the Grunfeld. Yes, 
the Grunfeld. Very, very, very dangerous opening. Um, of course, White has got many ways to immediately make a draw if he wants, but uh, Chris are not interested and plays <laughs> a very modern variation with h4. You can do this here. Uh, you can do this here. There are lots of ways to, to play h4, but the idea of this move is that you are tempting h5, where you would distract the knight away from d5. And if black now takes the pawn, white's able to get the big center with e4. Uh, and then try and recapture this pawn here. So h5 as a reaction is very natural. The downside to that is you give up control over the g5 square by either a knight or a bishop landing, and that's what Chris did. Bishop to g5. And now Jean Sire plays the absolutely typical Grunfeld response, which is to play the move d takes here on. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, d takes c4 is not the move. C5, I beg your pardon, is the move attacking the center. This move c5 uh, makes the Grunfeld work. Uh, but Chris just took queen to a5, and now c takes d5. Now, what's really interesting is this idea of the double pawn sacrifice happens in a different line without the inclusion of h4, h5. I have to say that I know nothing about the Grunfeld, unfortunately. Right. Well, this idea does happen a lot. And my initial thought is that this actually, the inclusion of h4, h5 benefits white in this particular, uh, in this particular line because a lot of the time knight e4 is a threat and sometimes this bishop is a bit vulnerable on g5. But now with the added protection, we don't have to worry about it. So for the moment, uh, white is two pawns up and Jansai just says, I ain't worried about nothing. <laughs> knight b to d7. Hitting, wow. hitting the pawn on c5. And... What is the idea if I play c6? Yeah, if you go c6, <laughs> I guess she just wants to take, take, and play some knight c5, I guess. Is there really enough compensation for the two pawns here? Perhaps black wants something like knight f to e4 at some yeah, point. Yeah, knight, knight e4 is coming next. There's even some knight e4 and then knight a4. For example, let's say white played, let's just say white played a standard move like e3, knight e4, and let's say you played rook c1. This is already a bit ugly because I can, can take. take. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to illustrate I mean, black can get the whole army on this c3 mm -hmm. square. So somehow white's king might struggle to, to get to safety, right? That's the whole point of this line, yeah. I guess. In fact, here I fully expect. I don't, uh, well, that's not true. Uh, I don't know what the best move here is for Leandro, actually. The move queen a4 is, looks interesting to my eyes. Yeah, just to get rid of that um, pin. Now, of course, black can win a pawn back by takes, takes, and takes, but now at least I'm holding on to this pawn, and I can play, for example, castles on the queen side, Guarding this pawn more, gaining tempo on this and knight. And you are not getting that pawn back anytime no. soon. No. So what about the move queen a4? Yeah, it uh, it definitely looks interesting. Can I? No, queen c7 can't be good, or could it? No, it's. It, it, I'm it, a bit it concerned. Could, it could be. It could be. Queen c7 could be a move here. Maybe um, I could just play knight b or knight. Oh, this is so messy because knight b5, queen c5, rook c1, it means that I'm just winning uh, the rook from a8. So I have to go with the Something queen somewhere like this. else. Is this what you mean? Yeah. Ah, because I'm doing this, yeah. Exactly. So the queen will have to go no, somewhere but else. Then it's, then it's gone then very c6 wrong. Is yeah. coming. This, this is going wrong for black, getting pushed back. Then it means that black has to, has to trade queens, no? Well, yeah, I mean, Queen, queen a d8 would be a terrible move to make, no? Well, I don't know. Maybe that is the move that she wants to make, but... And I what after c6, knight... Oh, uh, yeah, knight c5, I can take check and make a queen. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit concerned. Like, what do you do against Queen a4 here, exactly? 
Yeah, very, very good uh, move, I believe. Hmm. Strange one. Yeah, I inst again, intuitively feels like things might get... Yeah, you know, things could get out of hand here for uh, for Shansai. She's, uh, she's one of those players, you know, which... Uh, uh, I think she's a she's a confidence player as well. I think uh, if things start to go a bit badly, she she can sometimes lose the thread but a I've bit. Never, I've never seen her actually losing a few oh. games in a row, you know? Right. Well, And uh, I would be very surprised to see her getting... Oh, and we, we have Queen A4 on the board. Do we? I believe, so. or, or don't no, we? No, that's just my analysis. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> that's just my analysis. We don't have it just yet. Hmm. It will be interesting to see uh, how the game will develop if Leandro makes this move. I think it's it might be just the best move. And if Queen takes c5? Here. Mm. This was the move that uh, I, I, I was trying to make. E4. Yeah, E4 or E3, I wasn't sure. Le I just wanted to protect d5. Because E4, knight g4 is a bit annoying. Queen c2. Queen yeah. But I feel as though a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it f it feels as though black is all right. I I, I much prefer e3 here, just uh, keeping con some control over. And the I cannot take the pawn on d5. Ah, now you can take on d5, of course. Sorry, now you can take on d5. Yeah, so that's the idea, isn't it? Queen a4, queen takes c5. That's that's her idea. There must mm. have been an idea, and and that must be it. Yes. What about bishop e3 here? I don't like it. I just have a very simplistic approach. I want knight b5, bishop f4, and try to win some material. A materialistic world. It might be good, though, knight b5. I have no squares for this queen, huh? Yeah, and you know, worst case scenario on a7 is also hanging. Hmm. I could get very greedy there. But after queen d8, there's some knight takes d5 coming. d6. Just dis but but and you know what? I just castle. castle and things can get very unpleasant for white here because I might win an exchange, but that might not be enough, no? Yeah, knight c seven. Here, for example, uh the, my point was that after rook b eight I have bishop takes a seven. Yes. It feels like the king is still stuck in the center for white, but but maybe you can't uh, do much about it. Can well, let's you? say I take, you Bishop take, takes. I take, hitting the knight. Mm -hmm. Knight b5, I guess, yeah. Yeah, now I just need to start playing very actively. Let's say I, I can't go. Let's say I go knight g4, hitting this guy. Mm -hmm. Knight b to d4. Okay, knight c6, I play. Or bishop d7, knight c6. I don't know, something smells fishy here. Or mm -hmm. queen b6. It's one of those ones where, again, I've got very bad memories of, of being on the white side of uh, of these positions, giving winning the exchange but getting checkmated. It, it, it is interesting. I mean, it's all very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, forcing concrete. So it's just a case of is Leandro going to calculate it or not? And I, he doesn't really have a choice. He has to calculate it. And it's interesting that both players are out of book, uh, judging by uh, by the clock. Uh, we might see again just a street fight. Yeah, we could we could very well do indeed. Yeah, we could do indeed. But I really liked the idea behind Queen A4. Mm -hmm. Even though queen c5, yeah, seems to be the right way to to continue with the black there. Mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, let's carry on. Uh, and where else haven't we been to? Bobby Cheng against Marisa Bag is not a game we've looked at yet. Let's have a look at this one. Uh, this was a Slav solid Moran. Okay, very solid as predicted. Very standard opening. It looks very similar to what was on the board between uh, Jovanka and Sabino yesterday. Mm. But Sabino chose a different plan. He continued with Queen e7, right. Bishop a3, I believe. Yeah, a bit earlier I think he did yeah. this, yeah. 
But this time, Marie plays the very natural c5, trying to break out in center. c takes d5. And now, after c takes d4, to play the move rook takes d4. And what's the idea after knight takes d5? A very good question. It cannot really be... N no, rook g4 cannot work because of knight f6, knight 7 to f6. But then why put the rook on d4? Hmm. Yeah, this is a... This is an interesting <laughs> Struggling one. to find it. It is so interesting that all the games today are so tactically complicated. Wow. Maybe sh maybe just queen to d2. Can yeah, I thought about it, but I did not like some bishop c5. Ah, uh, bishop c5. And then where well, do bishop we Well, bishop c5 I can take. And after bishop d4, queen you've got d4. the intermediate queen d4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I win. Okay, knight d5, bishop d5 I can take back. Yeah, and now, and now I can... I mean, I've got rook d5 or rook g4. For example, rook g4. Knight f6. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't believe this for white. I, d I never like putting the rook here. I think it's probably too much. It looks very strange. Yeah. I was trying to justify this exchange sacrifice. But that's not really working. Knight f6. Probably doesn't work. Queen f5. Hmm. I believe everything is fine here for black. Even a move like bishop e7. Don't Just know. a very gotta passive one. Yeah, got to be a little careful here with black. Queen c7. Bishop d3, g6, huh? Mm -hmm. Knight g5. Oh, knight g5, queen c2 is a... But I've got even h6, because after bishop f6, I have h2. Ah, but then you have rook d... No, you don't. I don't, but I mean, I can take back, and then I've got two pawns. But just to illustrate, uh, without this rook d1, if I go knight g5 here, threatening this... Um, what is uh, what is the difference after h6? There's a slight difference... Uh, oh, the bishop on b2 looks nice, but can you really... So if I take, you I take... I take on g5. I go rook d1, I guess. Queen c7. But I could... Ah, okay. Okay, no, I will not. <laughs> Just queen c7. But even. now, hold on, I mean, it's not... There are things in this position. Bishop d3, g6. Bishop f6. Bishop f6, queen f6. Rook d8 or something. Oops. Even, even queen c3 maybe first. But yeah, I mean, but white isn't risking anything right here. He's got two pawns, right? For the mm, yeah. Probably not risking anything, king f1, king e2. But I think it's a bit over optimistic. Yeah, it it, it might it might be over optimistic to Perhaps do this. Perhaps I didn't play. Good it for a blitz best, game. But <laughs> yeah, right. Uh. Okay, and knight takes d5, I believe, is on the board. So we're going to find out from uh, from Bobby Cheng. Is he is he planning to do something like this? Uh, probably not, knowing his style, but we'll see. Now, uh, is there another game? Ravi Haria, did oh, we... Oh, yeah, let's check this one. Right. Uh, how is uh, Gunai Mamadzada doing today? e4, c5, knight c3, a6. Well, quite an unorthodox way of uh, yeah. playing the Sicilian, the closed Sicilian. Well, a6 is one of the fashionable moves, but definitely not the main line. Um, actually, Gunai is an Eidorf player, so perhaps right. uh, that's why she started with a6, still hoping for a knight of 3d6 and transposing to the main lines. Right. Let's see what happens. Yeah, g3 and now d6. So, I mean, Ravi didn't l allow her to get her knight off. So, this is one of the, the move orders where you do that. So, g3, a6. Sorry, d6, bishop g2, knight f6, and knight f3. Okay, so Ravi just playing, um, you know, a typical line. And now e5. e5. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. Taking advantage of the fact that Gunai has not developed her knight to c6. So he gets a slightly imbalanced pawn structure. Knight takes e5, castles an a4. This is a very clever way of playing by Ravi. And queen c7, knight c4, I really love what he's done here. And I think Gunai 
actually has to be a bit careful here. She's got a worse version of a line uh, which uh, comes about via this move order. Yeah. Which uh, has actually been played in Gibraltar. I remember mm -hmm. seeing a few games. I think uh, Nakamura played this against Gelfand years ago. Vaguely remember. Uh, and it feels as though White has got a fantastic version of that very line. The knight sits beautifully here on c4. Uh, the pawn on a4 stopping. Well, I mean, there's the long. The, this bishop has enormous pressure down here. And the problem Black has is, for a start, sometimes a5 knight into b6 comes. Exactly. So you have to sometimes put the knight there. But when you put the knight there, white just goes d3. And then suddenly the move bishop f4 is coming. And you never really want to block with e5. Let's just say Black plays um, a move like h6. Uh, the problem is you never re I mean, here you probably do play e5. But the point is that you start to give up some squares here. In the it's middle of the board. It's a very interesting line, indeed. Yeah. Hmm. I really like what Ravi has done, and I'm actually a bit concerned for Gunai here. Not because her position is objectively very, very bad. It's just very unpleasant to play this position. I've had this with Black. White is risking absolutely zero, and he's, as I say, he's got a better version than the main line. Uh, from this variation after 4e5. Yeah. And the problem is I don't have even time to bring the bishop to c6 because, for example, after bishop d7 there is a5 and after bishop c6 there might be even knight b6. Even this you might survive because rook a7 followed by knight bd7 actually kicks the knight. Perhaps this is... Uh, this but after the bishop d7 play, I'm no? going to go d3. And bishop c6. And bishop f4. Queen. Where to put that queen? You Queen can't. D8, yeah, you that's... have to go back to d8, and now I've got a few ideas, some interesting ideas. Um, You're trying to make something work. Yeah, it doesn't work. I really, in an ideal world, would love to take this. Mm, yeah, and bishop it, g2, yeah. And if I could get this, I'm really happy with white because I've got all these weaknesses. Of but, course. But unfortunately, you have the intermezzo. Bishop g2, and then then this is really nothing for white. But something doesn't feel right here. I gained all this tempo. Like now I can go a5, for example. I have to take, yeah. You take, take. Yeah, and now I will have to play knight b to d7, I guess. Yeah, because if you put the knight on c6, this really is awkward to put the rook on a7 here. But could I play maybe... Is knight f d7 just a bad move? I really want the other knight to come to c6. Yeah. Knight f d7. I don't think it's a bad move at all. But maybe I can just start getting, uh, you know, some decent peace activity. Knight e4. Knight c6. Knight c6. I Maybe a move like h4 or knight d6. Maybe just even a move like c3. Mm -hmm. It feels as though white has got lots of options. This knight on c4 is just gorgeous. Maybe just c3 or something. C3. But I like that I've managed to, to trade those bishops because my bishop on c8 was a very sad piece, no? It was, it was. But still, it's still, still black sad. will have some yeah, problems it's, to it, solve, it's, definitely. It's, it's a bit sad. It's a bit annoying, this position. So I expect Gunai to... Uh, to actually have some serious practical problems in her game. Now, I believe we've actually uh, seen all the games so far, at least briefly. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go for our first break. Uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes. It's round four of Battle of the Sexes. One result so far, very quick draw between uh, Chonka and Muzichuk. Nine games still going on. All very, very different positions, uh, very exciting positions in many of them. So we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. See you in a few minutes.
Hello everybody, welcome back to round four of Battle of the Sexes here, live from the Garrison Library in Gibraltar. Uh, we are in the heat of battle. One result, a quick draw before the break. Chonka against Muzichuk, not really much to say there. Very solid game, both players clearly were not in the mood for a big fight, meaning we've got nine games still ongoing. And in the break, uh, Irina, you were saying that uh, you felt that I Irene was in uh, potentially big trouble against Bilal. Yeah, apparently this uh, G4 uh, move gave her some uh, headache. And let's check uh, the position she's got now. I really... Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's well, we start can go from, from where we left off. Yeah, over. so mm -hmm. we, we last left it at Queen A4 check. Okay, Irene blocked with a knight. We were looking at Bishop D7, but she blocked with the knight. Queen takes pawn. And she just refused to take this pawn, right? Yeah. She, she just didn't want to take it. Um, so she played queen d5, trying to simplify the position, get the queens off. You're f you force the queen trade. And now she took back with the pawn. Mm -hmm. Maybe some argument for knight takes d5, bishop d2 and e5. That looks like a very nice sequence, actually. Yeah, right. Even though uh, e takes d5 also looks quite logical. Sure. Um, because now after g5 there is knight e4, hitting the pawn on c3, and there might be some trouble there. So uh, Bilal played the strange-looking move f3. Um, wow, what a, what a strange way to play the opening in this game. So strange. This move is just... I mean, he's protecting the pawn and stopping knight e4, exactly. that's his argument. It's very strange, but I, I, I kind of like it somehow. But Irene's reaction looks just a little bit flat, I would say. Yeah, you because know? this bishop d7 now uh, takes back from the knight an important square. And then potentially after g5, where would that knight go? Uh, exactly. So there's some g5, but this move, I mean, okay, Bilal played bishop f4, hitting the pawn. She castled queenside, and now e3. So she's, uh, Bilal is basically saying, okay, I'm going to play bishop d3, king d2, knight e2, h4, h5, press there, put a rook here if I have, uh, sorry, not on b4, but on the rook on the, on the b line and say, black doesn't have that many decent ideas. Maybe one idea is to try and seek some squares here with the knight, but it's not many ideas. And Irene decides to go h5 I immediately. I really don't like this I, move. I hate this move. I think this is... Because at least after g5, Black had the idea of playing knight to h5, somehow mm. winning that uh, that bishop. Mm -hmm. But now the pawn has taken away the square from the knight. Yeah, and the knight has to go back to e8. And now after bishop d3, she, her idea was to redeploy it via d6. Oh, but, but that bishop on d7 would be so much better now on e6 because you could capture then back with right. the rook on d6. Now we see that somehow black's pieces are not feeling comfortable. And now with this doubled pawns on d6 and d5, it is definitely white who has quite a significant advantage, I believe. Yeah, it's one of those interesting ones because... I mean, maybe they're not as bad as they look because uh, Black has got two files that she can work with to hit some pawns. But I do agree, it looks just a little bit... I don't know, it looks it, yeah. it, it looks a bit... Knight e2, she played h4, which I, strategically I like. I like putting this pawn here because White would love to put the pawn on h4 and the knight on f4, fixing Indeed. the pawn on a light square. So she played h4, which I like, knight to f4. And knight to e7, protecting the pawn. And now a4, almost certainly trying to go a5, gaining space. And now Irene plays another move strategically, which I don't mind. But at the same time, I see the dangers with it, which is that you leave the b-file very, very weak. So, for example, if... Bill king d2. Yeah, king d2 is like almost certainly going to be played. Rook h to b1, and then maybe bishop to b5. You know what's the problem here? Black hasn't got any counterplay because the knight must stay on e7 and protect the d5 pawn. So you cannot really use that semi-opened e file. Mm. And on the c file, you cannot do much because my king from d2 will be protecting very well that pawn. Even at some point, I might consider, after bringing the king to d2 and the rook h to c1, let's say I might even consider playing c4, mm. somehow helping you to get rid of that pawn, but then attacking very, very nasty uh, on f7. That will be 
a difficult uh, a difficult position to hold for black i believe yeah i i i have to say i mean i'm i i do believe why it should be somewhat better here especially after king i mean king d2 is not really a move you spend a lot of time on here as white it's it's the most natural it's the most obvious and i, I don't see why you wouldn't play this move yeah. quickly and he's just played it of course and do you see a plan for black here i struggle to find any counterplay what could yeah, be Black's I, I, idea? I don't, is the honest answer. I don't see a plan here for Black. I really don't. Perhaps I would prefer my king to be not on c8, but somewhere on a7. g7. No, even oh. on g8. Okay, just ideally speaking, and then placing a rook on a8, one on b8, and trying to make b5 happen, and then argue that that pawn might do something. But with the king on c8, I don't see any counterplay at all for Black. Yeah, I don't either. I I'm very pessimistic here because all of these plans just take so long, and uh, this is a th yeah, this is a this is a difficult position. Irene also down half an hour on the clock. Mm, right, yeah. she's gonna need she's gonna need a, a bit of. Uh, oh, she's about to play a move, bishop. I was gonna suggest C6. this move, but you know, just trying to free the knight, but still, it is not easy to Super find ugly. a better place for it. But you know, now white can even consider at times a move like g6, trying to, you know, uh, make even more of black spawns weak. I don't know if you want to go g6 here exactly. I, I don't, yeah, I mean, it's certainly a move. Um, because my idea was that after f takes, I could take with the bishop, and then you are left with not a great bishop against a great knight mm -hmm. who will attack all the pawns. And also mm -hmm. the pawn on g7 becomes a target. Mm -hmm. And if you play f6, then e6 is weak. Right. It is a very sad position, I am afraid, for g6 black. g6 could be a good move here. g6 could be a really good move here. Yeah, because this yeah. bishop, I mean, this bishop performs one role, which is to to defend a pawn, but it's obviously a very sad bishop here. You know how they call uh, this bishop in Russian? They call it a pawn. They call it a pawn, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's 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 the feeling I get here. Um, Let's check another game yeah. and hope that Irene will be able to survive this one. Okay, where should we go? Let's go to back to Joe Gallagher against Pierre Kremlin. Yeah, that was a very exciting game. It seems like Joe is uh, trying to build up an attack on uh, on Black's king, and meanwhile Pia has uh, also tried to prepare the b4 move. Yeah, so she played b5, which I felt was the move that she wanted to play. Joe correctly plays h5, trying to play h6, as we've learned from uh, the engines. This is really what you want to do, and Pia stops it with h6. But the problem with this move is you now create a hook with this move. In other words, white can now uh, push the pawn to g5, and there's no way you can avoid files being open. So here, Joe uh, plays king b1. But why not g4 immediately? I believe that was the move I was concerned about. I thought that Pia might try e5 here. Mm -hmm. And the difference between this and the, the ver one of the variations we looked at before was that the pawn is now on h5, so after takes, takes knight d5, Black no longer has, uh, sorry, Black no longer has a problem because maybe the move Bishop G5 exists here. Now I'm not saying that this is amazing either, but at least there's some control over the dark squares here. Right, fair, fair. I like I like this E5 idea. So Joe played uh, King to B1, a prophylactical move. Um, yeah, King to B1, and now uh, Pia. Yeah, so the king, of course, now if the, any bishop g5 comes, there's never checks or anything like that. Pia now played rook b8, which is also a very standard move, forcing, trying to force b4. And now Joe moved the bishop out the way in order to meet b4 with knight e2, I assume. Do you think he wants oh, to maybe bring not. it to e2? Maybe he does want to move it to a4 still, with the idea queen a5, b3. Yeah, this looks actually like a sort of 
French, you know, do you remember those lines with bishop mm -hmm. to e7 and then the knight goes to a4 even sometimes? But yeah, I'm I mean, not this sure looks that's... more like a typical Sicilian. I mean, this this is this this kind of position has been played a lot in because mm. it, it can't quite be a French because this pawn is on d6, right? So it's no, I was just imagining a pawn on d5 and one on right. e5 and then <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, <be. laughs> yeah. If we had d5 e5, suddenly yeah. we would have some French. But this one here, again, I've. Unless black can play knight c5, uh, takes, takes, this might be acceptable for black, actually. Actually, black might already be uh, in full control. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, bishop f3, so b4 is critical. And I actually do <coughs> believe Joe wants 92. to play knight e2. And the idea between behind knight e2 is that well, the knight is actually very well placed. Firstly, if this queen ever leaves d4, it can come to d4 and then c6 as a square. But it also has a defensive idea insofar as the knight can come to c1. It protects a2 and sometimes comes out to b3, hitting a queen on a5. So huh. the knight is actually very flexible. Another idea would also be to play queen d2 and then uh, qu the queen no longer stays... Um you know, mm -hmm. in that e5 lines uh, under the threat, and actually the knight can come to d4. Exactly. That's what. That's one of the ones I mentioned, is that this yeah. knight can come to d4. And White's plan is very simple. So he's reorganized uh, briefly, and now he's got one clear idea, which is just to push this g-pawn up the board uh, if, if black does nothing, or maybe retreat and then push the g-pawn up the board. But black could also start uh, already an attack now, um, because b4 is on the board. Maybe some a5, a4, maybe some ideas. So a5, g4, a4. I'm going to go g5, because that's just... There's nothing better for me to do than take, I believe, on g5 Probably here. Probably not. And now, so the question is, let's, <laughs> let's try h6. Uh, there's so much to calculate here. I should consider, I believe, bishop e5, f6. Bishop f6. Bishop f6, probably I'm still going to be happy taking on d6. Right. Because if you now try b3, I can always block everything like this. e5 might be coming. Uh, it's, it's a very, a very complicated very and risky complicated. position for both sides. Actually, is, yeah. both are playing for a win, and any result yeah. is possible in this game. A very, very sharp. Very Sicilian. sharp. Yeah. Okay. Should we go somewhere else? Let's uh, let's take a, a look at another game where. Let's check Eric's game versus Olga. Okay. Because that was a very interesting oh, wow. line of the Italian. He indeed played bishop e3 like we thought, bishop g4 h3, bishop h5. Yeah, that's all theory. Knight takes c3, take f6. There this were a lot theory. of games mm -hmm. here already played. Bishop e2 to protect the knight, and knight a5 is all logical looking at this square, and knight into e5. This has also been played a lot. Bishop takes e2, queen takes e2, and again, very yeah. classic c5 push here by Olga Giria. I'm a bit puzzled by the fact that Eric took uh, quite some time for some of his moves, and especially for knight e5, bishop e3. Do you think? Do you think he actually did not know this position, or was he trying to to make Olga think that? <laughs> I'm not really sure. Actually, maybe he was just trying to remember some notes or yeah I'm, I'm not really sure I, I have a feeling he knew it hmm. all right what was then played so uh, castles c takes d4 c takes d4 so Olga okay they both have isolated pawns queen e6 and now f4 by Eric consolidating the knight on e5 and knight c4 by Olga Giri a very very logical move indeed and rook ad1 and this is the position we have on the board. What's your take on it? I have a feeling that uh, things can go very bad for Black very quickly if uh, if if she's not precise. So let's just say, for example, she played a move like Rook to C8. Yeah, a very logical one, by yeah. the way. Now my 
my concern for black is what do you do against a move like bishop to c1? Bishop to c1? Yeah, and my idea is I want to put the king on h1, and then I want to just start running my queens, my kingside majority like this and try and try and mate you, basically. Hmm. <laughs> Should I try? Uh, no, I think it's too early to try and uh, exchange sacrifice in your style with knight e5, then rook c1. Maybe not. Maybe, uh, I mean, it's uh, and also bishop c1 might be uh, the wrong order because this might be actually okay and rook takes c1. Again, it's... You know, black can't be expecting too much from something like this. Well, if I would have a loft with black, right. like say the move on uh, h6 or g6, mm -hmm. yeah, then I would be happy with this position. Otherwise, I think it's still a bit premature yeah. to do that. Yeah. Okay, but what is what is actually your plan after? Let's say I play. You want to take? Oh no, I don't. Oh, okay. I uh, I just want to play a move like h6 or g6. I'm not sure which okay. one to choose. Well, you choose. Mm, let's say h uh, h6. All okay. right. Okay, I'll go try king this h1. One. Mm. And now knight takes e5. Okay, but now you give me an additional opportunity of taking. Oh this right, way. right. That's exactly why you went away with the king. Yeah, no. and, in, and in mm -hmm. fact, it makes me think that if you do just pass here after rook ac8 or rook ad8 or something, then I'm you actually... Should play. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. tempted to start with king h1 here. Yeah, that's, uh, that's I believe, a good decision. Also, I have an additional option of moving the bishop back to g1 in this line, which could be very useful, actually, to have additional protection. So, probably king h1. Uh, yeah, definitely. Then it means that uh, that knight is untouchable. What if I bring it uh, to d6, knight d6? Yeah, th that's, that's, that's... Oops. That's what I was thinking. You could perhaps play the move knight d6. Looks uh, looks very good, actually. Looks like a really good move. Uh, maybe I still go g4. <laughs> Let's try. Knight e4. Wow. Yeah. Queen g2. You want to play f5, right? Yeah. But your knight is very strong here, and I'm mm -hmm. very exposed with white. Some rook c3. Rook c3. I, I'm not convinced that this is good for yeah, white at all. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, not an easy position to assess. It's very imbalanced. And like you said, it could go wrong. But actually, I think for both players. So they should be very accurate here. Yeah, somehow white has got this nice looking knight on e5. But the e4 square, like you said, is also weak. So I really like this idea of bringing the knight to d6. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. I think that's a very, very good idea. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those positions which I, I expect this to, to, to get even more complicated over the next few moves. And then we will reach a critical moment in this, uh, in this middle game. And uh, we'll see what... We'll see what happens. Let's go back to... Uh, to oh, game? Well, let's go to Ivanka Huska, actually. That, that is getting very hot. So we last saw it here after knight c6, and now Jillian decides to pin the knight with bishop b5. Yavanka protects with knight e7. She spent 10 minutes on this move. And now bishop g5. So Another pin. Yeah, pinning all over the place makes lots of sense. Queen to c7 by Yavanka makes a lot of sense as well. And now just f4 by Jillian. I like oh. how she. I like how he's playing. I have to say, it's it's nice. I was going to say the other way, actually. Oh, you don't like this move? <laughs> I'm a bit afraid of that no. bishop on g5. I mean... It's uh, fine. I'm sure that it won't get in trouble there because you have such a good control over f6, but then how is it going to get to the game? I mean... Well, it's in the game. Let's assume I take on d4. C okay. takes d4. Queen d4. You want to go a6. Yeah. Okay, I have to take. And, yeah, I'm not even sure, but okay, knight c6, yeah. Yeah, I guess you take with the knight here. And let's say I now go queen... Which queen? Let's queen d2 d4. I might get so. Let's go uh, queen mm -hmm. f2 d4. Also, is actually this is a problem. D4 is a problem here. This is this is this is actually because I can't go knight e4 because you've got a bishop. Yeah. And I have to put the knight some. Okay, so hold on a second here. So c d4. Yeah, the bishop on g5 looks nice, but I'm not sure it is actually. 
You know, I would prefer it on E3 in this position, actually, you know? Even though Black will be doing all right, I believe. I, I really like how Yavanka handled this position. I think White is risking a bit. You want to make a sacrifice, I believe. Sure, I do. <laughs> you are looking for one. But I knight am. f6 is not working so far No, now. no. What I was thinking, I was thinking of something absolutely insane, which I, I, I looked at it. The first line, I was like, oh, no, that's okay. And then the second time I looked at it, I thought it's not good. I, I, I'm not 100% sure, so I'll put it on the board anyway. Queen takes d4, a6. Now, what if... I just say... Okay, so we assume that the pawn on c2 is untouchable. Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, I'm never... If you take, I'm very happy you, to... You to, play rook c1. Yeah, I, I, I just don't care. If you want that pawn, have <laughs> it. But what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to find a way where... Uh, I hate this position for white, to be honest. You know, I, I'm going to suggest a move here. It might make a few people switch off the screen. <laughs> Can I do this? What is that? Oh, I see your point. All right. Yeah, if that is working, white is fine. But let's check it. A takes B5. Can I take? I have a few options here. Yeah, I, I, I don't believe it's working. The idea, of course, is that if you take my queen, I take your queen check, and then I take the rook. And I'm doing pretty well here with white because I have an escape square and I'm attacking the knight. Mm -hmm. But my problem is that I think you can just go queen a5. And now knight when I d6. go knight d6, king d7, uh, I'm very worried that you're getting in a counter. No, I mean, yeah. it's nonsense. Yeah, you cannot really attack my king no. with the bishop on g5 and knight on h5 if right. my king goes to the other flank, right? Right. So then what is what What's is his idea? idea? I had another sacrifice <laughs> idea, which is ridiculous. You ready for this one? Queen c5. Yeah, this, this has to be the most ridiculous of them all. <laughs> but it's a move I have to at least... But you are aware that I can just jump away with yeah, the knight. I, I, that's the move that I was afraid of. But then I thought, oh, maybe there's some value in taking now. Mm-hmm. And now when I take with the pawn, you just retreat. Queen somewhere, and I say, oh, I'm attacking your knight. And actually, actually, this looks quite okay for white, because... I can play bishop g6. Mm. And you will be in big trouble. Really? Mm -hmm. If you don't find any other tactics. <laughs> really? Because g takes f5, b takes, uh, bishop takes h5. I continue to dislike the bishop on g5. Yeah, but no, this is all right for white. Really? This, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure this is okay. Like, takes, I takes. Don't like I don't know. Castles. My bishop is a great piece. It stops you castling. It performs a job. It can't What get if trapped. I just play something like bishop g6? And my idea is to play queen a7 and actually trade queens. Wow. I don't think... Well, I mean, I am a pawn up here, right? Mm, yeah. But the bishop on g5? You, no, this bishop's fine. He's, he's, he's absolutely fine in this position. How will it get back to the game? Because I'm controlling f5, I'm mm. controlling h5, and then I want to play c5, d4, something like that. Hmm. I'm I'm not sure. I mean, the move itself, queen c5, <laughs> I, I just don't trust. Maybe there's another queen. Maybe, maybe I can go queen a4. That's the most uh, normal here. So you want me to make a rook move in order to not be able to castle later, right? That's uh, that's probably uh, the point. Something that's like one, rook one c8, idea. let's say. Yeah, so rook c8. And now actually this is... Ah, this this must be the best move because now... Now, really, I don't think that this is... Oops. Now, I really don't think the bishop is on pre. So, let's say I now... But I, I don't have a good... Because if I castle, I run into queen b6 check. And if I castle queenside, I run into some mates. So, I don't actually have a, uh, a good square for this, for this king. Yeah, ideally, if the Let king... Let me castle queenside. You only yeah, live once. Yeah, okay. right. 
we should try this. Okay, so um, should I take and then ID6 is coming. Yeah, if you take, I take, and I'm lucky that I'm attacking the queen. You move the queen to, let's say, b6, a5. Maybe a5, yeah. Yeah, queen to a5. Knight d6 check. King d7. King d7. And now this is a much better version than before because, I, I mean, I always have the rook as backup. Like, I'm not sure that this position is much worse for white at all. Like, let's say takes, takes. It wouldn't surprise me that this is okay for white. And that's the absolute minimum. And the absolute maximum is that... No, I I can't <laughs> really move the queen. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think so either. I mean, look, I would be surprised that this position is much worse for white. I would say this is probably like, for example, here f5, just as an example. And if e f5, rook takes d5 check, and I win the knight. But I have bishop f5, I believe. Yeah, bishop f5. But even this is some. I've got some tricks here. Maybe I don't actually. Mm. No, maybe oh, maybe I can't go f5. I can go knight g3 and f5. I mean, I'm yeah. cu I'm curious what the comp says here, and it says it's only slightly better for black. So that's that was my feeling as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm very I am going to cheat just here because um, I want to know what to do against a6. And it's saying yeah, it's not giving anything uh, yeah. concrete, which means then that that white is a bit. I mean. Uncle, it's unclear, right? It's giving it as pretty much equal. Yeah, but I believe it's easier to go wrong with white here because black has just to make some natural moves. And with white, you have to find some fireworks right. to justify all these right. <laughs> a bit strange pieces, even though white has a pawn for that. Yeah, I exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it, you know, I think of all the... I've had so many horror shows in these positions. I remember a game where I got killed by Daniel Fridman with white in a similar structure and you know you you overextend and you get punished um so yeah i mean this 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 position can go all three ways basically right let's go check another game yep which one do we should we go to Oh, let's check Jean Saya's game it was a very interesting grunfeld right ah yeah it was so we last saw it after ah he played queen d2 so we were looking at queen a4. Again, I'm very curious what the correct move is. And it's not queen a4, so that was not. Oh, c6 is one of the most. C6 and at. queen d4, which I didn't consider. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so queen d4, apparently. But no, Leandro played queen d2. Blocking the pin. Knight takes c5 and rook c1 playing like this. Castles and e3. Okay, so very solid. But. She feels like it should be good for Jean Sai. Rook d8, bishop c4. And now she just plays the move pawn to a6, preparing b5. And I have to say, I think this opening has, has gone pretty badly for Leandro. All right. I think uh, b5 is coming, and then b4, and then knight e4, and the floodgates. But I have a question yeah. here. Is knight e4 a terrible move? Instead Can of I a6? Play it? No, after oh, for a6. white, you mean? Yeah. Because after all, I'm uh -huh. still a pawn up, right? Yeah. If I manage to trade queens, I'm not sure if black gets back the pawn there because the e7 pawn will be hanging. So queen d2, knight e takes d2. Do you take on d5? But b2, it gets a bit complicated. So you want to say I you win here. Ah, but wait, there's knight d3. There's it's knight not d3. working. Yeah. It's not working. Correct. Um, it's not working. Okay. Then b5 is an unpleasant threat, and then b4 will be coming, and the pawn on d5 might just might just fall. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah, Let's it's, uh, should do something immediately here. I think knight d4 is the move that comes to mind here. Knight d4. Yeah, because I'm planning to meet b5 with knight c6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice one. That feels like a... A mm. stabilizing move. What about a move like E something? <laughs> e6 or E5? Ooh. I'm not sure. Is it bad? Ooh, it feels feels very risky. I mean, I'm yeah, very... Yeah, I'm pinning myself. Yeah, yeah. like e even in the mm. worst case scenario, if I castle, let's say, 
and you take and I play bishop e2, I, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm not even saying I would do this, but I think that the transition is... Favorable yeah, for white. Mm. I, it, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't like, there's something about e6. But what else then? Yeah, good question. Uh, because uh, you really don't allow me to play b5, the move which I <laughs> so much wanted to play. Um, how else do I try to get my pawn back? Knight e4 is not working because you just take mm -hmm. and you're a piece up. Mm -hmm. mm, maybe yeah, I don't know. I don't know, actually. I think knight d4 might just be a good move. And you want to just castle and finish yeah, the I development and then claim that you're just a central pawn yeah, up. Yeah, and also I have other plans of playing a3, a3, b4. Exactly. So this position... There might be an unpleasant problem for black to solve here if uh, if Leandro plays knight d4, I believe. Oh, but he's uh, is he down on clock quite uh, quite a bit or? Yeah, he's down a little bit on the clock. I don't think it's much, twenty minutes or something like that. But it's only move thirteen, and he has thirty nine minutes on the clock, right? Yeah, he plays qu a quite slow rhythm. I mean, we saw that as well. Uh, I, I think yesterday he, he's not the fastest player in the world. Right. All right, interesting. Let's see what happens in, in this one. Um, Let's have a look at uh, Marcel's game against uh, uh, Aziz. Uh, because it was wow. that semi tarash And things have progressed a lot since we, uh, since we left. Let's just take it from this position. Mm -hmm. uh, we have... Uh, well, material is still equal, but white managed to get this past D pawn, which is both a strength and a weakness in these yeah. positions. But wait, there is also an important thing that white managed to block the B6 and the A5 pawns. Mm, yeah. Somehow now it is clear that only white is playing for for something, I believe. No? Because I'm black sure. cannot really advance with the pawns, while I can definitely do so with my D pawn. So trading a pair of rooks should be favorable for uh, for black, I believe, no? Probably in general. Because otherwise I can have some ideas with d6 and then I discover check, bishop takes f7, right. the queen on a3 mm -hmm. isn't so, so good. So I guess... So you want to trade one pair of rooks? <coughs> mm. And now we should probably try to attack... Oh wait, b6 is hanging. Maybe so queen, queen d6. Uh, queen oh, c5 sorry. exists. Mm -hmm. Queen b4. Queen b4. Oops. Queen b4 threatens uh, rook c3. Mm, I think. Yeah. Might be the case. Probably. What if I play? Uh, I cannot play. It. Hmm. Oof, maybe it's not as easy as I thought. It's possible, huh? Yeah. After all, the pawn uh, on d5, like you said, could be a weakness as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really don't like the threat of um, rook c3. So the queen d4 on the board. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, how bad is it? The bishop on b3, if it's not opened by moves like d6, isn't really great. And I was thinking that I could play d6 and after rook c3, rook d3. try to somehow yeah, make it work. But Maybe this is okay, though. That's, that's what I was trying to, uh, to work out. Takes, takes. And if I take... I should take with the pawn, I believe. Yeah, you take with the pawn. If you take with the queen, it's probably still okay. But, but I don't want to give up yeah. on that pawn like yeah. that. Okay, so you take with the pawn. And now I need to... Now white is better. Now white is better, yeah. this is this is this Actually, this isn't a threat exactly, because I can take. And if I... If I block... I didn't like it because of some queen move, like queen d5, queen yeah. f4, let's queen say. Queen d5, queen f4. 
Yeah, now I could. Should I consider moves like queen a8 and sure. queen e4? I'm not sure. Is it a uh, good endgame? If you are in time with your king, you are great. But then I have the move f4 after king yeah. g6. Mm -hmm. So perhaps you should... Ah, and the pawn is hanging. No, then it is great for white. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a very tricky one, actually. I, I've got a very poor intuition about this position, actually. I realized that I... She and did take Marcel the rook. Marcel just took, so queen e3 will follow shortly. And we'll see if she will go for queen b4 or try something different instead. There might be an argument that even moves like queen d6 might be possible because it's not so... Of course, the queen is not an ideal blocker, but it's not that easy to uh, make it go away. You have to consider me taking on d5. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the problem. I think you probably can. <laughs> yeah, it's a very funny position. I could play most like queen f3, but then you have even rook c3. <laughs> and if I play a move like queen, d queen e1, you're going to go knight f4, I think. Yeah, I feel like I'm losing control here with white, basically. Yeah, so queen e3, and we'll see after queen takes e3 what... Uh what Marcel's going to do. But she has uh, a big advantage on the clock. She has like 20, 25 minutes uh, more than her opponent. Yeah. Even though it feels like white shouldn't be in great danger because even if you're losing the d5 pawn at some point it will come with at the cost of uh, a, a lot of trades mm -hmm. you know and then there will be a decent chance that even there it's still a draw but of course of course white <laughs> will try to keep that pawn alive yeah and he just played queen e3 yeah yeah all right, let's All right, check let another game. Yeah, let's move on. Uh, and let's go to Nina Batsyashvili against Sabina. We haven't seen this in a while. And, and that was that reversed looking like French, no? Yeah, exactly. We had knight f3, e4. And actually, Sabina just put the knight back on <laughs> g1. So we got a weird, super weird game. h5, h4, random moves happening. Okay, not so random, but... Bishop g4 and now f3 takes. Nino moves the bishop back. And b5. What a cool move. I really love it. So the idea after c takes b6 is what? To take back? No, your knight's Ah, hanging. you cannot. Knight b4 first, all yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it's knight Let b4. Let me not blunder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's knight b4. White's so king is in trouble. Knight b4. And what, rook c1 or something? Yeah, king f2 looks a bit artificial. Or king f2, but yeah, probably rook c1. You might, you might lose the queen actually there after some bishop c2. Or maybe you're not losing the queen, but it's definitely not happy yeah. there. So let's say rook c1 and I take back. Is that the idea? Or is it some c5 like uh, Nino knows because she'll know this idea? Does this move make any sense here? I believe so. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't yeah. it? Because yeah. if you now take, and I take... Um, White's king is still in the center. Very, and d4 is coming, and if I open you up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crush you. And you know, I have to say that Nina is a very creative player, and yes. she actually enjoys a lot playing out of book. Like when... If she could just take her opponent out of the book from move three, she would right. definitely do so every game, you know. And uh, I'm curious, is Sabina up for the task here to play a very imbalanced imbalanced game? Well, I don't think he has a choice. I mean, his, he, he's, it's already very imbalanced and it's already very messy. And it wouldn't surprise me if, if I'm, I'm going to cheat again very quickly. No, it doesn't, doesn't like it. But okay... Uh, it thinks white is a lot better here, but uh, somehow, what's wrong with this move? I think it's just losing, but some random moves. Knight c e2, I mean, come on. How could we be so wrong here? I mean, the computer's <laughs> spouting out all kinds of nonsense that we're not going to see. Knight c e2? I mean, it's a great move, but who would play it? <laughs> exactly. Well, okay. that's... Uh, 
that lines illustrate uh, perfectly how uh, you know we humans uh, never <laughs> almost never assess the position like the computer does no exactly yeah and this is why humans chess is so much more exciting right uh, I will I will place my money on Nino in this game. Okay. I, well, I would like to see Nino win. She had a tough game yesterday, and uh, why not? All right. Very complicated. Let's go to another game. And Should it be the Haria uh, Ravi Mamadzada Gunai game? Okay. Only because a few it moves. seemed it seemed like White uh, had an interesting idea out of the opening, right? Yeah, he basically fixed this structure here, so this square is here. Gunai played Bishop d7, planning to meet Knight here with sorry Rook to d8, almost certainly. But Ravi just said, "Okay, let me finish development." Bishop e8 and Rook e1. Love the way Ravi is playing. The point is now Rook e1 prepares Bishop f4, and now there's no e5. And as I say. But where is that bishop going? I mean, bishop d7, bishop e8. It looks a bit. Yeah, I mean, she's just abstract. Yeah, to me. she 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 just uh, doesn't have many good moves, or she can't find a good plan. It seems to me because you normally place the bishop there after the rook has left the f8 square, right? Right. Right. Or if you have the idea of playing f6 and then some bishop g6, but here the pawn on e6 is hanging, so. Uh, I'm a bit pessimistic about uh, about um, the latest prospects in this game. Yeah, I think I think Ravi is is feeling very good about his yeah. position here. Yep, I agree. You know, the, in general, let's have a quick overview. Let's take it to the to the playing hall. Let's see them for a moment, and we'll do a quick bit of looking at the screens and the boards. By Judge? the way, by the way, yeah. I see a comment uh, in the chat. Does mm. Ravi have any norms? But I he's believe a grand he's master. already a grandmaster. He's master. a grandmaster. Yeah, he's a grandmaster. He just he got three norms in one year. <laughs> <laughs> he played a few closed tournaments in England and got over twenty five hundred. He is officially a grandmaster. I don't know why it's uh, not updated here, but that is that has been confirmed by Fide. So he is a, he is a GM. Um, and we we'll see the playing hall. Yeah, we see the playing hall, and I, I'm just looking at all the boards uh, at the same time. And what did I predict? I predicted plus three for the boys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually feeling very... Uh, very how? Very unclear, actually, because I think uh, Bilal is going to win today against Irene. Mm -hmm. And I think... Um, but Yovanka has uh, quite quite a decent chances yeah. of doing the same versus Julian. Uh, um, I, I think guess. I think Joe has got a great chance against Pia, and I think that uh, um, I will counterbalance mm. that with uh, Nino's. Um, uh, completely imbalanced position. I mm -hmm. think she's great in those ones. Mm -hmm. I believe she can uh, pull some tricks on Sabina there. I agree. I mean, the Sabina game. Yeah, I'm not confident that plus three is happening. It could be one of those 50-50 days. It could <laughs> end 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, with a lot of, with a lot of uh, uh, results which are not draws, actually, right? Exactly. Yeah, because I believe uh, we might actually see <laughs> only only one draw by how the games look so far. Well, the Bobby Chen game, we'll quickly go there because that is pretty solid. I mean, Bobby has got a bit of an initiative, though, because it's a bit awkward for Marie to to actually move her pieces. Oh, that that fan catted bishop works so well with the queen, right? Yeah, exactly. We This is the position on the board, and the knight can't move because of mate. Um, but that's... All he's got really going on here, and I'm not sure that's going to be enough now. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not convinced. That Marie is, you know, she's a very, very strong. Player. I have a very direct way of playing here with Black. Just rook e8, yeah. bishop f8, and then I will be fine if I have time to protect g7 and knight d5 or whatever is coming. But bishop b5 here is awkward. Yeah, that might be a problem. 
I don't really want to bring the rook to e7 yeah, because rook, after rook d1 mm, bishop h2. Bishop h2? Does that work? Really? No? Wow. I got swindled. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, rook d1 doesn't work. Okay, yeah, but you're right. The rook on e7 yeah. feels. But I want to play on the other hand, rook c7, and trade trade the rooks. And yeah, it's. Uh, I'm lucky that rook d1 actually doesn't work. Hmm. I can't really. While you are thinking, I will be answering a question here, okay. because somebody asks uh, if uh, the team uh, wins count or uh, the point wins. So actually it doesn't matter how many rounds one or another team wins. What counts is how many points they score overall. So even if uh, women would win, for example, six rounds with five and a half and men would win four rounds with, let's say, um, seven free, yep. it might, uh, it actually will be still more points for the men and that would mean that uh, they would win the match. Exactly. So they have to be careful about every, every half of the point. So, have you come up with something in that position? No, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't thought of anything. I think it's... It's so weird. It, it it feels just for the moment that I would like. I just can't find. I can't find a way. Yeah, rook e seven is really ugly, but perhaps maybe it's queen enough. queen d four. Uh huh. So you want after rook c seven to play rook d one now? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is looking good. Okay, perhaps I don't have to to go rook c seven then. Okay. Uh, what else could I play? <laughs> I could play an even uglier move, <laughs> but one? I won't. E5. No, I was thinking about bishop c7. But <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if it works. But you know, it's one of those moves where I don't know. It feels like White has got a few ways to keep a bit of initiative. But actually, e5 was also an interesting yeah, e, e, uh, move. Yeah, e, e5 is interesting always. I did not consider that. But uh, maybe now just queen a4. Yeah, meanwhile, uh, I believe yeah. uh, something completely different happened. Oh, what the happened? The queen is on e7 ah, queen already. E7. So she played queen e7 here. Yeah, and... Uh, Bobby already played something. It looks like it's bishop d3. Bishop d3. Okay, yeah, so his idea here is that rook c8 doesn't work, apparently, because you can take... What? And bishop b5. Ah. Hmm. And that wins yeah. for white. Yeah, that's right. And, yeah, so you can't... You can't go rook d8. The bishop also wasn't doing anything here now. Oops. So the bishop comes to d3. And of course, white has got an improving move, putting the bishop there. And then suddenly ideas of the battery sometimes make sense because you can get rid of this knight. But maybe black just wants to play e5 at some point. I'm not sure where. Perhaps I could even consider taking on f3 and playing e5. Really? Not sure. That doesn't feel right to me. Yeah, I have weakened a bit my light squares. Yeah. But on the other hand, your king is also not ideal. Mm. And I've closed that monster bishop on b2. I'm going to say I don't like it. <laughs> mm. uh, there's something about it I don't like. I, c I can't say exactly what, but let's say I go queen c6. All right, there are no threats for now. So I should create some of my own. Could I play some knight h5? Um, yeah, I don't see the threat. I put the king on e2 a lot. It's very safe ah, there. on e2? Yeah, sure. Ah, that's an interesting idea. Yeah. I mean, hmm. I can even preempt it. I can even go king f1 here, for example. Rook d8, let's say. Rook d8. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm. I'm just not. 
You're not convinced. I'm really not convinced. I think your bishop is bad. I, I've, even if I just go king e2, let's say. Um, I, and I'm not sure I've played this very well at all, but I've got control of the c file. Play bishop c file. Yeah. Yeah, I, queen e4. I don't know. Hmm. So you're saying the king is doing fine. There. Yeah, I think the king is fine on e2. There's something about this sequence of taking on f3 and then putting your pawns on the dark mm -hmm. squares, it, it it doesn't sit well. No, of course, it's completely unnecessary to take on yeah. f3 because that's what white actually wanted black to do. But I just wanted to see if uh, if it's possible at all. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, for sure it could be. Um. All right, so uh, probably Bobby is putting some pressure for now on Marie, and she has to be quite accurate here. But if she finds uh, a few precise moves, then the initiative yeah. might uh, might go away. Yeah, that's what I think. Uh, what else? Indeed, what else? Where should we jump to? Let's uh, let's check again Joe's game against Pia. It was uh, mm -hmm. a very exciting uh, position. Oh, yeah. and it has changed a lot. We last left it around here. Bishop f3, pawn to b4. The knight did come to e2. And Pia did respond e5. This is the classical way of playing. The queen came back and she did go a5, going for it. And now knight, Joe played a, a very interesting move. Knight to g3. A very unusual one as well. Yeah. Trying to... Um, yeah. To get to f5, but it is very interesting that I've never seen the English attack being played in such a way. Yeah. No, like really, uh, the f4 move, the mm -hmm. knight to g3 maneuver without the pawn being on g4, it's so very, um, how to say? It's very unusual. It's yeah. very non standard. <laughs> yeah. I agree. All right, so e takes f4 follow. Yeah, knight f5 is a really big threat. So she took, took, and put the knight on e5 in order to be able to meet knight f5 with bishop takes f5, and that's what happened. Joe just Very went knight f5 ball, immediately. Yeah. Takes, takes, and we have this position. Now, my feeling is that this has gone very well for Pia, and that actually she can start to get a bit optimistic. You know, the only thing which I dislike in black's position, it's uh, the d5 uh, square. Like, if I play bishop d5... You're right. Uh, okay, it's not my move, it's black's move. Right. But if I place the bishop on d5, mm -hmm. it controls the whole board. Right. Uh, and then maybe I could start thinking of a way to attack black's king, even though I'm not sure <laughs> how to achieve that. But perhaps I could go even for a different colored uh, bishop's position after some, let's say, then bishop e5, d take. But then, yeah, I still don't see a way that yeah. I attack black's king, but perhaps I can use the fact that the f7 pawn is a bit weak. It's a, it's a very interesting position, and, oh, but just down on, on the clock, <coughs> quite a bit, 25 minutes less. Uh, I, I think hope, that's okay. Uh, I, I hope think that he has control. Yeah, I think, that's, I, th I think that's okay. I think... Um, 25 minutes here for 20, uh, for, sorry, for uh, 19 moves, is, is it's enough time. But I can see your argument about black being uh, completely fine here, because maybe she can even consider moves like knight c4 immediately with some peace sacrifice later. Knight yeah. c4, knight a3 check. I mean, you should always... Sure, be ready to meet that somehow. So queen d3, knight a3 check. I but could even I could even start with a move like queen c7, perhaps. Mm. And now I want to play knight a3. But I don't understand if I if I let you do it and I take and put the king on c1. Hmm. You're saying that the king is safe there. Might be the case. Looks a little. I. I. I yeah. I. I. Uh, Nine c four is. I was actually trying. To, I mean, there. The, there were a few ways of trying to play this position. How stupid is the move bishop f six here? No, it's great. But after bishop d five, the knight is no longer coming to c four. Yeah. 
And that's what I wanted to achieve, to somehow bring the knight there. Queen c7, trying to force it there, but... Yeah, it's not... Uh, it's not clear. I think once the bishop does get to d5, you're right. Now, does she ever want to take? And I guess the answer is no, because after takes, mm. I'm uh, threatening... The g-file is open to yeah. <laughs> yeah, she probably won't take. I wonder what she... I'm actually very curious. She looks like she's about to play a move, but... Uh, I think knight c4 might be interesting after all. Knight c4, queen d3, queen c7, bishop d5... For some reason, I... Uh, you don't like yeah, this one, I, no? Uh, this is, uh, if... Maybe... Okay, let's say you go rook c8. But wait, could I... No, knight... knight uh, after bishop d5, I was thinking maybe I could have some knight b6, but perhaps it's just too slow, no? Knight b6. Mm, somehow Might be okay. Trying to get the bishop. Sure. Why? Why? Why not? Yeah, she's she's not going to do. She plays queen, queen c8. c8. Okay. Uh, wait. Where is where is that? Aha. Uh -huh. So she just wants to get the f5 pawn, and now maybe she wants knight c4. Right. And it's a smart a smart way of uh, making it uh, happen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because now after knight c4, when you play queen d3, the knight on c4 is protected and you have time for bishop f6 uh, right, attacking exactly. b2. A very a very nice move, I must say. And uh, it actually might force... Okay, maybe, it, mm, maybe it's not the case, but maybe white will now consider taking on e5. Mm -hmm. Just making sure that nothing yeah. happens to the king. Yeah, you can take on e5. But I think that's a move that Joe would like to, you know, if he to has... postpone uh, as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, if if he has no other options, he'll take. I was thinking, what if I just go bishop d5 and say... Sacrifice the pawn? Yeah, like, so what? You I take will take it. Okay, rook df1. And now I have to be careful, because, for example, queen d7 runs into bishop takes e5, and then bishop takes f7, and I lose my queen. So I will not fall to that. On the other hand... What do I do after rook d to f1? It's one of those positions. Maybe you can try and play, like the, the computer g4. might try play and play something like this with queen g4. Mm -hmm. Typical kind of computer stuff claiming that the queen is safe here, and it might be. I mean, it just might be difficult to attack. But maybe here I can... Rook h3. <laughs> I was thinking yeah. of exactly the same. Rook h3, and then that's actually a three. Yeah, it, it gets... It gets messy, yeah. and uh, the bishop on d5 is really a good piece, but it's, I guess, a critical moment because it's very difficult here to assess uh, all these positions and to realize, is that bishop a good compensation enough for the pawn or not? I'm very curious what uh, what Joe will do. Well, the computer is... With, uh, I'm, I know I'm cheating a bit more today, <laughs> but I'm just so curious. The computer is saying both bishop takes e5 and bishop d5 are the best two moves, and they're both pretty equal. So oh, so I am very happy yeah. about yeah. ourselves. Then. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, Joe. If I was in Joe's shoes, I would play bishop d5 <laughs> because I think this sets some some decent practical problems for Black. But uh, you are taking risks here. Yeah, yeah. No, no question. I'm taking risks. Yeah. So. It's a very interesting moment. Is Joe willing to take risks? Or if he takes on e5, that means that he wants a safer game. Exactly. Yeah. Taking on e5 is is uh, is probably just going to end in a... Like, I can imagine something like queen d7, you have to take. Right. Queen, queen c5, rook d5, you probably start losing. So takes, takes, but Pia's just... Never losing this position ever. She's just too solid. But Joe is also and not Joe losing. And Joe is yeah. also never losing this yeah. one. Rook d1, rook d8, and they'll they'll sign the score sheets quite yeah. soon. I just don't think that, that... That that one will basically be an indication by Joe that he's... Let's place bets on it. Okay. I bet on bishop e5. I yeah, think they'll go for no. the safe choice. I don't. I think Joe is... Uh, he hasn't won yet. He's uh, he blew a game against Maria Muzichuk. I think he, I think he's in the mood for dancing. But you know, it's so interesting when you haven't won a game in the tournament. Mm -hmm. And let's say, if I would be in Joe's shoes, yeah, what would I choose? 
because normally every time I get in this situation I choose to risk it and to try to get the full point and then let's say one time out of three it works but the other two times I actually lose the second game <laughs> so yeah I mean it and do you want to you to lose one more game against a woman here that's another question. <laughs> well, any game you lose here is against a woman, so it doesn't really matter. I don't think that's really what he's thinking about. I think Joe is just uh, thinking, uh, you know, what what are my practical chances after bishop d5? He just raised his eyebrows and yeah. he was... He just saw something in his yeah. analysis. I think Joe is going to just... You believe in his fighting spirit in this position. The only thing that's slightly bothering me now is he's gone under 20 minutes. Yeah, and he still has 18 moves to make, so there will be one minute per move. You know, I think if I would be um, in his position against Pia, I would I would take on e5, definitely. She, you know, she's a player who uses so well those uh, counter chances and that's exactly why she's such an expert of all those shevening guns, you know. Mm -hmm. Because it's exactly what you do there. You try to try to get counterplay to make white take risks and then to exploit that. A very interesting moment. Gunai Mamadzada has just played a, a move. I can see that uh, one of the ugliest moves you can ever play. Oh, oh no. Queen d8, bishop f4, and now she played rook. Oh, Gunnar Gunna is having a really bad time here. A7, what's this? Oh, she wants to meet knight b6 with knight takes a5. This is her her idea. Yeah, but the problem is that rook a7 is not threatening a thing, is it? No. Perhaps she wants to play knight d5. Yeah, I think here if I was white, I would seriously consider g4. g4? Mm-hmm. Um... Ah, so after knight take knight d5? I, I mean, I, firstly, yeah, so I just want to have the option of coming back. I might be able to take, go knight b6 here. That could also be very interesting. Mm -hmm. So like takes, takes knight b6. And now this doesn't work because knight takes d5 and this probably is losing. You still hold on for the moment with knight c6. Maybe it's not losing, actually. Maybe it's not, yeah. But... I mean, the other main idea is that I wanted to drop this bishop back to g3, but maybe it's, again, just a little bit hmm. too too loose. Yeah, I think I might take and play bishop f6. Because after bishop d6, I suppose I have bishop takes yeah. c3, so it's fine. So, so rook a3. Now I would love to do something about that bishop on e8. But uh, the threat of bishop d6 is quite strong. Mm, maybe I could... Hmm. Yeah, it's not an easy position. No, it's just an interesting move that occurred to me. I have no idea if it's any good or not. And it wasn't the move played by Ravi. And again, it's not stylistically something that I think Ravi is uh, kind of approving of. He played... 94. Yeah, he played 94. So he's going basically for the d6 square. Yeah, and after knight takes e4, he wants to play bishop takes e4 and just claim that it's very difficult for black to... To do something about yeah. that rook on a7. After and all, it has to get back to the game at some point. Yeah, and the other point is that bishop g5, trying to exchange more pieces, will now run into some tactic, you, you would think. But maybe not. For example, queen h5, mm -hmm. h6. Yeah. And I wonder if Ravi would actually consider takes, 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 <laughs> takes. And cementing. Takes, takes, oh. and rookie five. But you could even play knight b6 just laughing at black. And it's game over. You mean here? Bishop c6, oh, bishop c6, and knight b6, and you play without a rook. Yeah, that rook is gone gone forever, isn't it? Yeah. That's That's really sad. Rook a7 is just... My goodness. I, I, mean, I don't understand. I, I If black has to resort to this kind of move, it means that black is def definitely in big trouble. 
Yeah, and I agree. I'm sure that Guna understands that. Yeah, I totally, uh, totally agree. Um, I think that. Yeah, I think Ravi is big favorite to win this one. Actually, it's a position. He's solid. He's he's uh, he's got no danger. Gunai has to find these weird moves. I I, I I'm I'm just going to um flick on the comp, comp to see the objective evaluation, and it's very very good for White, as we could imagine. I'm just curious about G4 if it likes it. Doesn't like it. Good. <laughs> Nonsense move. All right, let's. Let's go to Eric's game because Eric? uh, we see a lot of requests of that in okay. the chat. Oh wow, we've had we've had a, a complete liquidation in this game. So Oof. let's but wait. Isn't oh all look. right. Let's let's have a look how the game developed. We left it after here. Yeah, she played rook a c eight. Yeah, so. the move we were thinking. I mean, the move which you played in one second actually. G four. That's. That's a logical yep. move. I mean, it's logical, but it, it does. It's a bit risky. It leaves the. Ki I get very worried about this diagonal here, but maybe it's okay. She now took, and D takes e5. This is his idea. Yeah, he wanted mm -hmm. to keep those pawns uh, running. Mm -hmm. So some f5 might. Yeah, but here rook c4. I really like what uh, what Olga did. Yeah, the she wants to play rook e4, right? That's yeah. her, her her big shot. And the point is that after bishop b6, she took with a check. Very yeah, important. Yeah, g2. Rook takes f4. Takes take, and take. Takes. Ah, yeah, and I was thinking that uh, black has an extra pawn, but white can actually consider taking on d5. Can absolutely take But here. wait, isn't there some queen c6? Aren't we running there in trap? No. no. Queen d2, right? Queen d3. Yeah, queen d3 or even... Ah, queen d2, maybe rook c4. Right, queen d3 is probably yeah, better. Yeah, queen d3 followed by king g3 mm -hmm. is, is no big deal. So, okay, so Eric can take back. But my big question is, does Harry, Eric... No, he doesn't. I wanted to go e6 and be brilliant. E, yeah, you just want to make that pawn queen. but Yeah, but um, f if I had rook d8, <laughs> it would be mate. And after e7, king f7. But there is a check, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Or a check, it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, so we can't play e6. So most probably you have to take. Mm. Yeah, I believe neither of the players can really try to win this one. It should eventually be a draw. Because you go away with the rook. I play king g3. Maybe rook c4, though. Ah, rook c4. That's a clever move. Uh, that's a <laughs> very clever move. Wait, e6. wait, am I losing? Okay, rook c3. Uh, rook c2 check, King sorry. King g3? Yeah, rook c3. Rook d8. <gasps> <laughs> you swindled me. <laughs> yeah. You tricked me into <laughs> my... Oh, my... Okay, e6. But perhaps rook c5 might be a problem. Ah, oh, rook c5 just wins, <laughs> does it? E7? Well, seven? It wins material, definitely. Does it? Yeah. E7? Rook seven? takes d5. Okay, I just queen. Queen takes. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, but this is a draw. Ah, it's a draw. It's an yeah, immediate draw. Yeah, it's a draw, draw anyway. Yeah. Queen f7, queen d8, and I draw immediately. Right. But it's a funny, it's a funny line. But can you just go king f7? Ah, king f7, I got queen f3 check. And I've... Covered myself so against king everything, no? Even here, queen f5 check might be a weird draw. Yeah, it because is. Because here I give or check. Or is it not? King f8? Yeah, okay. I just... Uh, I go here. Ah, so that you have queen b8 check. Yeah. All right. Mm, I could try on king g8. King f7. <laughs> and I will not try king g6 here. <laughs> yeah, king g6 is a little, a little too much. Yeah. Uh, no, I believe he has enough time here. Don't worry about time chat. Eric's got it. What a fascinating position. Indeed. So yeah, little pieces left on the board, but still so many resources hidden. Yeah. 
And I guess the best move is just to take on d5. Yeah, queen c6 and queen d3. Mm -hmm. With dead equality. Right. <clears throat> Uh, just very quickly, we'll stay here for one minute because it's not a particularly interesting position. Bobby Cheng against Marie Sabag. Marie has done very well to oh, get this position. Oh, but how did she manage to trade the bishops? She the somehow she went takes, takes, and bishop a3, and the point is the rook is on c1. This was oh. very clever, very good by Marie Sabag. Yeah. And so bishop a3 was my suggestion, but bishop a3 right. is a very good follow-up. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't like e5, but bishop yeah. a3 is, is a really good follow-up. And yeah, right. and now and now we have a position like this, which is, yeah, I mean, Bobby is, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just almost certainly going to be a draw. It's the bishop comes to f three. Uh, oops. The knight will come to d five probably. I'm not even sure Sooner the knight will come to d five. Why I not? Yeah, sure. I mean, it it can. Um, I could play also g six, h six, whatever. Yeah, it's. Should be a draw somehow. Yeah, because the knight on d5 is a really good piece as it covers um, that squares on the c-file. Because if we imagine that the queens go off the board, yeah. then white might have you know a slight edge just mm -hmm. because there are pawns on both flanks and we've got a bishop which plays better when there are pawns on both flanks. But the d5 square should be just enough to ensure that black is doing fine. Yes, I think Black is doing fine. Now, let's check in with Irene very quickly. Mm -hmm. Has her position improved? And I think the short answer is it's very similar. It's very static. And I think she's... Uh, oh, it's terrible. I, I'm afraid I have yeah. to say that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not dead, though. You know, uh, if I'm looking at the image uh, we've got from uh, from the playing hall, I see some light there, a ray of sun. A ray of a, a ray of a sunlight. Ray of hope there. A ray of hope <laughs> for Irene. Oh, I but the problem is, is the sun is shining on the white pieces and not oh. on her pieces. So that's mm. a sign from the gods <laughs> that. Uh, the ray of hope is is more on Bilal, I think. No, I think this position is just really, really, really awful to play for black. Definitely. But, but I will say, because there must be a lot of Irene supporters out there, it's not... Uh, White's plan is not... Not so clear, no. no? You know, the danger in these positions is that you don't find the breakthrough. But uh, right. mm, you should be really patient in these types of positions. Find a way to improve one piece, then another piece. And then it is much more difficult for, uh, for the one who has uh, the worst position to play because he has to be really precise, mm -hmm. you know, every move, every move to calculate. And then when uh, your opponent is low on time, then it will will be the moment to find the breakthrough, I believe. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, it actually reminds me of a game I, uh, I've i seen recently at Tata Steel when yeah. uh, Sergei Karakin won against Jordan Van Forest. Mm, yes. It was such a disgusting defense uh, yeah. Jordan had to endure for a very long time. And then eventually uh, Sergei mm, managed managed to win. She played a move. Yeah. What move did she play? Rook c8. <laughs> uh, you know, the chat is asking uh, is asking you, uh, why are you calling me Irene and not Irina? But I believe you're actually calling I'm, me Irina. I'm calling you Irina. There is. I'm talking <laughs> about Irene in the play. I'm talking about Irene Sukanda, who's playing. Right. Uh, we've actually asked her how does she prefer her name to be pronounced, and she said it to be Irene. Yeah, exactly. No, this is Irina next to me, and Irene is playing the playing the match against uh, Bilal. Yeah, uh, if you get uh, the two of us uh, next to each other, you could uh, you could make a wish actually. There you go. <laughs> At least that's what they say. All right, so. She played rook e to c8. Yeah, rook e to c8. And uh, 
again, you still need to find a plan here as white, and, and that plan is, is not straightforward. Yeah. Okay, I would uh, be inclined to leave them to to find okay. uh, the plan and go to Nino's game against Sabino Brunello, because it was uh, mm. it was looking really exciting, mm. and Nino did indeed sacrifice that she pawn, did. right? She played c5. Night before we saw this, so coming in here, rook, uh, and he just took actually. Sorry, so oh, he that's just uh, that's very brave. Yeah, it takes. Rook to c1. Okay, so black is a pawn down, but white's king is awfully exposed. Bishop d7, queen d1, and now just queen d8 queen getting off. Queen d8. That's uh, a bit of a... Ah, but it makes sense because she wants to argue that the pawn on h4 is or might be weak at some point. So perhaps when she goes at some point with the knight away from f6, she could just take then the h4 pawn. Mm -hmm. Well, I am completely not sure how I feel about this position because there is the A3 move. Um, and and we are sacrificing the D5 pawn, it seems. Yeah, suddenly we're sacrificing D5. So what's... A, oh, well, not really, because H4 hangs, right? So Knight C6. Ah, so that was precisely the yeah. idea, right. And takes... That's why she played Queen D8. Yeah. A nice, uh, a nice little trick. Mm-hmm. I would take black here all day, just so you know. Uh, <laughs> I hate white's position here. Um, that said, maybe it's not so bad. If you can play king f2, let's say you go a3, knight c6, and you just play a move like bishop d3. Mm -hmm. How bad is, is life here? Maybe it's Maybe it's actually not so bad whatsoever. No, I think yeah. the computer will defend it uh, 100 games <laughs> yeah. out of 100, yeah. you know. But uh, yeah, for humans, the situation is slightly different. Even though I tend to tend to incline now in White's favor, actually. You exactly. know, if I was really optimistic a few moves uh, before, now I'm not sure anymore. Because after all, well, White did not do anything wrong. All the pieces are on good places, on central squares. Only the king is still there in the center, but mm, f2 seems like a good square for it. Yeah, the f2 square or... Yeah, f2. Sometimes it goes to g2, but I agree. I, I, it's it's a bit... It's very optimistic by Nino, but, uh, uh, you know, a lot can still happen in this game. It's, it's, it's not over for sure. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not over for sure. Right. Do you have any other interesting developments? I mean, we have a lot of interesting games. The Yvanka Huska game. Ah, yeah. yeah, let's check that one out. It was a really... Oh, the bishop escaped from yeah, g5? Yeah, well, the bishop, the bishop exchanged itself off, so we had the position... I think that's good news, trading that bishop, no? Probably, yeah. F4. And she went a6 immediately, which is very surprising to me. She, oh, played she didn't a, take on d4. No, and and mm -hmm. he just he just was able now to take on e7. I think this was a pretty good pretty good decision because yeah, now if you take here, probably I can take or at least I can take here and I feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. So she took takes takes and now simply 92. White is a pawn up. There is also a big problem with white's position and that is that it has an open character actually because the center is very unstable let's imagine i'll take on d4 on one day and then play c5 and then my bishops will be really good and that knight on h5 is struggling a little bit and the king is struggling as well i prefer black here interesting yeah i'm not sure i mean yvanka attacked this pawn that's a very nice move because if we provoke b3 then the dark squares might get weak uh, especially since white doesn't have a dark squared bishop anymore to protect them. And bishop e4, rook h3. So you like the bishops. I th would still take white here. No, uh, I believe black is better. You think black is better? Yeah. But yeah, we see that uh, black should be precise here. And if this, why can't I go here? Ah, bishop f3. 
Yeah. That's clever. Well, now that's a concrete reason why yeah. black is black. Is, oh, that's very nice. So bishop e4, rook h3. Maybe he had to go rook h2 here. Ah, uh, but then bishop, bishop f3. Bishop f3 anyway, anyways. Yeah. Uh, this is Yovanka's plan. This is very nice. Rook, g th rook h3, bishop g2. And now if rook h2, bishop f3, this pin is very, oh, and very awkward. you cannot awkward. play rook g3 because of queen h4. Well, rook g3, queen yeah. h4. And now what if I... I guess that should be the reason, no? Should be. Uh... Yeah, it's it's yeah, yeah, fine yeah. because I can just go back then with the bishop to e4. So uh, my yeah. queen is fine on h4. Yeah. Now this could this could uh, there's always huge risk playing like this with. Right, uh, and uh, indeed, um, it is possible for uh, to get norms here in the tournament. Mm -hmm. I see someone asking if it's possible to get a GM norm, and that's exactly what the players are looking for here. Uh, I think uh, Irene's got quite a good chance of that. It's still so early, right? It's round four. Like exactly, you, you start to know more around round six, round seven, around that that region. But she's definitely had a promising start. Yeah. Even though today she today is in she a bit might of trouble. Lose. Yeah, that's exactly. And if then she saves that game. Well, if she saves today, then she's got really fantastic chances. Yeah. All right, let's uh, look elsewhere. Let's quickly go back to Joe Gallagher and just see which decision he, ma he made. Yeah, let's. And I know oh. my Joe. <laughs> yeah, oh. and he was never going to take on, on E5. He's here to play. He's here to win. He's here to crush. <laughs> but he played Bishop D5. The move, sacrificing a pawn and then the rook to D. You know, I applaud this decision, but I have the feeling he's going to regret that. He might do, because bishop g5 might be a great move. Yeah. And why do we think that the bishop on d5 is better than the knight on e5? True. Good question. Hmm. Yeah, we would love to actually take that knight on e5 if mm -hmm. the queen wouldn't be hanging, because trading the dark squared bishops isn't um, exactly what we wanted to achieve no, it's, here. It's it's absolutely not. Well, he does take... Oh my god, he's only f down to three minutes on the clock. No, I'm definitely thinking he's regretting his decision of sacrificing the pawn. So it what's the idea after queen takes g5? Good question. I think what he's going to do, he's going to take, take, go rook f5. And you know, now aren't you asking yourself, why did I do that? That would just g4, right? G4, yeah. I mean, you could have the same position with a good bishop on d5, but with uh, an equal amount of pawns, to say so. And here you are a pawn down. And actually, I believe that uh, the knight on e5 is better than a bishop would be on f6 with a pawn on e5 for black, mm -hmm. no? I mean, this knight is just... F okay, the bishop is also really nice on d5, but the knight is great there in the center as well. Yeah, I think Joe's in big trouble. Pia has 44 minutes on the clock. He does take, so let's see. Let's see what he has She's planned. She's not here, so. gonna get uh, him get away with it easily. So oh. H takes g5. So this is on the board. And he does go rook f5, but has he just missed g4? I believe that. I mean, is this just really bad for Joe now? The computer is not that unhappy about this position, but for uh, for a human, it is very difficult to defend. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Joe's going to be very unhappy with how this has gone. If he magically makes a draw after g4 and just some rook d1 and just, but it, you know, it's very it's very easy to improve for black in in these positions. You just have to do it slowly. Yeah, but here. Pia has a lot of time to slowly improve her position. And if we remember her first game against uh, Bilal, where she also was a pawn up, and the computer was saying that Bilal had enough compensation mm -hmm. to sorry, keep mm. the game uh, balanced. Well, here the case is uh, exactly, exactly the same, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 
Wow, and Yovanka didn't play bishop g2, so she played another yeah, move. Yeah, just which played g4. Uh, All right, let's go to Yovanka's game. Yeah, we just saw just a moment ago, it looked as though bishop g2 was really strong, but she played bishop g6, which is, you know, a sign of someone who's a bit lacking in confidence, in my opinion. And I'm not saying that this is a bad move. Uh, but, but she could have done better. Yeah, exactly. So bishop g6. Uh... Yeah, I mean the position is still is still very unclear. The problem in White's position here it's that we've over expanded with the mm. pawns, mm -hmm. and now with the pair of bishops, that pawn on b three, the king. Okay, it's safe for now, but it might not be the case in the few right. moves. So let's quickly yeah. go back to the Eric Rosen game because Olga, oh, we actually went down the line we were looking at with Queen d three. Mm -hmm. And indeed, rook f8 and king g3. So we, we actually looked at this. So getting out of the pin, move, stepping up and getting right. out of the queen. And now Olga plays the move queen c1. Nice move by Olga. This move is uh, has a threat. The point is that let's just say you play a move that doesn't threaten anything, rook d1. Suddenly, queen e1 check is the end of the game because uh, you have to go uh, king h2. And now I can come down check and... Uh, you're, you're getting made either it. winning material or getting uh, a mate. Exactly. Uh, so but what about rook d8? Is it uh, the same happening there? Rook d8. Yeah. Now e5 I see is hanging, so I'll give a check. But then I will take b7 in the end. King g2. And no? I can't take because of queen c4 check. I mean, after queen f2 here, I have king h1, right. so I'm safe, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But there might be another problem with queen g1, perhaps, instead of queen e1. Ah, uh, queen g1. And now I'm not sure what's going on here. King h4, queen e1 now. Ah, uh, now you're taking the e5 If one. I would check. Yeah, and no, that's this losing. is bad. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's over. So he cannot play rook d8? No. And that queen e1 is a really nasty threat. Also, fight. queen f4 is a threat sometimes. Right. And then similar play. Is this actually very bad for Eric? No, I believe there should be a defense. But you know what happened recently to me in a yeah. game? I had the same kind of position. Everything was balanced, but my king was a bit more exposed. I just blundered mate in one. Yeah. With five minutes on the clock. Can you believe that? Yeah, I can. I, it's happened to me. It's... It's when you're so under I have very bad memories with this kind of positions. Okay. I what hope, did, did uh, Eric I play? hope it does not happen to Eric. Queen D2. Queen D2. That's that that's a solid move. Yeah. That's it feels like move. it should be the right move, right? Yeah, because now after well, the queen trade is just a straight draw and after queen g1 check, I guess he just wants to put the king on h4 and say that he covers some key squares. It's still a little bit scary, but it's not... Uh, no, it's all right, because I actually want to play rook d8 at some point, and if I trade rooks, then it's yeah. immediately no risk or yeah. no risk at yeah. all. Exactly. And it seems like the king will not get mated. The pawn on e5 does quite a good job about protecting the f6 square, so there are no queen f6, you know, after I go for king g5 or something. Mm -hmm. And I see that somebody's asking me if I ever met Olga Giria in real life and if she's a really humble person. And she actually is. She's a really, really nice person. Uh, we used to be quite close a few years ago before COVID times. Uh, and uh, I really, I really like her. Uh, yeah, and of course she's met her. She, they're just in the next room. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it would be... <laughs> <laughs> we were all playing in No, but you know, you there are players which you like, but they're not humble. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, actually, I have uh, now thought about a funny thing. We have met... Uh, I, I went to meet the New Year's Eve at her mm -hmm. place. Oh, right. Okay. In 2019, after the World Rapid and Blitz uh, Championships in Moscow because she lives there. And uh, actually, both of us had uh, a terrible year after <laughs> after that there thing. You, go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think we both lost like 50 or 
50 slash 60 ELO points. So I think we're not celebrating the new year together anymore. And I see out the corner of my eye, wow, look at this move by Bilal against Irene. Um, we had this position, knight c8 attacking the rook. Now, a lot of the time you could just bring the rook back to b2 or something like that, but he goes for the move rook to b5. This is an extraordinary interesting and maybe excellent move by Bilal. What a move. The point is that on bishop takes b5, you can throw in the Zwischenschach in between check, knight takes d5, check. Are you sure? Uh, I thought you could. Ah, there is such a nice point. King c6? Yeah, you can take... With a pawn. Okay, I'm, yeah, maybe. This is beautiful. And king takes d5, bishop b3 is mate. Wow. That's absolutely stunning. That's amazing. Look yeah. at that. King c6 and a b5. And the point is that if you go here, now you run into knight f6 check and the game is, is immediately over. Wow, yeah. rook to b5. Oof, that's an unpleasant move for Irene because now you're threatening knight takes d5 and rook takes a5. I think that's the end of the game. Takes here. Well, you have to now probably go back to d8. Is it so bad though? Don't we have any chances at all to save this one? I don't think so. Uh, what do you capture back with the rook? I um, guess. Or the pawn? With the probably rook. with the pawn. Well, with the pawn. Well, I was thinking I had a, uh, b6 there. Let um. I don't know. Yeah. Let's try with the not, rook. Not let's try with decision. the rook. B6. B6. Yeah. Okay. And now if I play. The problem is that black cannot really untangle the pieces because the knight is not moving. Right. The rook is not moving. Right. But maybe I want to bring. No, I don't really want to bring my king to c6 because after bishop e4, maybe I will get into another nice mating net. Yeah. And I've got so many ideas here as white. For example, I can go rook b1 and put the rook round here and do stuff like this. That's one idea. Another idea is actually just to uh, just to bring the king, uh, take take a pawn like this on h4. It's a very nice concept of this yeah. um, exchange sacrifice. It is. And hmm. bishop takes b5 on the board. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of uh, the best games of Magnus, actually, because he also likes to sacrifice exchanges, no? Mm-hmm. Uh, was it in the game against Danish Giri where he did and won in a very nice style yes. recently? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. I believe we will get this. And here, yeah, the problem with a takes b5 is that this guy is now passed and I'm not sure how you can use the a-file. So I do prefer rook takes b5, b6. And now I, you know, I like a, a move like rook to b1. Just saying, okay, your move, how do you plan to actually make a useful move? Yeah, that's a good question because the first thing which came to my mind was to bring over the king, but I don't have a good square for it. Like I was saying, king c6 runs into bishop e4. So, okay, knight is 7 but uh, you can take the pawn, right? I can take the pawn. I'm not also forced to take that pawn. For example, I can be super exquisite sometimes and just say that my position is so dominating. I can go knight f6, let's say rook h8, and now play a move like bishop d3. And claim, again, that my knight is actually worth more than the rook. I don't want to let you uh, untangle. Yeah, I believe... Uh all of these possibilities uh, have a chance here. But uh, uh, did did she play a move already? She played king d8 and rook takes b5 is on the board. So mm -hmm. a very, very unpleasant position to play with black here. Right. <coughs> very nicely done by Bilil. She's going to play b6. Uh, still compared to the previous position, there is this a risk every time involved when you sacrifice material. Because, of course, it is good. Of course, you are dominating. But if you make an inaccuracy here, if, for example, we imagine that the knights go off the board somehow, I suddenly have great chances with black to save the game, right? Yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. And there is, unfortunately, no ray of sunshine on the board anymore. No, I, 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 I don't see Irene surviving because I just think it's too many... Uh, too many problems to too solve Too many here, problems, no? yeah. Just too many problems. Right. Now, anything else? Let's go back to 
uh, Shansaya because the position is uh, getting very, very hot. It was already hot, and now it's getting spicy. Hot <laughs> and spicy. Knight b5 by Leandro Crisa here. Wait, today we are having here an Argentinian Kazakhstani encounter on this board, yes. right? Hmm, interesting. Interesting mix. <laughs> Okay, so knight c to b5 played. But at least uh, I see that white's king is on g1, it's right. back to safety. But there is a pawn there missing. Uh, black black is a pawn down, right? Black is a pawn down, but d5 is potentially weak. and um, can, uh, can we take it immediately? How do you want to do that? Uh, I think first take on d2. Rook takes, and now bishop d5. Well, bishop d5, bishop f6, ah, I see, you don't... Bishop no, f6, I was hoping take. for even bishop... No, bishop a2, bishop e7, no, I will just take. No, yeah. that, that doesn't work. Okay, so bishop takes d5, let's see. Are you sure it doesn't work? Why did you give up so quickly? Bishop f6, bishop f6, bishop d5, rook d5, rook d to c2. Am I not going to get in trouble over this? Yeah, I mean that's what I was trying to make work. I, I should have, I should have, I should have spent more time on it, and here and try and pin and win. <coughs> Looks very nasty, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. It might be three as a threat. It wasn't a good idea to to just take the pawn like that. Let's try a different way. How do we make it wor work? I didn't want to take with the knight on d5 because then the pawn on e7 would be hanging. Mm, but maybe there is uh, another idea to this position. You just want to take... Oh wait, there was also knight e4. Yeah, there's a, there's a knight e4 here. And I'm not sure which one. Probably this one. This one, all right. But no, then again this rook c2. And it's a very unpleasant... Uh, then maybe the other one. Okay. Yeah, now if I'm getting the pair of bishops, I'm optimistic about uh, about the position. So if I go here? Okay, I will take once, rook c2, knight g5. Uh, I have the feeling something different. Ah, no, they are, they are in a similar position. And knight d5. Knight d5. Yeah, it feels all right. I would probably go knight c6 here as white, maybe. All right, I will take. Yeah, you're going to take and take on b2. Mm -hmm. And you're going to just say a pawn is a pawn. Yeah, now it's me who has the pawn up. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't work. Yeah, maybe it's better to go for this knight e4 ideas rather than take directly on d5. I think she'll do that, actually. It's a very typical move you see a lot in the Grunfeld, and there and you have it. Yeah. Yeah, this is a really good move. Very nice. And uh, Leandro with a little... But he's <laughs> probably not risking much because the queens are off the board. He will yeah. have to be a bit precise, but probably uh, after many trades it will be a very drawish position, no? Or does black <coughs> have any chances to overtake here? Um... After all, we have the pair of bishops. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. No, I would take black here. Actually, rook c two. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if there's like a a mass trade. Leandro down to five minutes as well. Right. So actually, quite a few moves to play before uh, before this all happens. Yeah, five minutes is not much in this position. No. But he mis uh, mishandled it because yes. it seemed like uh, he was doing very well. He but that that's what I was saying, that Shansaya has this fantastic fighting spirit and I think <laughs> I think I never saw her lose two games in a row. Right. Uh, should we stay on this game or should we move uh, to another one? I just wanted to have a look at Yvanka's game again because mm -hmm. there's been more massive changes. And I have to say, I'm not a fan of, of what's happened for Yvanka. I don't know what went wrong, but 
like her king is weak. Yeah, why you? Why the did she open up the? How did that happen? I Let's don't know. have a look. So it went. It went something like uh, rook h3, bishop g6, which we uh -huh, already we thought was it. the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Knight to g3, and now queen to a7, which I, I don't mind. It kind of makes sense. But I think she missed f5, actually, as a concept. I think queen a7 is probably not that good. I don't understand it. And if I take on f5? Yeah, so it's it, yeah, well, ah, it's the same. It's the same thing. So takes, takes, t uh, takes here. Well, oh, nearly the same I thing. I wanted to take on f5, actually. You want to take? Oh, yeah, or here or there. It's the same. Bishop h5, knight h5, and now c takes. Isn't it better? I don't know, but what I do know is white's position is better than it was yeah, definitely. much. Because now with the light squares available, um, the white king can actually find shelter on g2, e6, f6. And actually black's king is arguably more unsafe than white's. And uh, mm. I really hate how this has gone for Yvanka takes. Uh, Jillian took on e6. Okay, fe6, fe6, and now queen d3, bishop b4 check. It's over to Jillian. He has played a move and king e2. And I'm actually a bit fearful for Yvanka here because queen g6 yeah. is landing. The rooks are doubling on the f-file. We have to play probably a solid move here like rook f8. Rook f8. No. In order to play queen f7 after queen g6. Mm -hmm. Ah, but then you maybe have knight takes. Hmm. Uh, queen g6, queen uh, I'm take. not sure. How is that one? Well, so queen g6, queen f7, we take on g7 check, king e7, I probably have to take. Yeah, I guess. Take and, and probably go five. back and post. And two pass pawns. Now it looks bad. I put the pawn on g5. It but maybe I have time for some bis bishop c3 and d3. Yeah, but... Nah. Well, yes, maybe. Maybe, but... You know, the two pass pawns are going to mean something here, I think. But I mean, it's not easy, mm, though. It's it's all right, I it's, believe. It's all right. Was, it's all yeah. right. It's all right. But uh, it's gone wrong. I mean, that's just one, one sample sample line. Maybe she should castle. Can she do that? That is legal. Castling might be ah, interesting. it's legal. Yeah, castling <laughs> is legal here. But wait, here queen... No, queen g6. <laughs> you wanted me to play queen g6 and then play d3 and then get mated. Well, you can take king takes d3. I wasn't completely sure. King d3? Yeah, I mean, sure, king d3. Oh. That's unexpected. Yeah. I was so happy about seeing that uh, that tactics, but maybe it's not over yet. Okay, yeah. queen c5. Well, queen c5, you want to come in here, huh? Mm -hmm. Perhaps you could uh, no, play I knight can just f6 go knight anyway. F6. Rook f6. Ef. Mm, queen c3. King e2. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have time to both take a rook and defend against the mate on g7. And if I take on f6, it's not one of those positions where I have good compensation for an exchange. Exactly. Uh, and she played short castle. Yeah, I, I kind of like the move, but I guess queen g6 has to be checked. But maybe she's just going to go king h8. Just get the king yeah, out of the yeah, way. Yeah, that's another option. But d3 is also very tempting, I must say. Mm -hmm. Maybe... Uh, but that's a threat anyway, right? Why yeah, cannot really stop that? Yeah, exactly. Maybe you can just do this anyway. Mm-hmm. Oh, we missed mate in one. Thanks for pointing that out. Queen g7 is mate. Yeah, that's. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, we probably need a break, no? Yeah, we're gonna we, actually. That's that's. <laughs> I think we're gonna need a coffee <laughs> refill because we've been going for um. Actually, how long have we? We've been going for a while now. So, uh, we are gonna take a, a quick break. Uh, we won't be too long because the games are getting really, really heated up. Uh, we're going to get some coffee before we blunder more mates in one. <laughs> Don't blunder mate in one in your own games. We'll be right back.
among the top 100 in the world, we only have one woman. And regarding the number of players, we have just one woman for every 10, 12, or 14 men playing chess. In a game or sport where physical strength is not important at all, I mean, endurance is important, but brute force is not important at all, this is a very big mystery.
and we are back to the battle of the sexes round four and i've got here uh eric rosen uh how are you eric i'm good i'm still cooling down after the game uh, i just finished like 10 minutes ago so still adrenaline kind of rushing through my system but uh good to be here all right and uh congratulations for your yesterday's win how did you feel after that I felt good. Yeah, it was a pretty uh, smooth game. I think very instructive game too from the, the black side of a, a Nimzo Indian. And uh, yeah, it felt good to like play a, a relatively clean game without any mistakes or blunders. Uh, when was the last time you won against a GM? Oh, uh, in a classical like in, game. In a classical game, yeah. because online <laughs> it, it happens pretty often. Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Uh, it's definitely the first Grandmaster I've been in at least a couple of years. Wow, so. congrats on that. Thank and you. Uh, let's have a look at today's game. Uh, please tell us, when did you think was the first critical moment of the game? Uh, you could uh, Yeah, you sure. Could so I went into uh, this kind of Italian, I don't even know what we call this, um, this D4 and E5 line. Mm -hmm. Um, now, I'll admit that I was expecting her to play Karo Khan, so mm -hmm. this was like a secondary opening that we I still looked at. We actually had bets on that, you know? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Laura said he, she w was going to play the Karo Khan, I went for the E5. Ah. So you had the same feeling as uh, Lawrence did, you expected a Karo Khan. Yeah, well, I I didn't know what to expect because she she can play Karo Khan, E4, E5, and Sicilian, so uh -huh. it's sometimes annoying to prepare against players like this who can play so many different things, and um, I had to try and just cover all my bases. So did you have in mind this line when uh, thinking what you'll choose if she plays e5 before the game? Yeah, yeah, I had this position on my computer screen this morning, but during the game I just forgot everything. Oh, wow. Because uh, it's my first time playing this opening. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I usually, like, I usually don't play e4, I'm usually a London player. Um, and uh, I figured that this is kind of a, a trendy line these days. I think Wesley so has a chessable course on this line. Right. Um, and if Black's not prepared, then it can be easy to kind of get a slightly worse position. Mm -hmm. um, and because she's a Carol Khan player, I wanted to test her. But uh, it turned out that I was the one being tested because oh. <laughs> she was more prepared than me. So D5, yeah. Uh, yeah, and we got into this position, bishop b6, this is all theory. And then right. for some reason I couldn't remember the move order, whether I'm supposed to castle first or knight c3 first. No, I think you did it, uh, you did it correctly, if our memory was uh, right, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like once we reached this position, then it, the lines kind of came back to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I spent maybe 10 minutes off the clock at this point. And, uh, yeah, we were wondering actually why you were taking time, but yeah. now that you've explained, it makes a lot of sense, right? Right. So, yeah, thankfully, like after I played Queen C2, I, I was still in preparation, mm -hmm. and uh, the the main line I was more ready for here is Bishop G6, and then Queen B3, and Queen and B3, 97, uh, and then castling, and it, uh, and then some Bishop D3, lines. Bishop D3 eventually, and there's a lot of branches after mm -hmm. Bishop D3, but. Uh, Okay, I, I would have been I happy to go into uh, that. I will uh, put it on the board. Bishop yeah. g6, bishop d3. Uh, queen b3 oh, first. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, right. Queen b3 first, knight e7. Mm. Castling, right. c6. So this is like the natural Six, line. Bishop. I think I played a game with some knight d2 here. Knight d2 is a move, yeah. Uh, getting the bishop pair, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's one of those things of like playing a new opening for the first time. Like I basically learned this opening last like day or two. So uh, it's easy to kind of forget things and that's why it's, it's more important to just understand what's going on in the position right. rather than just trying to memorize everything. Definitely, but she took on C3. Did it, came, did it come as a surprise? A uh, small surprise, but mm -hmm. I knew this was a move. And uh, if we go forward a few moves, I mean, she was blitzing out everything. Like, she still had more time than she started with after f6, takes f6. And I still remember looking at this position, it was either last night or this morning, <laughs> um, that black can't take on f3 here because I have the intermediate move f takes g7 and white's doing well. Oh, that's a nice intermezzo, um, right? Right. So, so instead she went for queen takes f6. 
Queen F6, and I think it's still theory. Um, yeah, after I think B2. there were a lot of games played uh, played in a similar uh, manner. Right, and I'll admit, after Bishop E2, this is pretty much the end of my preparation, uh, and especially after she played Knight A5, I was on my own. Um, but thankfully, the position kind of played itself because after Knight A5, she's just asking for me to play Knight mm -hmm. E5, which right. I was happy to do. Uh, bishop takes e2, then queen e2, c5, all logical. Okay, so when she played c5, mm -hmm. it looks like a beginner's mistake because <laughs> she allows, allows knight e7. Right, and uh, what, what is wrong with it? Yeah, so uh, it's an interesting calculation exercise because uh, at first it looks like I'm just cleanly winning an exchange. Um, but after a few minutes of thinking, I realized that black has queen c6 here. C6. And there's a lot of counterplay eight. after knight f8 and cd4. Ah, and the problem is that after, say, c takes d4, Queen there C3. is a check coming here. Yeah. And the rook on a1 is going to get lost. And it's weird, like after cd4, I'm, I'm temporarily up a full rook. Mm -hmm. But I didn't see a good way to just consolidate and be up material. So. I right, wanted to because go into you, this, have to, you have to give up one of the pieces, either the bishop on e3 you know, or the knight on f8, and that's going to be just an exchange up, right? Yeah, but it's not easy to be up the exchange here. Um, <laughs> exactly. Because if, if I take on d4, there's bishop d4, and, uh, and even rook e8's now a threat. Yeah. And white I, I might think get in trouble here, no? White might already be losing. Yeah. Um, so I just avoided all of that. And uh, castle short. And castle, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we kept going, uh, cd4. And yeah, a lot of these moves were very natural. Queen e6, now avoiding knight d7. Mm -hmm. And queen's very useful on e6 because it, it supports this knight c4 idea. Right. Um, so went ahead f4. Knight c4. Yeah, I really liked this uh, knight c4 move. We were not sure how to evaluate this position because it seems like you have a bit of a problem on the light squares, right? Right, uh, especially with my pawns on dark squares and yeah. having dark squared bishop and I'm tied down to d4. The move I really wanted to play is g4 mm -hmm. and get a setup with g4, f5 and start attacking. Immediately? Um, so I, I want to play ah, G4 yeah, immediately. You wanted to make it work, right? Right. The problem with G4 immediately is, I believe, uh, what was it? I think knight takes E5. Uh, knight takes, ah, yeah, and then D4. And I want to take coming. with the D pawn, but then D4, and I'm, I'm getting hurt. Yeah, the pawn on F4 will be falling Because if bishop F2, rook F2. F4, yeah. Yeah, right. So you chose to consolidate first, rook A to so D1. So rook A D1, yeah, um, mm -hmm. proving my worst place piece. And then... Here we got a bit worried about this g4, to be honest. Uh -huh. We were afraid your king will be too exposed, actually. But uh, you handled it well, it, it seemed to us, no? Yeah, I think g4 is called for in the position, even though I am leaving my king, my king a bit naked on g1. Uh, I do have the, the kingside majority, so it, it makes sense to push the pawns. And if I get in f5, then there's f6 potential. I thought black has to be very careful here, mm -hmm. but she found, uh, she found a very concrete line. Knight takes e5, d5, and rook c4. It's a very important move, no? Because now you right. don't, uh, don't have time to make f5 happen, no? Right, so my dream is to play f5 and then e6. Yeah. And I call this connect four <laughs> with uh, the pawn chain. Uh, but there's no time to do it because uh, when I play f5, then e5 hangs. And um, here I had to be really careful not to have my pawns just crumble. Yeah. So you took on so b6. We trade. And yeah, this was quite, uh, quite concrete. After queen b6, king g2, I lose f4, but I win d5. And yeah, I, was, I spent some time here because there's queen d2 as well. Yeah, we saw, we tried to make e6 work, but it didn't. Ah, <laughs> I didn't consider e6 too yeah, seriously. Yeah, we, we fought to try a queen sacrifice, but it doesn't work, unfortunately. Uh -huh. So queen d2 you fought, right? So queen d2, yeah, and I thought that, uh, at first I thought this should be the strongest move, because I hit the rook, I can take on d5 with check, but then she has rook f7. Rook saving the rook, avoiding the check mm -hmm. on d5. And when I take on d5, there's queen f2. 
king and h1 and queen g3. And at least there will be a perpetual, right? Well, I thought, like, I didn't see how to oh, survive in this pawns. position. Well, yeah. now there's queen h3, queen f1. Yeah, yeah. Ah, right. So, so rook f1 doesn't work because the rook is hanging. Right. Yeah, good point. Uh, all right. Um, so I, I spent a long time trying to see how I could survive after queen g3, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I didn't see anything clear cut, so decided to just not enter this line. Yeah, perhaps it was for better, right? <laughs> right, um, but okay, after I play rook takes d5, it's still a little bit unsettling mm -hmm. because queen c6, I'm pinned, had to play queen d3, and then she found an interesting move rook f8. Uh, yeah, we were trying to make uh, rook c4 work, uh, calling about for some rook c2, rook c3 ideas. So here there is a funny line, I can play mm -hmm. queen f3. Oh, queen f3. Breaking the pin, and after rook c2, I can play king g3. And then after rook c3, looks like I'm losing a queen, but I'm just mating. <laughs> with, uh, yeah, that's a funny line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, she played rook f8 instead. So rook f8, and uh, yeah, and then I'm still under pressure, because rook d8 is a threat. Yeah. I had to walk my king up, and then she played queen c1. And it looks really scary, given that there's all these yeah. checks on the back rank. Um, and yeah, there's queen e1, queen g1 to worry about. And I can't really easily stop everything. But I realize that I can allow black to play queen g1. So I played queen d2 here. Yeah, that seems like a very good move, because you cover basically all the dark squares, no? Right, except g1. Except g1. So if queen g1 here... Uh, I just tuck my king away on h4. <laughs> right. And then black doesn't have a great follow-up, I don't think. Yeah, we we also thought so, because even rook d8 might be possible, as after queen uh, f2 you will have some even king g5. And then you are fine because you cover the f6 square, right? Yeah, my, uh, my pieces are well-placed enough where mm -hmm. yeah, black can't hurt me too much. Uh, so. But she played queen a3? Queen a3, and then this just led to a repetition of moves. I played rook d3, queen c5, queen c5 rook d5, and I still allow queen g1 if, if <laughs> she wants it, but <laughs> if she didn't play queen g1 in the first position, I didn't, didn't think she would play it again. And uh, yeah, we repeated here. So I think it was a relatively peaceful game. Yeah, it uh, it definitely looked uh, like uh, you both were trying to find chances, but mm -hmm. uh, both of you played well, so I guess that draw is a fair result. I think so, yeah. Um, I'm really curious to check the opening theory and also check with the engine to see if there were anything missed in this game. I am uh, curious uh, to ask you, mm -hmm. how, uh, how do you feel when you know there are so many supporters cheering for you? Does it... Uh, motivate you to go for even more than uh, you would normally? Yeah, it, it's definitely motivating. Um, and I definitely, like one of my goals this tournament is to play really interesting and fighting chess. And um, I think it allows me to kind of detach myself from the results. Um, now it's easy to just focus on just trying to win or trying to play solidly. But uh, for me, I'm just trying to have interesting games and and instructive games too. Oh, that's, too. Uh, that's a really nice strategy, I believe, and I wish you luck with that. Before so letting you go, I have one more question. Sure. I saw that you are great friends with Irene Sukandar, mm -hmm. right? And you are going to play in this tournament eventually against each in other. In the final round, actually. Oh, <laughs> wow, in the final round. I right. did not know that. So uh, how, uh, how are you trying to make a mindset for that? How uh -huh. is it to play against friends generally? Yeah, so we were actually teammates at Webster University uh, back from back in 2015 through 2017, and uh, yeah, it's it's always tricky playing a former teammate because we we train together, we know each other's repertoires, right? And uh, I mean, for me, I'm just trying to take it one game at a time, so mm -hmm. I'm not looking too far ahead at my my future opponents, um, even taking it one move at a time. So. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll worry about it when the, the day comes, but uh, for now I'm just trying to play good moves. 
Sure. And you had a very nice comeback as a team yesterday, winning with a very high mar margin, plus four. Mm -hmm. uh, congrats on that. Thank you. And what are uh, your thoughts now about the situation in the match? Uh, yeah, I've, I didn't have a chance really to look at the other games going on this round because I was just so focused on my own game. And uh, it's a tricky thing about team chess because, of course, you, you want to be rooting for your team, you want to keep an eye on the team's games. But in the end, chess is still an individual game and really I'm, uh, I'm trying to do my own job and, and play, uh, play the, to the best of my ability. So um, I, I hope that we can score another, uh, another plus score in this round. But uh, yeah, it's nice when, when there is a team to kind of lift you up, especially if, uh, if I have a bad game or bad result, it's nice when the team can So your uh, team spirit's uh, nice here. Do you, do you have team meetings? Do you have uh, any secret meetings for settling up a strategy for the next game? Yeah, I don't want to reveal too many secrets. But <laughs> we, we do have a, a WhatsApp group where we, we share some secrets. So ah, I'll leave right. it at that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and I wish you best of luck in the next games. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Uh, let's now get back uh, to the games. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, there was Eric Rosen. Uh, pretty, I think, happy with the result. I mean, a draw, I think it was a fair result, all, all right. things considered. So a draw there. And while you were doing that, Irina, basically, there was just a flood of results. Wow. Uh, just incredible. Uh, if we take a look at the pairings for today, we'll see on the screen that uh, there are now five results in. And they are all draws. Uh, the first game was Chonka Muzichuk. We already know that it finished early. The Krisa versus Abdul Malik game ended in a draw, which I think is probably the right result. It felt as though Jansaya uh, solved her problems. She sacrificed the two pawns and then got great activity. Eric, as we just saw, drew against Olga. Bobby Cheng against Marie is not a surprise at all. And Hussein Aziz also isn't really a surprise against Marcel Efroimsky. They found, a, I think it was a, a repetition, basically, at the right moment to, uh, to make the draw. So, uh, oh, it was that semi Tarash. Yeah, it was the semi Tarash game and uh, a position similar to what we were looking at with this past deep horn. But Marcel, uh, she had everything under control, basically, and... They just went back and forth in this position and there's there's nothing to be done. And that S leaves us with only five games in progress. Five games in progress and, and basically... Anything can happen now. Anything can happen now. Let's let's have a look at the games still in progress. Let's have a look at Joe Gallagher quickly because... Sure. We were saying how Joe would be very disappointed and I think Pia is making phenomenal progress in this position. Um, yeah, so just uh, still uh, a pawn down, but also his peace coordination is uh, not the greatest. The knight on e5 is so good protecting f7, and somehow black's rook starts uh, to infiltrate in white's camp. Yeah, and here, for example, well, maybe it's not so easy, because if Joe's able to play a4 and maybe stabilize, but even then I'm not... I'm not completely convinced. And Rook C3 played by Pia. Joe with one minute, 22 seconds. He's got five moves to play. He needs to find a move. And the problem is a move like King to D2 might run into, well, probably not Rook G3 because of Rook F2, but maybe this is also okay. Maybe this is also okay. I'm very, very concerned for Joe here, though. It looks, it looks like he, it's, uh, it's got out of control. 54 seconds now for Joe Gallagher. 
Yeah, it's he'll be really disappointed if he loses this game. Yeah, because he could uh, he could have uh, played it safe, but also before that it looked like he had a slight edge there. Or maybe not even a slight one. Maybe it was even more than a slight edge. A4. A4. Okay, trying to... I mean, this is a a pretty uh, useful move to have, but Rook C3 must have had an idea. What was that idea? Hmm. Not completely sure. Yeah, because Rook G3... Rook G3, now you can go Rook F2 or Rook D2, or even Bishop D5 now. Ah, uh, yeah. So I don't right. like rook g3. So let's have a look. A4. Pier to play. Sh plenty of time. Four minutes for four moves. You can really... It's actually not that easy as I thought to make progress no. with black here. Because the knight from e5 doesn't really move. So uh, with which pieces should I create so threats? She played rook g3. She did. Okay, so I guess maybe her idea is that after bishop d5 she wants rook a3. Is that possible? Uh, to be able to get some scope with this rook? Mm, perhaps, yeah, perhaps that's the point. And if rook f2? Maybe now she just wants to play, let's say, king, king e7. Seven. But what's the idea after that? How do we make progress with black? Maybe she should try and come after this pawn. Wait, I will set you up a trap here. Okay. Rook e4. Rook e4. I want to take rook takes f7. Oh. <laughs> well, you can... S yeah, yeah. I'll... I'll... I don't want to play f6, I don't think. Yeah, because after f6, maybe I can go for rook e to f4 and then hope for some... I'm not sure I want to play h6, though. I thought I want... But maybe I don't. Mm. Yeah, somehow the king on e7 is very yeah. safe with the knight on e5 because it covers all the squares around it. Uh, so I guess we're going to have to find well, out. He played, he didn't play this, he played rook d2. Okay. So That's rook also all right, I believe. Probably is all right. Um, and knowing Pierre, she won't want to... For I rook c6 feels like, or rook b6 feels like a useful improving move. Let's see what she goes for here. What is oh, this? She's rook e3. Rook e3 now, okay. Maybe she wants to play g3 at some point? Possibly, yeah. Or she's just trying not to <gasps> alter the nature of the position before things get out of you know, out of control. I've made a plan. Okay. So I want to bring the rook to b4, the other rook, rook b6, rook b4, mm -hmm. then g3, rook h4, mm. and try something I like over that. there. I like that a lot, actually. I think Joe is toast in this position. I just get the, the impression that black has just got too many ways to maneuver and too many ideas, and I, I don't see how Joe survives. Let's go to another game, which is uh, under move 40. Sabino... Uh, Brunello oh. against Nino Batsiashvili. Let's go straight there because they must be low on time. One minute 20 versus one minute with four moves to go. Now, what is going on here? So, uh, Sabino is a piece down, but he has four pawns for it. Right. The challenge will be not to get mated, but I think white has that under control because queen h3 can be met by queen e5, and then suddenly black will get mated. She just played queen g7, so she's threatening mate in a, in a different way. And actually, hold on a second here. Wait, isn't this bad for for Sabina? Why? Well, how do you how do you stop queen mate? Queen e5, knight f6. Queen e5, knight f6. And queen g5, I guess. Ah, you can right if you give back a, a pawn immediately. Yes, but I guess the point is that if you don't have this, uh, this is mate. If you try and run, this looks like mate. Check. Let's say here, check, and yeah. and mate. Ten seconds for Sabina. Yeah, bit nervous. And if he goes here, this really is going to be mate as well. He will go for it. There is no other thing. Yeah, he does go queen e5, correct. Queen e5. She's going to play knight f6, 100%. Yep. 
and he almost certainly will go queen g5. Now the question is, is there another move here after queen g5? And the answer is, like, can black play another move here to try and threaten mate? Queen f7 could be a move, but I don't really like it because after queen uh, h6, knight h7, it doesn't seem like I have any right. threats. And then, you know, if we imagine that the queens uh, are off, it's unclear who's better. Actually, it might be clear who's better. It would be white because four pawns are too much. But here, black can get one of those pawns. Yeah. Or. or? Yeah, and the, pr the problem is after this, rook c6. You yeah. You actually attack, and I actually. Ah, rook. Well, rook g. Rook g6 is a cute way to defend. <laughs> yeah, it is. 94 check, but I can probably improve my king, maybe king f1. And then I don't have uh, a good way to... A5, rook A6, and I would say that uh, Sabino is big favorite to win. Uh, oh, an wait. End. She did not... She didn't do it. She, she kept the queens, or maybe she thought that... Maybe she thought that this was a better practical try. Yeah. So you believe this is a better position for white? I don't know. I have no idea who's better here. Who's better and why? Yeah, queen h6 uh, seems like... Queen h6, knight h7. No, perhaps some rook move, no? Yeah, so Something rook... like rook c... Rook c6 is kind of where you... Mm. But then you don't really threaten to play rook g6 because h4 is hanging, right? Yeah, and in fact there were no checks here for the moment, so... He you played that. You might have to contend with queen a3 here. Uh, but uh, on the bright side, there are not many moves left until they get the additional time. Um, but this is actually move. actually quite a difficult move for, for Sabino because... Uh, it's He's so nervous. I think he should play queen f4 to threaten queen e5 check again. It doesn't alter the position. He's going to go rook c6. He's going to do it, and then queen a3 is coming, and then I... Five uh, seconds, four. Rook, ah, rook c5. That's Oof. that's probably better. Rook c5, yes. Because it blocks yes, the queen. Mm -hmm. But now if I go queen... Queen d7? d7? Trying to infiltrate on h3? Exactly. Then you will probably have to play queen f4, right? Yeah, and I can't play queen h3. Well, I can. No, I can't. Sorry, it's over. Oh, no, I can. Ru I can go here, because check, rook g7. Luckily for me, rook c8 doesn't work. Oh. But you have, yeah, you have at least You're, a perpetual. Yeah, you have a perpetual. Or do you? <laughs> Knight of eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Queen takes. King, King h7, h7 and no checks. And now I'm threatening this and this mate. Is it lost though? Could be lost. King d3, King e2, King, sorry. Queen g2 check. King d3. Yeah, Queen f1 check. King c3. Queen e1 check. King b2. Yeah, and I, I'm not covering the square, and this square is covered. It's probably winning for white. Yeah. Yeah, that needs to be calculated. That's for sure. But that's a sort of, I mean, of course, you're not obliged to play knight f8. You can just go back and we would have a draw. This is the sort of position which could end in a draw, you know. I mean, she played, she played uh, queen f4. Did she, she played queen f7. Sorry, she didn't go queen d7. She played queen f7. Ah, maybe she's looking to come to f5 or something. Ah, yeah, because that would cover also the e5 square and also the queen doesn't come to f4 now. That's actually right. a really a really smart move. I like it. And uh, now they've got uh, the extra 30 yep. minutes on their clock, so uh, I guess Sabina will have to figure out uh, what to do here. There are still some games that haven't reached move 40. Let's quick... Oh, my God. Goodness me, what <laughs> has happened in the Jillian versus Yuvanka game? How did this king end up on A3? It was on, it was, it was comfy. Wasn't it okay, like on E2? We last saw it here. Yeah. 
let's just well, I mean Short Castle. Yeah, short castles. Uh he played Queen G six, King H eight, Rook D three. Rook D three, oh I don't like that move. Yeah, it doesn't That's look all right. Queen C seven. Okay. Now she got a bit of uh, now the pieces started working. She nicked a pawn, she came in. Oh, Check. it looked like it was... Oh! What was Rook that? Rook takes c2. That's a lovely shot. Right. Yeah, Rook takes c2. The point is after here, Rook f2 check, and the Rook is lost. So already it's looking very dodgy for white, but he fa he finds some miracle... What is this, Rook h1? Queen takes d3. He wants to go knight f4, discovered check. Exactly. But can I not go Rook c... Oh, it's check. <laughs> <laughs> I have to block. Uh, okay, so Rook knight f4. H2. Rook h2, but now knight takes d3 and it's okay for white. Yeah. This is this is probably, probably okay. Fine, yeah. Okay, so she went rook c1 check. Rook takes c1. Mamma mia. And bishop takes c1. She didn't take on d3 with check. Why? Rook c2, I guess. Yeah, but rook. Uh, rook f2. Rook f2 or rook f1? It looks dead lost for I mean, white. what? How? how isn't this just winning immediately for black? Hold on. I rook, don't understand. Rook f1, king b2. Okay, let's try your rook f2 move. I don't get it. Isn't there's, just game That's over? just actually immediately the game because there's no checks. Oh, Hold on. Maybe, is Queen there another these? thing after? No, there is not because then you take the... Oh my god, it will, even if I just take everything on c2, I have how many? Two points up? Yeah, I mean that the endings... Three, two points. The, yeah. uh, the endings are crushing, but even this might be completely crushing somehow after some quiet move like king h7. Um, I have an idea. Or bishop queen. d2. Bishop, bishop d2, wow. In order to play bishop c3 and only then win the and rook. You're just... Happy that we cover here. I, it feels like there are a million wins. I mean, maybe this is even winning, right? Maybe even the game is winning. Yeah. Let's have a look. Let's, so takes here. Bishop a3 by Yvanka. Okay, and now b4. He's wriggling away. Takes. King b2. He found a little bit of luft for his king. Queen b6, and it's on Yvanka. Oh, and no. they just got uh, extra time. It should be totally lost for white. Queen B8 check. Let's have a look at this position. So King H7, I guess. Yeah. No, there's some Knight F6. Wait, we've got to be careful. Knight F6. But I've got King G6 in yeah, the worst this is, case scenario. This is the move. Just to explain, the trick is that after GF6, Rook H3 check, and then Queen here or Queen here is gonna should end the game. Should. King Maybe G6. it's not even the case, right? Here, Queen G7, Queen E8. And the king is running. And the king is running. And it's not the end of the game. Because here, the king comes out. And probably black is winning. Yeah. But the easiest solution, as you said, Irina, is just to go King G6. Now, Rook B2 is a threat. And maybe this is a threat now. So... Yeah, it looks like uh, it's uh, a completely winning position for Jovanka, but uh, after some, a lot of yeah. actually ups and downs. But she's going to win, isn't she? She's she's made move 40, she can calm down. It's going to be a, a big win for Jovanka if she uh, finishes It's going to be her off. first win her in first the tournament. Win. Yep. Let's look at Ravi Haria, who's just made the time control against... What on... A, what? He has an extra pawn, I believe. Oh, goodness me. He has an extra pawn, but Gunai must be... Relieved, no? Incredibly relieved to get this position, because this extra pawn doesn't feel that great. I mean, yeah, he had... it's the H-pawn. It's very difficult to convert it. Yeah, I mean, we've, we, we might go through the game if we are not... Uh, if we don't have uh, any other games, but I mean, okay, the situation is clear. He's a pawn up. Only white can win, but winning this position is really not an easy job. All right. All right. Let's go back to Bilal against Irene because this was a wow. This is this is just a destruction. Uh, oh, this is this is, is just that's yeah. A that's sad one. 
that's over. D6 is coming, and if you go rook d8, you can just go c4. She just played knight f5. Yeah. Knight f5 isn't going to change anything. This has been a, a really nice performance by Bilal. Yeah. You can go bishop c6, knight d7. So probably for now we will have one win for the ladies' team in Jovanka's game yeah. and one win in the men's team with uh, Bilal here probably scoring a point. And Pia Kremling also with great chances. A pair of rooks have come off. The uh, If all the rooks come off, it's, uh, I guess, a pretty easy win. Wait, so it's a point up for Pia and a point up for Ravi. So... Yeah. Um, it looks like it's balanced and it will all come down to this game. And this could go three ways. Yeah. So a very a very tight match today. Yeah, very tight. Mm, yeah. Wow. And they've all made the 40th move. So this is actually probably going to be our longest day so far. Right. Because we've had, you know, not super short days but the players have got an extra hour and uh, we're going to be here at least for another hour I would say given the positions that we have Ravi playing a pawn up against Gunai um, you know yeah let's have a look at it how, yeah, uh, let's how did the rook from a7 escape yeah okay so let's go all the way back to um here was the last time we were really checking it. He played knight e4, which I, I didn't mind. And knight to d5 by Gunai. And he went bishop into d6, takes and takes, still maintaining control. Bishop d7. And now he played c3. This all looks normal. Queen c7, the knight came back. Looks normal. And queen to b3 also looks normal. But at the same time, now that the knights have come back, at, at least this rook can get back in. So right. I don't really know what happened here. Yeah, actually, white didn't want, I believe, to trade pieces because black pieces have very little space to maneuver around. So perhaps this whole concept with knight e4 wasn't uh, uh, really precise. Well, maybe it's okay. C3... Knight back to e4. I mean, white is still better here, right? That's not even a, a debate. Bishop c6. He took a pawn. Mm -hmm. Knight f4 by Gunnar. Wow. Now that is sharp a sharp tactic. Yeah, and he went bishop f1 here, but I'm seeing out the corner of my eye. Could he have taken this knight and ended the game immediately? So you win a piece, black wins a piece, and now bam. Perhaps he was afraid of something. Well, you're giving the piece back. You have to take, else yeah, it's... there is no other way. I but also the rook on a7 is out of the play completely. Yeah, exactly. Check. And here I can probably take on f5. Uh, that's what he missed. That's what he missed, definitely. Because if you take on g2 instead, there are all sorts of queen f4, knight h4, you know. Yeah. And the king might be actually in trouble there. So a very a very nice, but it's quite a quite a long line he had to calculate, and maybe he not didn't really. Have, no. No. Oh. I mean, let's have a look. Knight f4. You want to go rough on him? On, yeah, on I, I mean he's a grandmaster now, so you have <laughs> to go rough on him. And takes takes and takes is is really not a long line. That's a that but is some. Knight f5 is very easy to miss. Mm, no? no, not for a grandmaster. I don't think so. I mean, the reason why I say it's not difficult to miss is because the whole concept of this position is about the rook on a7 and therefore right. the weak back rank. I would expect Ravi, if he had more than five minutes on the clock, it's really a, not a difficult spot for somebody of Ravi's talent. Um, so he played bishop f1. And now the knight was... He still has a good good position because he's a pawn up. Queen before rook d8. And now he goes back. Okay. Takes, takes. Check. Okay. Still has a good position. He goes knight b3 now. 
It's now some slightly mysterious moves. <laughs> slightly mysterious. I mean, h4. Yeah, queen e4 makes sense. Okay, this makes... Yeah, suddenly, suddenly Ooh, he got knight into e5. trouble. Knight e5 might be a move he missed because if you take this this check, he must have missed this idea of knight e5. This is a great resource by Gunai. Look how resourceful this is. Of course, the point is that you can't take because of this. And you have to take the queen check. Now you can't go here because this is check. Uh -huh. So you have to go to the corner. And now she the king takes in the back. corner isn't really happy, right? Yeah, and now Gunai just tries to take some initiative, but d4, now rook d3 is coming, so she but came back. how did back. he lose the a5 pawn? It's, uh, it's a bit strange. Oh, he ran into another, he ran into another kind of knight e5. Sorry, rook, rook d2, knight to c4. Oh, knight to Ooh, c4. Ooh, and now the knight on b3 is misplaced, and now after takes, takes, knight c5, he b6. ran into b3. Wow, he got pinned four times <laughs> in a row. Right. <laughs> And actually now after knight e4, rook d8, knight g5, yes, he got this, and knight takes h3. I think it went g5, king g2. Okay, why well, it's still better, but this is just not even close. I mean, Gunai, I mean, sh sh she's there got real chances. chances. Yeah, real chances. Yeah, I believe she might be able to hold this one, especially yeah. since Ravi has to be very disappointing because he definitely feels that he had much more. No, sure. I mean, this is... This is this is better for White, but uh, he was well. I mean, we already saw one variation. He was totally winning. Okay, she goes f6, which makes sense to secure the pawns and now um, now try and improve this knight. I mean, if the knight can get to d5 and stabilize, pawn goes to b5, rook goes to a2. You keep. White passive, it's... Uh, White should try to bring the knight, I believe, uh, to f2, then to e4, d6, somewhere around those squares. So a move like f3 would be one I would consider uh, trying, yeah, to, to find a route for that knight, a better, better mm -hmm. place for it. Because if I get my knight to d6, then you will probably have to eventually play b5. Then your rook is a little bit pinned to... Mm -hmm. Uh, to defending b5. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are still uh, ideas for white in this position. He won't uh, let uh, uh, Gunai get away with it easily, but it's definitely a huge relief for her to get her yeah. out of that position. Agreed. Joe Gallagher. Now, uh, they made the time control. <sighs> Has so uh, you said that if they trade rooks here, it's game over, right? I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe it's maybe that's too simplistic. Yeah, because actually, uh, it's a bit difficult to make progress here. For example, I'll I will trade the rooks somehow. Mm -hmm. I'll find a way to do it. Let's say rook c5, rook d5 takes takes. Okay. Um, how do you actually make progress here as black? Because if you move the knight, I win the pawn. If you play this, you always run into h6. Or, for example, I can just take a lot of the time. No, I know the idea. Okay. We should bring over the king to b6. You should probably bring it towards d4 in order not to mm -hmm. allow me enter there. And then I should play f5 and f4 and try to mm -hmm. distract you somehow. Okay, that all makes... A lot of sense. Because it's important that my pawn is on g7 and it cannot be attacked by white's bishop. So if, let's say, then I uh, even give up the f pawn but get the a or the c pawn, it should be a win. Mm -hmm. I've got an interesting idea if you try and bring your king to b6. Let's mm -hmm. say you go here. Yeah. I'm going to go here. <laughs> and uh. if you go here, I'm going to be very tempted to play like but this. But I can play f6. Ah, wait. F6. Okay, yeah. king F5. Let's try to bring it. King C7. H6. I s ah. ah, you just go like this. Oh, no. That's not the way to play for black. No, no, no. no. I don't like F6. All right, so let's try. Uh, you want to sacrifice. But I believe the sacrifice should work. Okay, king C7. Bishop Look. F7. 
Uh, King G6. Probably some kind of draw. Knight D8. Knight E6. Yeah, King D7. Knight F8. But even King the E7. Yeah, even the. No. I'm losing. The opponent game is lost. Yeah, because. Yeah, it feel feels like it should be lo losing. Yeah, it's uh, it's probably losing. Have to count though. Like for example here. King E4. King G5. King F3. King, King H4. H4. And now after D5 you have C3, but still it's unclear. King E3. Yeah. King D3. And King C3. And this one I'm winning actually. No. no. Ah, no. King E2. Still, still a draw. Yeah. Uh, well, interesting. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. all kinds of stuff to consider there, isn't there? But there is a lot of calculation involved, and as we see, black doesn't really risk here, so yes. it's, um, it's white who's going to have to be very resourceful to defend this one. So the rooks, it might be dangerous to trade the rooks. But yeah, exactly. Mm. So she doesn't have to trade the rooks, of course. But then how do you improve? Because I can just play uh, rook d5 and want to take the pawn on a5. And if you don't have rook c5, then what do you do? Do you just play rook a6? Because if you play rook c3 now, I definitely go for rook d5. Uh, what what no should be the plan there's here? There's no mating that, right? No, there's not. Maybe I should bring the king <laughs> anyway to b6, even even with the rooks on the board. Could I try that? I mean... I don't see another plan, just if you have a better idea. Okay, so idea. rook d5, you want to go rook a6. Mm. Yeah, what to do. Okay, let's say here I go rook uh, b5. King c7. Okay, and now I just pass. Yeah, how am I going to win it? Maybe this isn't winning actually. The Maybe. more the more I the more I look at this, the more I think Joe's got chances here actually. All right, so maybe I have to play rook c5 not to allow you go on d5. And maybe actually um trading the rooks is the only chance for black because I don't like that I have to stay and protect the pawn on a5. It's a very passive position for my rook. Uh, so you go rook c5 immediately. Yeah. yeah. And then I offer the rook trade. Yeah. And uh I have to agree with that one. I have a feeling that's uh, what uh, we are going to see. Very interesting. Yeah, not over for Joe Gallagher. I thought it was going to be extremely tough, but uh, he's got the active king. The act rook no, rook b6. b6. A different move. What is that one? What said idea after rook d5? I don't know. Knight c6? No, then I take this pawn. Okay, rook b4 check, rook b4, I guess. Rook b4, king g3, knight c6 now. But now rook g5. Maybe some... Can I play knight d4? Uh, probably. Do I have some checks here? Some nice checks? Probably not. Check, I go here. Yeah, that's not Check, enough. Check, I go here. That's not going to be enough. Rook b6. Maybe we, we don't see something. What might that be? Okay, definitely rook d5 should be the move for white to check first, no? Yeah, I think you have to go rook d5 here. Yeah, and it's... Uh, having cheated, it's... Apparently it's not very much for black. Yeah. So the comp switched him off for one second, doesn't think it's winning. So Joe, this would be actually a critical draw given the match situation. That means that Gunai will also have to try her best yeah. to save the game. Otherwise, the ladies might lose today again. Exactly. 
Gunai. Uh, let's check one more time Nino's game. Let's see yeah, if there was sorry. any move played there because it was really... Oh, and he got greedy. He took another pawn. Sabino took the pawn on a6. Well, I thought he would do this, but after queen h5, what's queen his... H5. You want h4. Yeah, sure. That's that's a big problem. Why? So what's what's his idea? Maybe just king, king e2. e2. But that's still a... No, king e2 is probably losing. Or Check. is it? King d3. And now take here. Oh, wait, aren't you going to get in some trouble? Rook c8, knight f8. Queen h6, king g8. Queen e6. Yeah. Is at least a draw, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's try that in. So queen h5, king e2. And what if I take? <laughs> Should I take another pawn? <laughs> If you take <laughs> here, it might be a good move because it frees some squares. So, um. oh, and uh, they they played something or yeah, queen something. Queen f seven instead of queen. No, the queen was on f seven. Rook f eight. She played. Rook f eight. Ah, so that's even. A better try, because now she wants uh, Sabina to either play f4 or queen e2, protecting right. uh, the f-pawn, and then queen h5, perhaps. Well, f4 she can't play. That, uh, he can't play. We know that for sure. Because Even you also f6. let the knights in the game, queen h5 next, and you can lose this very rapidly. So Is queen e2 then the only move? Queen e2, the only move, and now queen h5. Uh, now... Now also knight f6 again makes a lot of sense. But then he will go king e1 probably. Yeah. But queen h5 is a great okay, move. Okay, queen h5. Because after, what do you do? Now the f3 pawn will also be mm -hmm. hanging and the queen is not participating in creating the, that threat which we saw before in the previous lines with the queen on a6. Mm -hmm. hmm. It looks like Nino's got a really... Really nice chances uh, for a win here. Uh, I mean, I don't see her losing this game. No, for I don't sure. see her losing. That's and Sabino has to yeah. run with his king for his life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. No, I think Nino is uh, is. I don't see Nino losing this this position actually. And Sabina doesn't have that much time. He spent How a lot of got? time thinking 12 minutes. on mm -hmm. the 41st move. And yep. now he's down to 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Incredible. Incroyable, <laughs> as they say in France. Okay, so Nino keeping chances alive. Pia chances alive. Irene, let's go there. Oof. This is a, uh, this is a uh, uh, just one of those positions which uh, which you don't want to show to kids. Well, it's just complete domination. The the bishop dominates the the d8 rook, the knights. It might actually be a zugzwang for yeah, black here. Yeah, it could here. be zugzwang. Yeah. Well, in any case, white has got lots of ways to win this position. Let's just say black played. Um, a move like h3. Uh, you just put the bishop on c6 and you play c5 on the next move. Yeah, it's just uh, very and bad. If he takes, or you prepare it with like rook b5 and c5 and then a5 hangs and c5 hangs. And meanwhile, yeah. you've just got no ideas. No worries whatsoever. No. Yeah. No. Rook c7 played by Irene. So trying to hold on, trying to stop this c5, but I guess... Ah, bishop c6, the only thing is you have to be a bit... Ah, you have to be careful of knight takes d4 here. <laughs> That's a nice one. Yeah. King takes d4 and rook takes c6. That's a nice resource. Yeah. So he's got to be careful not to blunder that. So... Ah, this is, a, this is actually a very clever move. All right, but... 
What else? What could he go for? He could play rook where? Rook c1. Rook c1? What for? Just to see what move are you going ah, to make. Ah, okay. Because it's really difficult to make a move. What do you do? Okay, King a8? Or, or rook c8? But now I can play knight f6. And you don't have a rook on the e file. Mm -hmm. And on rook c7? I go c f c5. Ah, now you go c5. That's clever, yeah. Yeah, that's the knight protecting the pawn. And when d6 comes, it's it's really going to be over. Yeah, I have faith that Bilal, with 23 minutes, is going to yeah. find a a way to, to get it done. Ravi against Gunai. Well, we've seen this. So we'll come back to that when something more... Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Did we get this? Wait, what? Oh, King takes g6 is on the board, so... Oh, she didn't. She just calculated it till yeah, the end, I believe. Yeah, she just calculated this. Yeah, we, we looked at this before. The king looks uh, in danger, but after queen g8, queen g7... Um, <laughs> Even though it's not a really practical decision, I understand that uh, it should be winning anyway. But well, I, I mean, would uh, I would have played it safe. <laughs> if it wins, it wins. I guess that's the point. Right. Let's try. It. We're queen e8. King. Now we looked at queen h5 before. Is there any? And okay, let's try queen h5, king f4. Let's let's play this position because at least ah, this is check. This is. Or no, this it's just mate in two. Mate in two. No, actually, Yovanka made sure that yeah. uh, that she will win it mm -hmm. by force. So maybe that was actually a practical decision. Yeah. Uh, yeah now uh, she has eight minutes, but eight minutes are more than enough in this position. Uh, Julian has uh, thirty minutes on his clock yeah. now, but they are not gonna save him here. No. No. <laughs> and look, look at Ravi. He <laughs> he was hovering over. What the board. happened there with Ravi? He played the move king to g3. So I mean, Guna has done really well. She's put her knight on a nice route. The knight is going to come into d5. Um, I'm actually getting not excited at all about Ravi's chances. I'm, He really made a mess of this one. I'm not sure why that knight is on g1. I felt that my route of bringing it towards f2 and d4 was... Yeah, it's also on a bad route, knight you're one. right. I think what he wants to do is actually go knight f3, h4. Or maybe... Does he want to play f4 here? I don't think ah, so. Ah, but she plays knight d5. Yeah, so she plays knight d5. And I think he either wants to go h4 or knight f3 with h4, I don't know. Let's just, mm -hmm. say, let's just say h4. And the point is that obviously after takes, takes, he can come back and then try and, you know, leverage his, his extra pawn somehow, but doesn't look easy to me. It's still, uh, yeah, it's still a long shot because I have some rook a1, maybe one move before, maybe immediately. Yeah, yeah actually, that's a good point. So knight, def so rook a1 here, huh? Mm-hmm. Knight, maybe knight f3. Now knight d5. Knight d5, h4. Mm. Yeah. You, s you still kind of get it in, but it's... Uh, G takes. Yeah, it's going to be a really long end game here where it's not easy to prove that uh, white, uh, white will convert the extra pawn. And indeed, all games were drawn so far and we have five games in progress. Yeah. Uh, basically, they are quite leveled uh, in a matter of the overall score in today's round. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's see who, who will show the greatest will to win. Will it be the ladies or the men's team? Very difficult to say. Uh, we know that Yvanka is going to win. We've got Yvanka on screen. She goes King G5 and Gillian knows that this game is, is pretty much over. Um, yeah, and Bilal's also most probably yeah. going to win. So that's 1-1. One, one. So we, we go back to this game and Sabino has played Queen E2, but he's only got six minutes left on the clock. 
And I fully expect Queen H5 now by Nino. Uh, by the way, somebody was asking what was Nino wearing. That's actually a blind cat. Because uh, yeah. it was uh, a bit cold in the playing hall, so the players are provided with them uh, to, keep, uh, to keep their thoughts warm. Well, it's very cold in the playing <laughs> hall. I mean, it's we're doing the commentary here. I can tell you I'm wearing something underneath this shirt, and <laughs> it is uh, you can f maybe it's just because I'm bald and I feel I feel the cold <laughs> a bit more. But uh, it's uh, it's we're in an old old library. It's been cold in Gibraltar in general, raining and cold outside. So it is cold. So I can sympathise with Nino uh, that she's wearing the blanket. <laughs> I need a blanket. Huh. Yeah. We'll be okay. <laughs> um, Queen H5 has been played. Great. Yeah, that was uh, the move which yeah. we predicted as well. Five minutes. Let's stay here because, you know, uh, Sabino, he's going to go king e1, isn't he? He's going to try and bring this king to safety. Yeah, I think that's uh, the only sensible move here because the king is really not feeling comfortable on the king side. Yeah, it's cold in Gibraltar. Actually, it's not that cold. It's very windy. And yeah, because of that, you feel like it's even colder. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Yeah, so Queen H4, so we're waiting here for the. But the if move. he's going to take a long uh, time okay. again, then. Well. Uh, He's going to be... No, he's oh, going to go king e one. he played it. Now, you've actually got a choice here as black. You don't have to take on h4. Taking on f3 is actually is actually a move, isn't it? Because queen takes h4, maybe queen f2 is an idea. And but after queen h1... King e2... And queen b1... Queen b1... Yeah, I mean, it's scary, isn't it? You, yeah. With your queen passive, this is... This is scary. So after queen h4, if I go king d2, that must be the move. Now knight g5. Because f4, knight e4 is check. And if you take here... Can I go check anyways? This is, su <laughs> this is super cute. But are you sure no, it's winning? <laughs> no, it's, l it's actually losing because I have rook h5 check, unfortunately. Oh, wow. And I take here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but even if you would get the queen, yeah, even this is <laughs> has to be a draw. You would also not be winning. Yeah, it might even be winning for white. <laughs> no, okay, that's probably too much, but a draw is there yeah, for sure. A draw is possible. Then we, there we oh. go, Yovanka. Now Yovanka, she might want to do an interview if uh, if she wants to come in and yeah, talk what a game. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we can ask Yovanka to come in while we see, because we've got a lot of long games that are not going to be resolved quickly, so it'd be nice to hear from Yovanka. Uh, the current situation is uh, very bad for Irene. I, I, yeah, as I said, she's been, this has been a torture, this game. She's yeah. been suffering for hours. Uh, Ravi against Gunai, I think, you know what? I think the momentum is with Gunai. She's going to ram the B-pawn up the board, and she's going to make a draw. That's my... Um, that's my prediction here. I don't even think, yeah, I just don't even think the position is uh, even that good for White anymore. So a really missed opportunity for Ravi. What about the game between Pia and uh, Joe? Well, Pia is actually, wow. Rook d5, f5. So played. she's going all in for the win. She uh, is giving up the a5 pawn in order to try and create some mating threats, I guess, against white's king after f4. f4 check. King f2 now runs Now g3, into I guess, is her idea. And she wants to basically... I think she... Or she wants to go no, rookie, rookie four, four check. Right, mm -hmm. right. Rookie four check. And now... <laughs> and after king f1... Wait, king f1, knight g4. You have uh, no way to defend against a mate. Knight h2, rookie one. That's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that looks like mate. Actually, I'm really fearing for Joe after f4 check. So what if he goes king h4? Does that move make any sense? What about f3 now? And if I just come back? Ah, that one. Didn't think of that. Mm. 
Still. Rook d4, I guess. Okay, now I take. G takes. Yeah, but now I feel a bit... Oh, you're going to check me and... But even this, I'm feeling a lot better about my chances. Mm -hmm. You only have one pawn, right? Well, so maybe f3 was a bit hasty. Maybe I have to bring the rook first. Something like, yeah, rook e4 maybe. Rook e4, okay. Uh, trying to play rook e2 and take that pawn. Yeah, that that looks mm -hmm. better. That does look better. Okay, yeah, and they uh, played uh, rook a5, f4, and we will see now uh, what uh, Joe is going to do. But if he goes on uh, to f2, probably it is really bad, no? Thank yeah, you. I think he can't go to f2. Let's, uh, oh, ah, uh, uh, king h4, g3. With the idea of f3. f3, yeah, and if you move the rook, let's say you move it, you go f3 check, king here, and then rook g4. Very unusual <laughs> way. Nice, because now after king f2, you've got f takes g2, king g1, and knight f3. Amazing. <laughs> Yeah. And if you go rook d1? Uh, then you take back a few moves. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can still go knight f3. Yeah, but after king f3? Yeah, this ending you're probably not going to win, are you? You might win this. I don't this. know. You might A5? win this ending. A5, rook a1? Ah, uh, rook g5 you have. Oh, yeah, well, rook g5. No, I can't. Oh, I just blundered the pawn. You did yeah. blunder the pawn, yeah. But okay, but it feels bad because, um, yeah, it, it doesn't feel like this, is th this, th this construction is not very good for white. Yeah, it feels like it should be something better, no? Let's see where Joe puts his king. He's got 20 minutes, so he actually needs to have a real think here, but wherever he puts it, I think he's in trouble. I really love this by Pia, what she's done. So she's given up the pawn to, to, to get this going with the pawns and... Yeah, and after king h2, let's say. King h2. Now maybe rook e4 again. Yeah, it seems like the a pawn doesn't have uh, enough time to run towards queening. And mm -hmm. meanwhile, uh, white's king is uh, definitely in a mating net. Precisely. Uh, this is... A so really it looks like uh, the ladies are doing better. Yeah, they have a chance for a plus one score today. Yeah, absolutely. It, it looks like it. So we're expecting Pia to win. Nino against Sabino is uh, is completely unclear with uh, with King E1 on the board. But we don't think that Nino risks uh, really anything no. here. Irene, we still think, is going to lose. And we think Gunai is going to make a draw. So that would actually be plus one for the... For the, for the ladies, ladies team, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, Gunna played uh, the b5 move, which yeah. was uh, the best one to fight for uh, for the draw. Yeah, b5, f4, and now it's just yeah, b4. b4 is just clean because Will this she is find a threat. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not that easy. She takes. Okay, I take. Knight takes. I think. Rook c4. Isn't it equal material? 96. Oh no, I'm losing all my pawns. Oops. Okay, let's do that again a bit slower. So F4, B, f and if I go B4, C ah, I've got C3. What am I doing? Can you lose? <laughs> that would be. You that can would lose. be terrible. You can lose. This is wow, losing. Wow, that's a really nice resource. Yeah, that that's that's losing. That's but losing. you know, I was thinking that uh, after some hours of commentary, we start blundering things. But uh, the players are actually in the same situation. Of course, yeah. And they cannot really take breaks. I mean, uh, they cannot stop the clock and say, okay, I'm going to take a coffee now. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. No, I mean, this is what we call a disaster. Actually, this is just straight up losing, isn't it? Because I'm threatening this, which would then queen. If I move the rook, I go... I go here and then I have knight c3 and that's losing. So, I, I mean, she's going to go b4 and then actually I think as white, how do you actually, what do you do here? Sorry, <laughs> what am I missing? H how do you survive? So you want to play b3 and then, but I will be able to play some rook f2 or somewhere. But I take, take, take on f2 and b2. For example, you go here, I go here. You don't want to take on c3? No. Maybe knight. Oh, oh, that might be trouble for white. 
Exactly. Let's say you take, and let's say I take back, and you take, just as an example, I go knight takes c3. Mm -hmm. And my idea is that I make a queen. <laughs> the pawn is unexpectedly queening. Yeah. Now let's take a, view, um, a big view of the players just for the moment. Let's have a zoom in on this game because it's interesting. Do you want to do the interview? You want to do it? Okay. Okay. And you can see uh, a few vacant boards. Wow, if Ravi loses this game, goodness me, that'll be a catastrophe. Yeah. Yeah. But we are going to have an esteemed guest in a, just a short, short while. And uh, Irina is going to do the honors <laughs> for one of our big winners. All right, so uh, uh, the tension is still up in the match. Uh, we see now uh, Sabino against Nino on the screen. This is the most unpredictable game uh, left because, uh, uh, well, there are four points for the knight. And uh, let's see what will prove to be stronger, the knight or the pawns. The clock is ticking down and yeah, with it, the chances. All right. So uh, we have a guest with us here, uh, Jovanka Huska, who just won her game, the first win of the round for the ladies team. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> on Thank that. You. Thank you. Um, gosh, I'm still shaking, actually. Yeah, it was a crazy game. It was absolutely insane, you know, but I guess that's what happens when you play such a sharp opening um, against the Karakhan. Uh, I mean, we both spent a lot of time out of the opening, and I have to confess, I didn't really know what I was doing at some <laughs> point. I was just making it up and I was like, I think I know some things, but yeah. And then and then I thought I was winning easily. And then I then blundered. Then I blundered on move yeah. 41 and I was like <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's good that things ended well. And let's have a look uh, uh, on the game. Mm -hmm. uh, you could use uh, the keyboards and yeah. maybe you can show us uh, um, the critical moments. Okay. So yeah, this move was, uh, I have to confess, it wasn't a surprise because I had seen that he'd played one game in it, but it wasn't something that I checked for some bizarre reason. I think I was focusing on play, him playing d4. Oh well. And I was like, oh well, okay. But you were uh, very fast here. We assumed that uh, you knew quite well, a bit. You, you know, <laughs> 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 you have to bluff a little bit. I, oh, I knew some things, really? I, I knew some things, but... Uh, yeah, I, I didn't know the ins and outs, and I think you really shouldn't be able to get away with just knowing the general ideas here. You have to know the moves. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I decided just to play e6. I normally actually play a6 in this type of position, um, but, okay, e6 is the move I chose. Yeah, and he went for it. <laughs> so this is, all, this is all normal, and uh, this is all kind of really standard, and... You don't really care so much about this pawn on h5 because the reasoning is that the white knight on h5 is just stranded yeah. and uh, it's not doing a great job there and white has overextended. So you know, actually that was the exact thing I was telling Lawrence, but he didn't, uh, he didn't believe me. He preferred white for quite a while. <laughs> 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 well, well, generally in this type of position, I actually... This is the bit that I didn't know, because I know knight c6 is a move, and it was something that I had vaguely looked at, but in my other games, in the long, long time ago, I'd actually been playing pawn takes pawn. So, no, this is all theory, and this is all kind of really normal, and then here, I forgot 
what I was meant to do. But I, I know that uh, at times you're not really meant to be too fussed about giving up even the G7 porn because you're just so focused on the fact that white has overextended and right. that you're ready with the pieces to explode open the center. So No, we really liked how you've handled the position uh -huh. here after Queen C7. Okay, I wasn't sure whether maybe I should be doing something else here, but I couldn't remember. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, it, I kind of, F4 kind of took me by surprise. I thought maybe it was a bit one step too far. With yeah, because the bishop on g5 is uh, a bit uh, out of the yeah, game. Yeah, exactly. And I just thought the bishop might get a bit stranded. You know, the king is a little bit caught in the middle. And if it goes wrong for him, it will like seriously go wrong. So that's what I, I was dreaming about. This is a type of position when men assess it differently because it is very interesting to hear you having the same thoughts I did. Yeah. And still Lawrence was believing that Bishop <laughs> on G5 was fine, like your opponent did. <laughs> I'm very curious. Yeah. Who was actually right? It would be interesting to check it with an engine later. Right. Uh, you know, I, I certainly will be doing that when I go back to the room. I think it also comes down to style. I think Lawrence has got a little bit more aggressive style. And you're also quite an aggressive player too. I used to be <laughs> back uh, back uh, in those days when it was sunny and <laughs> you know all those things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay. So f4, and then after a6, this is where things kind of got a little bit crazy with the trades because now I took with the queen. Uh, may I ask you yeah? why did you not take on d4 instead of a6? That was uh, a move which we tried to make work. I tried to make that work as well. That was actually my initial thought to take on d4, but it kind of it kind of felt like I was maybe helping him a little bit mm -hmm. because after queen, I was thinking queen takes d4 or was I thinking bishop takes knight? I might have been also thinking about bishop takes knight and uh, no, no, not that one, the other one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> bishop e7 and I, I was just... Bishop I, I, takes, yeah, yeah, bishop takes, yeah. yeah. And then after queen takes, I thought that he was ready with castling queenside. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, okay, maybe, maybe black is doing well here. I, I don't, I didn't know. <laughs> so I decided to stay away. All right, so a6, quite after mm -hmm. a long fight. Is, yeah. uh, is it true? 27 minutes here? Yes. Wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the thing is though, you do have to take these positions really seriously because if you make a, a mistake, then it will go wrong. So I kind of thought I should use the time and just think about where I wanted to target and what kind of things I wanted to do. And it took me a long time to actually just consider even going bish after bishop takes knight, queen takes. That all took me a while. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, not an easy move to make because you'd naturally want to take with the bishop, right? Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. But I, was, I wasn't quite sure of the consequences if you got greedy. Mm -hmm. You know, took the yeah, pawn on G7. So, yeah. Um, and uh, after this one, what uh, what happened? After this, yeah, knight came to E2. And my first instinct, actually, was to jump in with the bishop to E4. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after the rook came to H3, I thought, hey, you know, I want to regain my sacrifice pawn and just put my bishop on G2. And then rook to g3, but then after queen takes pawn, I just thought, hang on a second, I'm just maybe letting letting him unravel himself. Hmm. We actually thought it was uh, it was very good uh, for yeah. for black, yeah. But uh, we're not sure about that. No, I, I wasn't but sure it either. Interesting. It huh? did definitely. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time here th also thinking. Like and I think you could do the same also after rook b8, b3. Yeah, I was also thinking about this mm -hmm. as well. Bishop e4, and then after rook h. And there was a funny line that rook h2, you can yeah. play bishop, bishop f3. f3. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was hoping for that, you know. <laughs> Secretly, when one plays chess, it's like, make that blunder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Uh, right, so uh, rook h3, and you decided to go for bishop g6 here. Yeah, I wanted to tie, you know. You know, one of my biggest weaknesses in the, well, in chess actually is like I'm too materialistic and I don't sacrifice material too often for like control so I was like no 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 don't make that same <laughs> mistake keep calm you know you've got the bishop pair you just keep putting pressure on his uh, on the dark squares and his open king so I was like don't get right. greedy 
that's, so that's why I played bishop g6, although it looks a bit strange. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, uh, let's yeah. check how the game went on. And because yeah. it became really crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was mad. So after queen a7, I don't know. I'm not sure he should be playing f. Well, I, maybe f5 is okay. Mm -hmm. But I kind of thought that I was doing... I yeah. think what happens next after this, he has to be super careful. He can't allow me to castle kingside. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, we were uh, not sure how to assess this position, but we were also a bit worried about your king after queen, uh, queen d3. Yeah. But uh, yeah, castle looked uh, like a good move. We actually tried to blunder mate in one in one of the positions, <laughs> both of us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will show you a bit later, okay. <laughs> just for the fun. So queen d3, bishop b4, king e2, short castle. Yeah. And here we tried to make queen g6 work. But that's what happened in the game. Yeah, and then d3. Yeah, no, 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 d3, because he takes with the king. Yes, yeah. exactly. And then we tried to play queen c5, and it was actually made on g7. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I, I was also, when I got to this position in my head, I was like, oh, you know, I was actually going to play queen to f7, what, mentally. And uh, if you go queen to f7, that is also yeah. a blunder, because he just goes knight f6 check. Knight f6, yeah. And you're like, uh-oh. Oops. That's a problem. Yeah. So... And then I was like, oh no. But then I was just like, hang on a second, just keep calm. And after king h8, I was really happy with my position. Mm -hmm. I thought... Yeah, because smoke. the king looks quite safe and d3 is still uh, yeah, in the air. Yeah, d3 is still in the air. And, you know, uh, then I can just start driving him mm -hmm. back. So uh, he played rook d3? Yeah. And I was like, well, there's a weak pawn on e5. Mm -hmm. I want it. And I thought this bit I handled quite well. <laughs> yeah, we I really liked up. it, but then we did not understand uh, if you could move, uh, or I could move it until here, queen yeah. f7, rook h1, bishop e7, queen d2, queen g6. Yeah. It all looked very good for black here. Yes. Bishop h4, the materialistic. Yep. <laughs> yeah, part. I was also <laughs> winning rook f2, and I, I, I thought I was winning, well, By I'm pretty, force, sure, no? pretty sure I was winning, but we didn't have so much time, so... Mm -hmm. So what you're going to see next is uh, part panic. Oh, yeah, bishop g5, king and then one. I was like, Rick suits here, and I was like, this is happy. That was a very happy. nice shot. Yeah. yeah that okay. was beautiful. Yeah. But then what happened next, I'm not so proud about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here, rook h1, yeah, he played. And uh, yeah, I don't know why I played rook c1. Rook c I th uh, just. But it this was is fine. This is winning. Yeah. Look, here, after rook c1, take. You could take on d3. Yes, this was the plan. This was the big idea when I calculated everything. But then suddenly I panicked. And oh. after I started thinking rook c2. And I believe you have rook, uh, rook f2 here. As easy as that. See, this is why you shouldn't oh. panic at home. <laughs> 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 yeah. You've got to take those deep breaths <laughs> and you've got to be yeah. objective. Because I, I don't know why I was looking at this position and I was like, oh my goodness me, I'm going to go rook f1 check, the king is going to go to b2. Yeah, I and know king the feeling, runs, believe and then me. It's like, oh my god, oh my god, you messed it up. So, um, yeah. Yeah, all right. But it seems like bishop c1 was also good enough here. Yeah. Uh, queen a6. Bishop a3, and here you just collected yeah, everything. Yeah, again, uh, the t seconds were ticking down, and I just thought, just, just play a simple chess. And then yeah, yeah, I think it's a yeah. very practical yeah. decision you've, uh, you've made. Bishop c3, king a3, queen f7, queen b6, queen e7, move 40. Yeah, <laughs> queen e7. Yeah, I, I was thinking also about playing queen f1, and also... Mm -hmm controlling everything, but then I saw this idea of queen e7, and I thought, this is great. Yeah, it definitely looked like black is already winning. Yeah. Uh, he still found some chances No, but this, here. this move was just awful, and I, uh, you know, I thought, great, I haven't blundered in the time, con time control, and then I was just taking some moments to compose myself, and then the hand came out and played rook f2. <laughs> oh, so you did not see knight f6 coming when you played no, it. No, I didn't see knight f6. I also did not see rook takes bishop. Rook takes bishop was the thing that was like, oh my goodness me. Here? And I, yeah, and I literally oh. just kind of went, <gasps> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I couldn't help myself, and it just kind of escaped from me. 
and now the thankfully, point is that yeah, queen takes, takes rook. Queen takes f2, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. So uh, what was the idea after rook c3? I didn't see it. So oh I was God, just we did not see it either. Ah, okay. We did not. <laughs> we actually saw this position on the board. We analyzed it, but we did not consider rook c3. Okay. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> All right. So uh, a bit, uh, a bit of a lucky moment, I yes. guess. Uh, he played queen b8 instead. Yeah. King h7, and uh, no. yeah, we mm. saw these complicated tactics. The yeah. easy one we did not manage okay. <laughs> <laughs> to do. So knight f6, but here it looks like you win by force, right? Yeah, here I spent so, so uh, after I, I actually spent about ten minutes just trying to recover from <laughs> my big blunder and just thought, okay, don't mess it up. And then I, you know, instinctively I was maybe going to play king to g6, but I thought, hang on a second, let's calculate what's going to happen after pawn takes knight. And yeah, after that was my instinct also to go just king g6 six and not calculate exactly. anything. Exactly. You know? But then I thought, yeah. no, 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 no. This is good training. Can I get away with taking the knight? And after 20 minutes of checking and rechecking and checking, 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 and then I was like, okay, it works. So yeah. G takes f6, yeah. and yeah, oh, like you said, the king is escaping here, and in a few moves, uh, you. Won the game. Let's yeah. uh, put them until here. So yeah, congratulations. A lot of ups and downs here, but I'm so happy <laughs> for the ladies team. I'm so happy that you managed to win today. And how are you feeling here? Oh, I, I, I love playing in Gibraltar. It's like a special place for me. You know, I actually started my commentary career here in Gibraltar, and uh, it's just a fantastic place. You know, it's like half Spanish, half English, and you hear Spanglish about, so it does feel like home. And I just love this concept of the battle of the sexes, men against the women. And Do you feel more, more motivated when uh, it's uh, like that, when you play against men? Do you feel somehow that you can prove a point? Um, I'm always motivated. I mean, I, I think for me, because I don't play so much chess anymore, I, I mean, it's like a personal journey. And the fact that we have such a nice team and uh, we have a little WhatsApp group where we send each other gifts. Ah, you know, <laughs> actually, I will tell you some intel. Eric said the same thing. The guys also have a WhatsApp group. No. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think of that. <laughs> but it was just a special thing that the women had. No, no, I mean, and yesterday after our loss, Pia kind of rallied the troops around. And she mm. said, uh, she told us, you know, it's all about confidence and it uh, doesn't matter. It's a friendly match and just give it 100%. Wow, yeah. well, great. It's great to see that you get along so well with the teammates and mm -hmm. you have such a nice uh, captain who supports you. Yeah. I really hope that you'll be able to uh, to win this match. It's very close. Uh, I uh, Okay, my, my bet is it will going to be a plus one. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, let's oh. hope that will be true. <laughs> That's good news. And uh, thank you for cheering us on, Harina. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm your biggest fan here. <laughs> All right, Ivanka, thank you. Thank you for your time and good luck for your next games. Thank you very much. Welcome back. This is uh, round four of the Battle of the Sexes Jib Chess 2022 tournament. A lot of games have finished. We just saw Yvanka there talk about her roller coaster win. Uh, great win for her, of course. Much needed win. Uh, also for the women this uh, 
this round because as it turns out, that might be the critical win because Irene Sukanda has just lost against Bilal. We were talking for hours how her position was just uh, almost impossible to play. Uh, she did eventually lose. It's not a surprise. So at the moment, as things stand, it is plus... No, oh, that's actually an even match. Yeah, sorry, that's a mistake on the graphics there. We'll change that. Mm -hmm. uh, Bilal beat you, Irene, so it's, right. it's even at the moment with and, three uh, games to go. Right, we have three more games. What, what has happened to Ravi's position? Wow. I mean, he's probably still not going to... He's probably not going to lose, but... Uh, I mean, this that is has gone completely wrong. I think yeah. he fell exactly in that yeah. thing which I missed as well with before, and then suddenly he's in trouble. Let's have a look at what happened. I but mean, how resourceful is yeah, uh, she's Gunai. amazing. Wow. Yeah. Before he he did take ah, oh, and he just gave the exchange after c three. He so we had this position. We were saying you can lose this, but actually Ravi just gave up the rook, and then the problem is you lose the pawn. And after king h4, king f7, we have this position here now. Uh, well, it's uh, probably going to be a draw, I believe, because there are two, yeah. two little um, pawns left on the board. So now one will go off. Probably he will play g takes f6. Well, he actually played knight f4 first here. Ah, all right. Anyhow, th th those pawns will get off the board soon, I, I suppose. Well, yeah, for example, you can take on g5 and play rook b3. That already... But then h4 is... or isn't it? No, I don't think you so. Just I just take. take, I take. You, you, you never... you never create... Uh, yeah, it might uh, end up into some two pawns and knight versus yes. rook. And that's a draw. That should be a draw, yeah. But, I, um, yeah, I believe Black is not risking anything and it will be a great save by uh, Gunai who was in very big trouble today. Amazing. Yeah, Ravi will be really, really, really disappointed because he had uh, just a dominating position and missed a few tactics and um, Gunai showing how resourceful she is, as you said. Lots of ways to make a draw here. Uh, probably probably everything sensible actually makes a draw. The only thing you don't want to do, I guess, is... Um, Allow somehow g6. Yeah, something like rook c4, g6 check, king g7, and now king h5. I g even but th even here, it should probably be still. <sighs> then you will have to work a bit for it. Yeah, because you can't take here because of the check wins the rook. And if you take here, check, king g8. I'm actually a bit... I'm getting very nervous here. No, but it should be a draw still, no? Uh, I mean, you cannot... Or can you play... No, you can't play d5 because I have rook b5. And if knight f4, then king to g7. And you cannot really unpin there. Well, what if I go g5 here? Mm, g5. Okay, I must take, I believe. Or actually, g7 or is very interesting. No, g5, let's say. You want to take? Oh, uh, wait. Maybe not. Maybe I can play f5, actually. Yeah, and now g7. Uh, rook uh, b6. d5. Rook d6. And here, are you sure you're in time? You're so no, close to not... I'm not sure. <laughs> King g6, <laughs> let's say. I must take... You oh can wait. actually go f4. Ah, maybe I can play for a stalemate. But, no, but I, I actually You're in time? mate. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mate you. All right, so I take on d5. I will trust you on that one. Okay, I go h4. Mm, not easy. I mean... <laughs> Did I just manage to lose this I one? I think you lose, lose that one, yeah. But <laughs> I, but that's the point that he. That's why I wanted to take on g5. Of course, in the first you take place, on g5. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you have to take on g5. Mm -hmm. Take and just go after the pawn. I mean, this is so, ah d5 maybe is is um, his idea. D5 is his idea. He takes. Yeah, this is probably still and now rook d3. Yeah. <coughs> and there's too much disconnect between the knight and you can't you can't hold everything. Yeah. And she. What she did she do? e5. What is this? She's going to try and give him a hard time here. No. Mm, why not? No. 
No, yeah, probably not. But the king is on h4 for now. Maybe that's something she tries to use. Because e5? now let's imagine let's imagine d takes e5 happens, f yeah. takes. G6 um, check. You have to go king, king g7. King g7, yeah. Okay. Now how do you continue? Knight okay. d... F no. Knight. Hmm. Yeah, let's say knight d5. Mm, rook d3. Knight e7. And e4. Okay, king g5. E3. Yeah, knight f5 check. King g8. Yeah, and if I go g7, e2, king g6, you've got rook d6 check, right? Yeah. Even that, by the way, might be a draw. For example, g7, e2, king g6, threatening mate. You have to go rook d6. Right. And takes queen, and this is almost certainly a draw. Why? Well, I mean... Why is it a draw? You don't queen think this is, is a draw? You think this is winning? I don't know, I was hoping. King f7. Just try and not lose my pawns? My idea is that that I want to win those pawns. <laughs> yeah, but you you might do because your queen protect I mean And then my queen will protect g8 and maybe I can try to come with the king, but okay. I mean, I'm curious, but it is winning, yeah. Yeah, I can't allow this, huh? All right, so I can't I can't allow these queen endings. So if I can't allow these queen endings, goodness me. And e it's five? actually on the board. It takes, f takes. I think the king will have to be very careful and come. Ah, or maybe you can somehow sacrifice the knight for the pawn and meanwhile try to push those pawns no, as far as... No, I don't like that. You don't that. have no. time, no? I don't think so. Maybe the correct way is just to do something like... Uh, Okay, let's go that variation, but here, the, when I first looked at it, I thought after here, king g8, I can actually go knight g3. This was my... There is also knight e7 to check, me. Ah. but okay, we can get back to it. Rook d2. Mm -hmm. Ah, now some king h6. King h6. Ah, wait, rook h2. No, it's not working. Um... Yeah, this is... Uh, what? A mm, no. No, it's... <laughs> no, this is uh, this could be losing, yeah. It's looking bad. Yeah, this could be losing. Is he in danger of losing this, Ravi? Okay, if 95. we are struggling to find uh, the best way to continue, it might be a problem for him as well. Uh, G695, he's actually played this. He's actually played this. E5... This is the position on the board. Can he lose? Ah, so rook d3, knight e7, e4. What's... Oh, we did... This is actually winning. Ah, after e3... Why is this winning? Knight f5, king g8. Why is this winning? All right, perhaps we don't see some uh, mating idea here. King h6. A king h6. Yeah. That's the idea. That's brilliant. Is it? E s e2? Knight is. King f8? No, no, no. G7, no. g8. Take it. And queen h7 in the end. Oh, wow. wow, 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 wow. G7. But we you have rook h3 check as we well. Ah, there is a... I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> an, the, what Irina was saying is if I do this, queen h7 is a lovely check. But actually, after g8 equals queen, you've got rook h3. And this, and... Yeah, it's now bad. it might be losing. Uh, all right, so... Uh, it seems like I we are. I have absolutely uh, no idea why this is, why this is good. Can she still lose all three results? <laughs> possible. All right, so let's check it a bit, 
uh, okay. a bit more carefully. So knight d5. Yeah. Rook d3 rook d3 looks d3. forced yeah. because any other move, like let's say rook c4. Gives white extra time, no? You just go king g5 and you can even run this guy. So rook d3 is the only sensible move. Okay, there might be also rook f3, you could argue, but let's check rook d3 first. Uh, knight e7. Knight e7, protecting the pawn. e4. Now e4 is not the only move. King f6 does exist, but... Because uh, I originally thought king f6. That might be the solution not to lose it, actually, I believe. But I'm not sure... But here it's quite easy to make a, t to go g7. King takes g7 and king g5, and white never loses now because... Yeah, exactly. Oh, and we have a result. Joe survived it. Joe survived. What? Pia, uh, Pia was not able to convert it. Amazing. Let's, uh, let's go to that game because here we'll still... Uh, let's at least check the final position and see what happened. Joe looks very happy and uh, Pia actually looked uh, quite disappointed. Uh, what, uh, what happened? How? So Joe did put the rook on, sorry, the king on h4, but we know that this was losing. And here Pia did not play the move g3, she played rook e4. Do you remember? Exactly we were how I at wanted G3. to go to. <laughs> yeah, rook e4. But now it's rook a7 check, king f6, and rook a8. Really nice defense by Joe. Oh, f3, so and this king g3 win. move. Yeah, yeah this concept. Again. Oops, what yeah. happened there? Uh, uh, king g3, rook e2, and now just takes, takes, check, and a perpetual. And now right. there's no way to... Great so, save uh, by great Joe. Great save by Joe and a very um, big very missed opportunity huge, for Pia. Huge opportunity. Um, yeah. All right, let's go back to here. Uh, Ravi, it might actually... Uh, we, wait, we've got this. We've got this exactly on the board in really? Ravi's game. Yeah, <laughs> G7, King, G5. Right. And this is going to be a draw, I'm pretty sure now, because after uh, E4, you go Knight F5 check, you bring the King to F4. Actually, you lose this pawn, but you lose this pawn, and we get this end. Oops. We get this ending, which is actually a... Like... Okay, you could play it on, but it should end in a draw. I think even this position you can't play on. Ah, oh, well, you can, sorry, h4. Yeah. Eight, yeah, no, you cannot. You can't really try. There's always going to yeah. be... There's always some sacrifice for the rook for the two pawns. And uh, uh, oh, what Sabino's happened? game just ended against Nino. Nino. Sabino won! How did that happen? How did he win this position? What happened here? Oh, God, everything is going so wrong for us this day. We had some crazy position around here. Oh, and no. she had the extra... And we said that Nina was safe here. She did not risk anything, we she, thought. She, she had a nightmare somewhere. Queenie 1 still looks all right. Still, Queen, queen C1 might be a bit weird. The, the king because she doesn't have any follow-up checks then with the Queen. No? But... Oh, she how? missed... It's, it should be winning. I mean, shouldn't it be? Uh, n for white, it's winning. I was thinking for black. Apparently, Perhaps she started to. she was to, thinking the same. She started to lose. I mean, around here, apparently, it's still okay. And she started to lose the plot, allowing this king to walk up. And when the king starts walking into the position, and d6 was probably a very good move, cutting coordination. Oh. And queen g4 is a classy move, my word. That's a hard move because now actually you can't avoid the exchange of queens or losing a piece. Ugh, and there's queen h5 check. Yeah, yeah, around here Nino just completely lost it. And he just walked out of the checks and, and won. Huge win for Sabino. Indeed. And that actually means that with one game to go, the boys are going to take... Oh, it seems like yep. you are going to be right today with the prediction. Well, not quite, because I, I think it's it's not going to be plus three, but it's going to be a magic plus one. When ten minutes ago, it looked like they were going down. It looked as though Pia was going to win. It looked as though Nino had a good chance, and it, even Gunai. But yeah, okay, Gunai. Okay, Gunai. 
was uh, quite lucky for yes. uh, for the save, so I believe uh, the draw would be uh, a fair result here. But uh, who knows? Maybe maybe Gunai can uh, uh, can try some tricks. Does she still have some? No, we already said that after e4, knight f5, king f4, there yeah. is no way to to try anything with black there. Yeah, I believe in the current position. Uh, but this is uh, the most disputed match we've seen, the one which uh, mm, the result was unclear until the very last moment, no? Uh, yes. This swang quite, quite some ways. N she does only have 35 seconds left, though, so I'm curious um, what... That's, uh, that's all right for Gunai, having played against her for quite a few times. She can go to down to three seconds, but she's got things under control. I actually think she's thinking about rook h3 here. That's my prediction, that she she's thinking, is it easier to make a draw winning this and then coming round? I mean, that also probably just makes a draw. Oh, it's just a draw. They just agreed oh, a draw. I see. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, he probably offered the draw, and it's it's a completely reasonable offer. Oof, and nice. wow, and just like that, the round is over, and... Yeah. The boys have clawed another point <laughs> back. And that means that after today, the boys are down one point only. Wow. Amazing comeback it's, so far. It's getting really interesting. And yeah. uh, from what looked like uh, an even match, or maybe with the ladies in a very slight advantage, uh, the guys turned around the tables in the very last minutes of the round. That's unbelievable. It really is. Yeah, let's go through the individual results. Uh, yeah, as we see, uh, the score is now 19 and a half to 20 and a half. And we have uh, mm, the results. So a draw between Chonka and Muzichuk, a draw between Chris and Abdumalik. Uh, Sabino won against Nino Batsiashvili, a very important win, mm -hmm. one which uh, the men's team captains probably actually decided the match today. Uh, Joe with a nice save against Pia. Uh, Bilal won I, what I believe to be a very good game against Irene with this interesting G4 novelty. Uh, Eric a draw against uh, Olga Giria. Bobby Chang a draw against Marie. And uh, Ravi a draw against uh, Gunai, the game which ended uh, the last, and it seems uh, that uh, he was uh, pressing for quite a bit, so very nice save by Gunai. Uh, Gillian lost to Jovanka, and it is actually the only game where the ladies scored a point today. Mm. And as is uh, Hussein draw against uh, Marcelle Froimsky. Yeah, an absolutely action-packed day today. I mean, so many things could have gone the other way. Uh, probably the, the the days so far with the the most swingy results, where it could have been a win or it could have been a loss, and uh, it's been uh, a bit of a bit of a lucky day in many respects for the for the boys. Um, some fantastic individual performances. You can see Ravi there. He's going to be, I think, the most disappointed of all the players because you know it was just a. A, you know, a, a crushing middle game position. But he's smiling. He's happy. He's a he's a very well tempered chap. Uh, so he'll he'll try and recover quickly. So, you know, good night, Mamadzada. I mean, this this young lady, if she can save positions like that, uh, the the future is very bright for her because uh, so resourceful. It's it's quite incredible. Um, you can also there see Sabino and Nino now discussing their game. Obviously. Yeah, it has been so crazy, their game. I believe uh, they are both uh, very curious to what e each of them <laughs> has seen and what they've missed. Uh, overall, a very interesting round with many, many events and many ups and downs. Just an incredible day full of swings and roundabouts. Um, now, what we are going to do is we are going to try uh, to get the team captains in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to take just a very very short break. But don't go anywhere because we are going to interview
both Pierre Kramling and Sabino Brunello, captains of the men and women's teams, to get their thoughts on today. So stick with us. We'll be back in just a few jiffies. A jiffy. A few <laughs> jiffies, whatever. Then what else can we do? Precisely what Brian Callahan and the Gibraltar organizers are doing this year, 2022, here at the Garrison Library. We have a team of 10 uh, women, a team of 10 men. They are playing each other every day for 10 days. That means 100 games altogether. As the average of the of the ratings is more or less similar more or less similar it's a bit higher in the case of men but just a bit then i think it will be very significant uh, to see what the result is and if the result is a victory of the ladies then we should seriously think about the possibility of deleting the female tournaments. I mean, now a female player can choose. She can play a tournament only with women or an open tournament with men and women together. If this tournament and more editions like this one in the following years demonstrate that women are performing significantly better when they play against men, then probably one of the best things to do is to delete, to eliminate the female tournament. Olga, tell, tell us something about your game today. Mm. It was not so interesting game because it was a theoretical opening line and it was quite long we played uh, this line and uh, in the end there was um, equal end game and um, I think nothing special happened. Yeah. It fizzled out to a, a, to a draw. <laughs> it was quite interesting at the end, wasn't it? Well, but let's have a look at the game. OK. OK, Olga, we're looking at the position after Queen takes e2. What happened next? Um, I, OK, I think it is a critical moment because white has this uh, very good knight on e5 and I should play fast to have a counterplay. So I played c5 oh, mm -hmm. and there is... Um, mm -hmm. Sorry. If, um, if uh, white plays knight d7, there is move queen c6 takes. Oops. She doesn't want to. Ah, okay. Takes. Oh. It's. Yes, and uh, I have uh, this idea of queen c3, so. Okay, yeah. It works, I think. Yeah. I just calculated uh, queen d3. Take, wait, too fast, too fast. Yeah. <laughs> take, take. 
It's very twitchy today. That's great. Take. Okay, but uh, no, it's lost for white. That, that looks terrible. Yes, that looks yes. like a sort of classic. Um, way yes, of so there is no knight d7. Okay. Do you want Do you want me to put click on a position? Mm -hmm. So, so in fact, castles gets played. Oh, also, mm -hmm. yeah, I've got to get rid of this thing. Castles. Yes, and after castle. I took. There is uh, also bishop this d4 move. Mm -hmm. I wanted to play rook e8. So now I want to play queens or uh, knight c6 or knight c4. So that's okay. And yeah. uh, in the game, we just went to this end game. There are yeah. a, a lot of draws. Yeah, it looks slightly scary, isn't it? But with a past e pawn. Yes, um, maybe I even thought in the end. First of all, I thought about uh, um, queen g1. Yeah. Ah. Why does it do that? I can't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He wants to play its okay. own After queen g1, <laughs> king h4. Yeah. And there are no checks. Do it this way. Ah, yes. Like uh, king h4. Yeah. And I thought maybe I should go to the rook end game. Yes. Ah. Because oh. <laughs> 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 um, is it in that it's line? It's easier to play chess on the board. Yes. <laughs> we'll just play blindfold for me, <laughs> shall we? Um, queen f2. Sorry, where do, where do we need to be? Queen a1. And then we, we decided to go. Um, Sorry, that's point. Mm hmm. And then white plays. After king h4. King h sorry, king yes. h4, yeah. So I can change queens. I think it's draw, but okay, the pawn is on e5. Yeah. yeah. It always wants to go there, doesn't it? Some stupid. <laughs> it's, it's some okay, setting so I on decided screen. to yeah. just make checks and. Uh... Yeah, yeah, okay. I think the screen's trying to tell us something. It doesn't want to look at any more moves. <laughs> Thank you very much, Olga. Thank you. Welcome back. This is round four of the Battle of the Sexes, Jib Chess. The games have all finished and I'm delighted to be joined by the two team captains, Pia Kramling, women's team captain, and the men's team captain here, Sabina Brunello. Guys, today was uh, an insane day of chess. Um, you haven't seen perhaps all the games, or maybe you did when you were walking around, but uh, the result could have been 50,000 different ways at some <laughs> point. Uh, you know, it looked as though, you, you know, you were beating Joe. Um, it looked as though uh, Ravi was winning and then he didn't win. And uh, a lot of games could have gone uh, in another direction. As it turned out, it was the boys who finished on a very solid plus one for the day, meaning that the gap is closing. Now it's the women who are winning by one point. I'll come to you first, Pia. <coughs> Pia, uh, obviously, um, you had a tough game yourself. Mm -hmm. You had a win in the end, a disappointing uh, finish perhaps for you. You must have been uh, quite optimistic. But tell us more about uh, how you see the, the, whole, the general match situation. It's four rounds. Mm -hmm. The boys have got a little... After two rounds, it looked as though you were just steamrolling. Now the boys have got a bit back. So I saw you last night with your team mm -hmm. having a bit of a team talk. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't want to interrupt. Tell us a bit more about that, if you can, without revealing too many secrets. Yeah. No, I just thought that when we, we had two fantastic days, yeah. the round one and two, and then yesterday it was just a very big upset, and so we really needed to have, to, to speak each other, speak together, and that's what we did, and I, f I think, okay, today, I, I didn't see the games, I saw my games, yeah. I heard a little bit about the others, but I didn't see the other games. So, um, but, but I just thought that in general, minus one is not bad, we were playing black today, yeah. and it's always nice when the matches are close, we had just such a big upset. So I thought this was a, not, not a bad comeback for us, but it could have, of course, 
maybe have been uh, better So what was it. your advice? You just said to the girls, look, just steady the ship, nothing too crazy, or did you say, play in your normal way and c'est la vie? It's a, it's a secret. It's a secret. No, <laughs> I, I, I just, I just uh, we just have a talk and just, just to, to, uh, just to keep the good mood. In, was in anybody general. particularly upset on the team, or was there anybody that you felt you needed to talk to directly who, who is uh, having a bad time, or was it just in general everybody is in quite a good mood? Uh, no, I, I could see that some of the players okay. was upset, but because that's very logical when you play, and uh, you know you play four or five hours, it, it hurts a lot when, when you lose. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, maybe it depends on how you lose, but in general, it hurts a lot. So there were, there were uh, players who were upset. So it was it was very important to have this meeting, to be together, to be happy together. And you know, this this match is so long. There's so many sure. uh, rounds to go, so many games to play. Yeah. So in general, it, it's it's the most important is that forget about what happened and just okay. uh, keep on uh, playing. So. Mm. Savino, uh, you uh, you won your game today in a, uh, one of the wildest games of the tournament so far. It looked as though all three results were possible. You said Agreed. to me, you said to me that you were uh, actually quite happy about the position because, uh, you know, it was so complex, impossible for a human to play correctly there. Yeah. Um, we won't analyze the game. Well done on the victory. I know you needed that Thank as you. well. You know, you're you're now gaining a bit of momentum. The boys have also managed to. Yeah, come back after disastrous first two rounds. Now it's only one point. Um, do you plan on having any team meetings like Pia did? Or are you just, uh, you know, is there any communication with you and your team? Or is there any guidance or, or well, advice? There is communication, of course. We speak to each other and it's important to, to have a good time, so, you know, support each other or give a little help whenever it's, it's neither or asked for. Uh, generally speaking, I don't believe in meetings. <laughs> I don't like captains who claim they made some magic out of a meeting. <laughs> That's not really how chess works, in my opinion. Okay. But it's important to have a good time to yeah keep some company with right. each other and be kind to each other. Uh, all of the guys are obviously trying very hard. Yes. Everybody's trying to, to help whenever anybody has a question. Big or small, we try and you know, support each other, and that's very important, I think. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's so close. Uh, I mean, I I have to say, I, I was hugely pessimistic about your chances in the match in general, and then I thought after two rounds, wow, it's going to be a, a blowout. But you, you had this amazing round with black, now with white today, uh, at some point, I was, it was looking like it was going to be a minus two day for the girls, potentially, um, or something like that, and you've ended up on plus one. So how do you now keep the momentum? I mean, how, is, there any, is there any special way to, to make sure that you, you carry on on this uptrend, or is it just, uh, you know, is there a way you relax? Or Yes, I believe we have one more round uh, before, before the, the break, so it's important to... Uh, to play a good game tomorrow, so we feel happier on the rest day uh, as well. And uh, is there a planned activity with the boys on the rest day, or I, I'm not sure what you were going to do, but okay. I think it makes sense to you, you know do something together. Yes, yeah. Of course, we ha we have time, so. Yeah. I love the fact I must say, commentating this with Arena and everybody watching, I'm it's very very excited that it's so close. I know it's only the halfway point, but mm. if it was already plus 10 or plus 12, already it's starting to get quite difficult to make a comeback. But with so many games, uh, it's just plus one for the, for the, for the, for the women's team. Um, I know that everybody else at home is excited to see the, the remainder of this. Any words for Sabino? I mean, is it is it for him? No, no, <laughs> I, me. I, no I, words. I, I need my words for no, my you, you team. Your, are you going to have team. a team meeting tonight? Uh, I haven't decided. Oh, you haven't I, decided I haven't decided. Yet. So I, I will. I will. I will. I will check. I will see when I'm coming back. So I, hmm. I know everybody's tired. Sabino doesn't believe in meetings, but what I do know is that the chess has just been so wonderful to analyze. I, I appreciate that you and your team and your team as well, everybody is trying, but also everybody is playing interesting chess. There are no uh, really dull games. There's nobody making 
uh, super quick draws at least. There are, okay, a couple of earlier draws, but it's not these forcing lines. So I think everybody at home appreciates that as well, that we get full games, rich games, swings and roundabouts, and uh, I'm forward to many, 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 many more exciting rounds. So guys, remember, tomorrow, same time, same place. It's round five. Uh, this will be the last round before the rest day, and then we're in for the, for the home stretch with the final five games. So thank you so much for joining. I know you guys are exhausted after such <laughs> tough games today. Um, we will be back same time, same place tomorrow, three o'clock, don't go anywhere. Thanks for hanging out in the YouTube chat as well and Twitch. Remember to keep those social media posts coming. And until then, I guess it's buenas noches. As they say, not here, but down the road. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.